Wembley has never seen anything quite like this. The two biggest names in British sport, Hamilton and Hoy, go head to head in the ultimate test of man versus machine. That's not all because also today Wembley welcomes back the return of the greatest driver of all time. The seven times Formula One world champion is here. He loves this event and unsurprisingly, he has a good record here too. A Nations Cup winner for Germany last year and a Race of Champions finalist as well. Surely this year, he'll be going for the clean sweep. Welcome to Wembley, but not as you know it. Gone is that famous pitch in its place, a tarmac racetrack. This is the 2008 Race of Champions. So here's the lineup of today's events from Wembley. We're building up to the Battle of Britain. Lewis Hamilton versus Chris Hoy. 670 brake horsepower versus thigh power. England versus Scotland. Then it's all about teamwork in the race of nations to determine the fastest nation. Last year, Germany and Schumacher stole the show. Lewis Hamilton will swap the new SLR for his McLaren Mercedes F1 car after his Hoy challenge in a celebration of this year's title. From four wheels to two, the X Fighters Freestyle Show promises to be a display of extremes. The best bike riders in the world are here. Then comes the race of champions to decide who really is the champion of champions. Plenty to look forward to this afternoon and this evening live from Wembley. With the best seats in the house, Tony Jardine, our motor racing expert, joins us. Tony, just two names to mention first of all in Hamilton and Hoy. One in his car, one on his bike. How do you expect this to turn out? <laughs> it's, it's hard to know really, but if you think about it, it's an amazing affair because one who shredded the nation's nerves, the other one who motivated the nation at the Olympics. It's a real heading off. And one has got real muscle power and huge tree trunks of legs, and the other one's got a five-speed transmission. And it's literally 200 miles per hour against 43 miles per hour on the bicycle. But that track out there is as slippery as anything, and we watched Hoy out there earlier trying to find out how his bike was going to slide around. It's anybody's guess, I suggest there will be a few penalties for Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some huge names on show today, as there always is at the Race of Champions, but how good is it to see Lewis part of that mix? It's fabulous. Uh, remember, you and I were talking to Anthony last year and the organisers, how could they get Lewis Hamilton involved? I don't think the team wanted him to go through the whole race, but this promotion is a way of really saluting the achievements of Britain on the racetrack and also in the Olympic Games as well. So I think it's, it's a huge cue for the organisers. I think what's also necessary is to explain how all this is about to work. So, Lewis and Chris will race on the same track as the drivers competing in the Race of Nations and Champions later today. A parallel track with an abundance of twists and turns. Lewis in the new SLR road car, Chris on his bike. The playing fields have been leveled to ensure close racing. Lewis will make a standing start. Chris, a flying one from the bridge. And there may be the occasional donut as well. It is, of course, uh, Tony Jardine, a little bit of fun, isn't it, this uh, particular head-to-head, -head. but how competitive might it get? Well, that's what I say. Over yesterday, um, we've learned that a lot of the drivers have been testing. They've been training and testing. So down there in the lounge, we get all the interviews, and Amanda Williams finally says, ah, it's great, end of season, you know, we're all relaxed, we're all great mates. Let me tell you, Adam Carroll has been out in Ireland testing a world rally car on a kart track. 
We know that Schumacher has tested in a KTM crossbow, which you're going to see today. Others have been testing, Tom Christensen, etc. They want to win. They're all serious champion of champions. Look, you've got the newly crowned five times world rally champion, Sebastian Loeb, seven times champion Michael Schumacher. They want to win. I tell you what, many big names have performed in this event over the course of the years. Let's take a look back at the history of the Race of Champions. The Race of Champions was dreamt up in 1988 by Frederick Johnson and the female rally legend Michelle Mouton with the simple premise, the world's best rally drivers competing on equal terms in equal machinery. The ultimate driver's shootout. The role of honour includes four-time world rally champion Juha Kankunen, who took the inaugural title in Paris, and Swedish rally legend Stig Blomqvist, who won at different venues in 1989 and 1990. In 1992, the event took up permanent residence in Gran Canaria and former ambulance driver Didier Oriol scorched to an unbeaten four titles between 1993 to 1999. The Nations Cup was introduced in 1999, putting national teams of drivers against each other. The same year, hot shots from other disciplines were unleashed against their rallying cousins for the first time. But the most momentous change came in 2004 with the switch to a specially constructed parallel track at the Stade de France in Paris. The race of champions went up another gear as Michael Schumacher lost in the semi-final to a young Heike Kovalainen, the first time a non-rally driver had won the event. Last year, home favourite Sebastian Loeb, winner in 2003 and 2005, lost out to Sweden's Matthias Ekström in the final. Over the years, high-octane thrills and spills have attracted a who's who from across motorsport. Michael Schumacher, Fernando Alonso, David Coulthard, Valentino Rossi and Felipe Massa all have gone head-to-head -to, -head to find out who is the fastest. This race could be sensational. They are looking sensational around here and it is very, very close. And Sebastian Vettel wins for Germany. Germany has won the Nations Cup of 2007. That's it, away they go. Matthias Ekstrom is going to be fighting in the last race of the day for the Champion of Champions title against seven times world champion Michael Schumacher. Great! A lot of work for Schumacher to do now, but it's Ekstrom that has the advantage in this final race of the day. Ekstrom has got the advantage as they come out of the left-hander. He holds the advantage, he sprints down to the checkered flag, and oh. Matthias Ekstrom is the Champion of Champions for the second year in succession. A brilliant, brilliant, brilliant afternoon driving by the Swede. How about this for a roll of honour then? Previous winners including Didier Oriel, winner here three times. Stig Blomquist, the two-time winner at the Race of Champions. Colin McRae also on that list, but it has been dominated by Matthias Ekstrom for the last two years or so. Uh, Tony Jardine, a lot of rally drivers on that uh, roll of honour. Is that a coincidence or do they just uh, perform better on this track? No, it's because you need a cross-discipline and a uh, rally driver is very, very good. They go head-to-head -head on super specials just like this, which is where this concept was originally developed. First of all, they go on tarmac and they go on loose. And as it's very, very slippery today, you're going to find that their kind of lock-to-lock -lock sideways style might be of benefit depending what they're driving. And that's why you've got Ekstrom, for example. He's a rally driver and a racing driver so he combines those two disciplines talking about a guy that won his class in the Swedish rally that's why he's so good he can put all those together I think we've got what we've got to watch out for today is Sebastian Loeb who's also a great racing driver he's raced at Le Mans he's tested the Red Bull Formula One car he's just an incredible all-round talent and the all-rounders I think will break through what about Michael Schumacher he was so close last year could this be the year that he actually uh, makes the breakthrough and wins the final well possibly he's very very serious about it, he's calm and he's collected, but he did make the mistakes last year and it was Sebastian Vettel, the young 21 year old who won his first Grand Prix this year at Monza, who saved his bacon and helped him to win the Nations Cup for Germany. So you know, it's a great combination, you know, the very young and the very old, because he's a bit crotchety <laughs> now, old Michael, you know, the old seven times and 91 Sure he won't wins. thank you for putting him down as old. <laughs> no, he won't, but he is 39, isn't he? And as a 39 year old, he's 
taken up racing motorbikes for goodness sake and he's had a few accidents this year ha they hardly all? passed it you'd say hardly uh, so the uh, race of champions is of course the uh, main event here today before that though there's the uh, pre-show entertainment which features lewis hamilton and chris hoy earlier in the week i caught up with chris hoy Chris, when someone said to you we're going to tarmac over Wembley Stadium, we want you to ride your bike on this track in front of a huge crowd. Oh, and by the way, we're throwing Lewis Hamilton into the mix as well, and you're going to have to race against him, and he's driving a car. What were your first thoughts? I thought, yeah, let's go for it. <laughs> I thought, brilliant. <laughs> I'm a big motor racing fan, and uh, just to get a chance to meet these guys is excellent. So to be here and to be able to compete in front of a, a huge crowd and in such an amazing venue, it's, it's fantastic, yeah. So you've been here today and you've seen the track as it is in all its glory and it's just being set up at the moment. What do you make of it? What are your first impressions? It's going to be quite tricky, I think, on a bike. It's very tight and the surface is a little bit slippy for, you know, you're riding on tyres that are 20 mils wide and it's not a lot of traction and the temperature as well, it's pretty cold, not used to that. So it's, it's going to be difficult, but then, you know, I'm sure they'll make a, a kind of handicap start so that I get a bit of a head start and um, I'll be giving it absolutely everything. Yeah, what can you do behind the scenes to make sure you come out of here all guns are blazing? Well, first of all, the warm-up's crucial. I'll have to make, make sure I'm absolutely, you know, 100% ready to go. Um, it'll take about an hour and a half of gradual warming up indoors, on the bike, until um, you're absolutely sweating. You come out here, muscles are warm, psyched up and uh, get in the right frame of mind and then just attack it. What about the fact that there's going to be a huge crowd here on Sunday as well? How different, well, how big a contrast are these sorts of events to what you do daily, your day job? Well, I think the biggest crowd I've raced at, uh, raced in front of, was in Munich and there was 10,000 people there and that was amazing. So, uh, you know, they're reckoning maybe 50 or 60,000 people here. So if we get that, that would be, you know, way beyond anything I've ever experienced. So it'd be amazing, yeah. But presumably you're not going to be too awestruck by Lewis or uh, the crowds watching on. You're going to be fully focused on the event ahead. Oh, absolutely. I'll be using the same sort of mental rehearsal techniques I use at the, the track when I'm competing at the Olympics or the World Championships or whatever. You know, you just you block out everything that's around you and you focus on the task at hand. And um, the only problem is that I know exactly what I'm doing when I'm at the velodrome, but here it's a little bit different. Um, so it might be a little bit harder to stay as focused as I normally am. but. You know, I'll, I'll be doing all every little trick in the book that I know. I'll be uh, utilising it to try and uh, letting do Lewis's tyres down. Yeah, that's one of them. <laughs> yeah, don't don't tell him that though. But yeah. How do you feel being a Scot walking out at Wembley Stadium and not in fact playing football, but in fact riding around on <laughs> your bike? It's just nice to be here. You know, hopefully I can take a scalp and uh, come back north of the border, so, you know. Uh, I won on, on, on Wembley Turf. It doesn't happen very often for Scotland, so that'd be nice if I could do that. So it is the ultimate showdown of man versus machine, but do you think you can win it? I'm going to give it a really good shot. I mean, I, I wouldn't be here if I didn't think I could win it. And a lot of it comes down to the, the size of the handicap that I'm given. So maybe I'll just pretend I'm not going that well today and they'll give me a, a nice big handicap. Lewis, the opponent for Ahoy this afternoon. He's been speaking and reflecting on his year in F1. It feels incredible. It feels, uh, I'm just very proud and proud of my team, proud of the people around me that have got me to where I am. I'm just so thankful to have had the opportunity and I still can't believe it, honestly, it hasn't kicked in just yet. The uh, F1 title couldn't have been secured in more dramatic circumstances, could it? Does that make it all the more special? Definitely, definitely. Um, I think just throughout the year, you know, it was a tough season. There was a lot of ups and downs. There was, uh, you know, I was in Brazil where everyone was supporting, uh, in, pretty much everyone in Brazil was supporting uh, Felipe, the Brazilian driver, and, and, you know, we still pulled through with, with all the tough things against us. Your dad, Anthony, spoke about the fact that at times he considered the F1 circuit a place where perhaps he didn't want you to be. Was it ever a place that you didn't want to be? Uh, from time to time it is, um, but uh, I mean, I can't complain, I mean, I, I, it's, it's what I've, I love doing. It's, um, it can be a gruesome world at some state, at sometimes, but it's also an amazing experience and so I wouldn't uh, tell anyone to shy away from it. It's everything that, I did that uh, you can imagine. I'm just very, very blessed in life and I, you know, I don't take any of that for granted. The public sees all the pluses of the Formula One lifestyle. What about some of the sacrifices along the way? Have there been many of those? Uh, for myself, uh, definitely quite a few sacrifices, um, but a lot for my family as well. So collectively, we've we've made a lot of sacrifices. But I think, especially at the beginning, my dad, you know, he had three to four jobs at one one stage just to keep me go karting, which is pretty insane. Um, and still, he then he was, you know, always happy, still keeping pushing me and. Um, you know, I didn't do the, the, the normal things most teenagers would do. 
I was always focused on my race and always thinking about it at school. I was always thinking about it, um, you know, and I was always taking time off. I wasn't spending time with friends. So it's a different life, but it was all worth it, that's for sure. Sometimes in sport, you're going to encounter a partisan crowd, aren't you? And sometimes, regrettably as well, a, a racist one, which did occur in Spain this year. How difficult was that to deal with? Well, uh, I mean, I, I just don't really tend to think about it too much. I mean, it, it was tough, but it was something in the past. We move on. And uh, what's what the best thing is, is when I came to my home Grand Prix in Silverstone, I had the whole crowd, everyone, as many people came as, as possible, had a huge amount of support. And, and that's what sports are all about. It never really stops, but um, hopefully I will get a break at Christmas. But at the moment, we're focusing on uh, getting back, saying thank you to all the team for, for all the hard work they've done. We're going to Mercedes-Benz uh, in, in Brooklyn uh, today and um, and really just making sure I get that message out. But uh, And then after that, working with the team, developing next year's car. These shots to confirm Lewis Hamilton's arrival in the uh, hospitality lounge. There was uh, some discrepancy as to exactly when he would be uh, turning up this afternoon to take part in this Ahoy uh, Hamilton challenge. There was fog in Stuttgart where he was this morning, but being part of a jet set Formula One driver lifestyle means that you just jump in your private jet and uh, hop off here to the race of champions where he's going to compete this afternoon. 23 years, 10 months and 26 days he became the youngest champion in F1. It's a uh, Easy to forget that, isn't it, Tony? He's so, such a composed individual. That's the thing, you know, that he was in his rookie year. He lost the World Championship by one point, and yet he won four Grand Prix. And then in his second ever year in Grand Prix racing, he won by one point. He won at the last corner at the last Grand Prix. That's why I say he did shred the nation's nerves, and everybody's heart was in their mouth when he did it. But they compared him after 32 races with his record against the greats, Fangio, Clark, Schumacher, who's here, today and he was ahead on every count when he won his first Grand Prix how many pole positions youngest ever etc etc he's obliterated all the records Britain has an absolute superstar in this young man it's his first world championship he could win as many as, as Schumacher you never know well, we're certainly uh, looking forward to Hamilton Hoy in a, a short while time let's first give you a preview of the track this year to be specific, it's taken 1,800 tonnes of tarmac, 2,200 tonnes of underlay and a 100 tonne bridge to make Wembley a motor racing venue and a challenging one for the drivers at that. The track layout guarantees an impression of speed and power for drivers and spectators alike, ensuring plenty of side-by-side -side racing. Andy Prio gives you the guided tour. So here we are side by side on the start finish line, really important to make a good start and be quick into turn one, very very fast left hand corner into a slow chicane. This is the infield section, very very slow speed, very easy to be too quick here and lose a lot of time and run wide into the barriers and also be too slow, you can lose a lot of time in this section, really important to get a good exit out of the last corner and over the start finish line. This race is going to be won by one tenth of a second, maybe less, so it's really important to be quick over the finish. This track has been uh, driven on, I say driven on, <laughs> a loose term uh, already today. Tony Jardine, what on earth is Terry Grant up to? <laughs> well, he has been a great racing driver. I raced against him in those series in the Little Legends, which are one-third scale cars with Yamaha motorcycle engine, sequential gearbox, and as you can see, they're fabulously entertaining. And Terry goes round the world doing these tricks, setting the throttle like that so it just spins around on its axis and entertaining crowds all over the world. He has a number of different stunt cars which he runs and he owns as well. And he's been hugely successful. I was talking to him yesterday about it. For him, the slippier the track, the better, because he can get the thing sliding and gyrating around like this. See how close he gets to the barriers as well. And as he was doing that, all the flash bulbs were going off around the web. Wembley Stadium, well, that's, that's one of his best stunts, isn't it? <laughs> My goodness me. And, and actually, it's got funny little doors, it's a frail little thing, but very entertaining. That it is. Well, throughout uh, history, man has put his wits against machine. We know that. Never, though, has the outcome been a predictable. Throughout time, man has sought to define his place at the peak of nature's hierarchy. To prove himself against perceived foe, the best of what man and nature have created. American folklore hero John Henry's legendary battle with a steam hammer proving man can compete with machine. The mental dexterity of Russia's Garry Kasparov taking on computer X3D in the ultimate chess match. 
and the physical power of South Africa's Brian Habana to race nature's fastest animal, the cheetah. Today, another chapter in that timeless story will be written as two of Britain's sporting heroes go head to head. Can the sheer brute strength of Chris Hoy possibly beat the world's best driver, Lewis Hamilton? This is the ultimate racer's race. to Wembley Stadium, you're watching the Race of Champions 2008. Uh, plenty of celebrities have uh, turned out for this event today. Some have even had a go in the cars as well, including uh, Ame Khan, Frank Bruno and Enzo Macronelli. It's been an experience for many of them, not always a good one. So the amateurs have been on show, so too will the pros be later. It's not just Hamilton and Hoy on show this afternoon and this evening. The most uh, entertaining driver in NASCAR, Carl Edwards, he's here too. Carl Edwards comes out of turn four and wins at Richmond. Awesome, awesome job. There's a wild bird in your life. We've got the food for you right here, the wild bird food from Scott's. Carl Edwards takes it. Yeah, baby, yeah, baby. That is the man. I was 17 or 18 years old thinking that people were going to put this in a file with all the other race car drivers that they potentially could hire and um, you know when the day came they would call me up. Now they tell me they just thought it was kind of comical but in, in a way that made them realize hey you know he, he's really serious about this. Carl Edwards was serious. Since signing with Roush Fenway Racing in 2003 Carl has had a rush of success. One since he's been involved in NASCAR, and that captures people's imagination, and people want to root for a winner. Carl Edwards goes back to back. A company needs a winner, and that's really where it starts. And from there, it gets into how good is that person's personality, how likable is the person. Everything okay, Carl? I'm winning, right? Even though it's a product pitch, it somehow has to come off as genuine. I taught him that. Whether it's his tone of voice or whether it's, it's his facial expression, for some reason, it doesn't seem as fake as it could be or really is. And that's what makes the difference. You know, you could say that your image is the way people perceive you. I mean, you know, I mean we're doing this interview and I don't know how tight the shot is, but I might not be wearing pants right now. I mean, you just don't know. The only uh, bad part about all the coverage and everything is if you have a bad weekend or something bad happens, every person you run into, they all want to talk about that. But Carl wants to talk to somebody. Is he to give you a thumbs up? I guess. I don't know. You really sometimes just want to forget what happens. There's only a couple guys that have really transcended a sport. He's good looking, he takes care of his sponsors, he has sponsors that invest in him, and he's got the flip. That total package makes Carl Edwards one of the next big stars. Carl Edwards, the self-styled flipper. Uh, a proven driver on new tracks though, uh, and in new cars as well. Tony, how key could his adaptability be today? I think quite key to it, because America have a very good record in here, and we've seen Jimmy Johnson and other NASCAR stars coming along. I mean, they're good in the confines of the walls and on the tarmac and so on. He was taking a lot of advice from David Coulthard when we were down there watching practice yesterday, and David was saying, well, it understeers, it does this, you've got to flip it and do that, and he was going, okay, right, no problem. But he is the all-American boy and uh, he'll give it a great go. Could he be the type who goes out and puts on a real show, a real crowd pleaser for this audience here today? He should do because he's from Missouri isn't he? And, uh, <laughs> he, he, is, he is the real deal and he is the golden boy, he is the big idol over there in NASCAR. But they, they don't very often come over here and travel particularly well, they're like a sort of bad bottle of wine. 
but he is one of the ones that is prepared to adapt and he's been listening, he's been learning, he's been asking lots of questions. I wouldn't expect him though to be in the winner's circle later on. Look forward to seeing him in action a little later on. Now, Lewis Hamilton versus Chris Hoy is up before that, the ultimate test of man versus a machine. At their disposals, the tools of their trade of course, a bike and a car. Toby Moody and Amanda Stretton explain more. This is the bike that Chris Hoy is going to use at Wembley. Now this is something very special. Let's have a look. Normally on the track where he was in Beijing, he's got no brakes. Here he needs brakes, so he's got brakes at the front and the rear. Different forks and also different handlebars. He's got steel handlebars today rather than the carbon fibre handlebars he used in China. Why? He's so strong in his upper body, he could actually break the carbon fibre ones. Very, very sleek aerodynamic seat post and the main chassis and he's got a massive gear and only a triple gold medalist such as Chris Hoy can turn such a gear. The question is, who will win? Will it be man or Mercedes? You know what, Toby? I think it's going to be a real race because this might be a 5.5 litre supercharged McLaren SLR, even built at the McLaren factory. But this car is huge and it really is not suited to go around these tight and twisty bends. The only thing that it's got going for it is the 450 brake horsepower, but also the paddle shift gears. But I think even at best, he's only going to be using first and maybe second if he's lucky. So really, I don't know where to put my money. Thanks very much, Amanda. Well, Lewis are unlikely to get out of second, as Amanda was saying there, but how dangerous can he still be in the second gear? <laughs> very dangerous. <laughs> but as I say, I think there'll be more than chicanes are put in his way because he might have to make a Le Mans start. It's got a gull wing door on the SLR. Fabulous, fabulous piece of kit. So he's got to get in, put his seatbelt, start it off. Chris hopefully will start from the top of the bridge, but on his original racing bike with the one gear, he'll already have a downhill start. And there's going to be a couple of chicanes put into place which are going to slow Lewis down. So it's really to equalize it out. I mean, 43 brake horsepower and twin tree trunk pedal power again. Exactly, with those 27 inch thighs, who knows what's uh, possible. Chris Hoy does hold the Olympic record though over the 1k distance, doesn't he? So perhaps we shouldn't rate him as an underdog in this. No, we shouldn't. And in fact, that's what he did uh, at the Olympics in 2004, as we're looking at Chris Pfeiffer at the moment on that one kilometer track. This we're looking at is the donut zone. And to show you how really, really slip it was yesterday down here, Chris Pfeiffer crashed his bike and he rides uh, for BMW he rides the uh, BMW F800S, so he had to pull out a new bike, but he's three times world stunt champion. He's an amazing rider. Chris Pfeiffer goes all over the world. He's, he's been in motocross. He does, look, he does shows like that. Long wheelies, a great entertainer. Plenty of uh, pre-show entertainment here at Wembley. It doesn't get better though, does it? Then what's coming next after the break? Hamilton versus Hoy live. Welcome back to the Race of Champions 2008. Lewis Hamilton just jumping into a familiar sight, that SLL car of his. Him and Chris Hoy have given British sports fans an F1 title and an Olympics to be proud of. Prizes aren't at stake this afternoon, but a pride is in the Hamilton versus Hoy Challenge. 2008's two much successful races, Scotland versus England at Wembley. And something has to give this afternoon. Let's hand you over to our commentary team of Toby Moody and Andy Marriott, who'll take you through Hamilton versus Hoy. Yes, explosive adrenaline pumping action coming up. And it's going to be unleashed here in the family Wembley Stadium. Yes, hello everyone. I'm Andrew Marriott, high up in the commentary box here at Wembley. I'm joined by Tony Mooby, who has witnessed the race of champions in several different homes, including Paris and the Canary Islands. But here, tremendous atmosphere, Tony, and we're getting ready, of course, for this uh, great event. We certainly are. Thank you, Andrew and uh, Lewis doing an exploratory lap of this Wembley Stadium. It's a one kilometre long circuit. He's got Chris Hoy alongside him. Lewis has just arrived from Stuttgart. He's arrived straight here to Wembley. He's been here only, I think, about 10 minutes right, or so. Yeah. So he actually doesn't know his way around. So he's having a quick recce. Yeah, he's having a quick recce, but he is used to this car. He's done lots of demonstrations in this car, particularly at the uh, Mercedes-Benz factory. And it sounds fabulous. This is a road car, a very expensive one, albeit but it has had a racing exhaust fitted to it, Tony, so it's making a fabulous noise. And, uh, Toby, as we sit down here and uh, see the stadium, which has got a very huge crowd, well, 
the flashbulbs are going off everywhere. They certainly are. The Chris Hoy on the left-hand side. Three the goals in Beijing this summer. Today. Two at the previous well, Olympics. We're not actually going to be and um, a nine times I mean, world champion. It's going to be too treacherous on a bike. I mean, literally, it's, it's like black ice in certain parts out there. So, you know, it's, it's a big disappointment. I was really looking forward to it. I'm sure Lewis was too. Um, but, you know, you, you don't want to put yourself at risk. So it's, it's a big shame. But it's fantastic to be here. It's an amazing venue, and I think the organisers have put on a, a fantastic show for everybody. Fantastic. Lewis, how does it feel to finally be world champion? That's an incredible feeling, and uh, a big thank you to everyone for your support. They, uh, really, the fans have been fantastic. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet Chris, and uh, unfortunately, yeah, we didn't get to do the, the race today, but still, we get to go and have a little bit of fun. And uh, really, the, the noise, the crowd, I hope you're all enjoying it. It's, uh, it's a pleasure for me to be here. So. Ladies and gentlemen, can we give it up for our two champions down here, Chris Hoy and Lewis Hamilton. So you heard it as we heard it up in the studio at the very same time. This race between uh, Hamilton and Hoy is not going to take place uh, based on the grounds that the track is just simply too slippery out there. And as Chris Hoy was saying, Tony Jardine, it really isn't worth putting yourself at risk. No, it's not. And it's something that we were watching uh, earlier on this morning um, when Chris Hoy went around to do his exploratory laps on his uh, bicycle. And it was very slippy. Now you're looking at uh, brother Nicholas, there is getting a ride in the SLR so I, I dare say that Lewis is now going to do some demonstration runs of his own there he is spinning the rear wheels and getting some heat into the rear tires and some traction in the fabulous and that's the new SLR with a huge amount of horsepower which is the drop head coupe which is um, built and developed uh, at Woking at the McLaren HQ uh, on behalf of Mercedes so doing a great job but Mr. Hoy was basically foreseeing that the, his bike was slipping and sliding so much that he could have come such a big cropper. And I don't think the track's improved through, uh, since then because it's so cold. You and I were both here yesterday. It was absolutely teeming down with rain, wasn't it? And the track was absolutely soaking wet. And really, the, the release materials in the track uh, were being released. All sorts of problems being caused and drivers going off left, right and centre. So uh, the best decision, do you think? Yeah, I mean, you just saw the Mercedes there sliding as, as Lewis just gave a little burst of throttle there with the right hand foot and he's having to get on the brakes as well and the car is slipping and sliding all over the place so you can imagine Chris Hoy going round on his Olympic bike which of course relies on on the dry um, sort of melodromes inside where he's going on the wooden banking where he gets a lot of grip from the tiny tiny little tires and here's a celebration though of, of a world champion at 23 years of age. I mean Lewis is smiling and for good reason. He gets a chance to celebrate in front of the home fans which he hasn't perhaps had a chance to do up until this time. No he hasn't and a lot of people have come to see him and celebrate his world championship. They've been able to watch in front of the television but they've come to Wembley to salute him and to salute McLaren as well who've done such a fabulous job and I think Ron Dennis and Martin Whitmarsh leading that fantastic team. They've been through so much this year and now finally Lewis and the team can relax a little bit and enjoy and reflect on, on what's gone on. But yeah, they're working hard to, for next year but they've really got to enjoy this. I spoke to uh, Lewis about it when interviewing him uh, after his F1 season and he did talk about the fact that it hasn't always been the easiest of years, has it, this F1 year for him, despite the win? It's been terrible. I mean, you just have to look at spa Francorchamps, for example, where he got a penalty for overtaking and then re-overtaking uh, when, he, when he went through the chicane and uh, had overtaken because, you know, the Ferrari. He, he's had other penalties. He's had a difficult time where he actually hit the back of the Ferrari when he missed the traffic lights in Canada. He's had some penalties he's had, had to overcome. I think particularly where he had to be so disciplined at the last Grand Prix in Brazil, where it was against his instinct, totally against his instinct to drive in a guarded way, that was the McLaren strategy to get him through. And it nearly wasn't enough. But as it happens, it proved to be just by one point. So Lewis enjoying his time out on the track, despite the fact that he's not racing and what he should have been doing against Chris Hoy. Chris Hoy is with Amanda Stratton. Amanda. Thanks, Georgie. Well, Chris, you must be devastated. I know you were looking forward to it, but it is wet and slippy out there, isn't it? 
It is, and it's actually the oil that's the problem. There was a, a few accidents yesterday in the rain in practice, and I believe there's been some oil spilt in the track, and I, I spent the whole morning checking the track out, looking for ways to try and make it possible, and the organisers have been fantastic. I mean, they were spraying concrete cement onto the track to try and make it grip here. But at the end of the day, you've got to put safety first, and it's a huge disappointment because I was really looking forward to it, and I know Lewis was too, but to get taken out on a, in his car for a lap, it wasn't, wasn't a bad um, consolation. Now, I mean, we were looking forward to it as well. What preparation have you been doing ahead of this? Well, I've been doing a lot of acceleration work because it's very short. It's a very short straight on these tracks, you know, lots of tight bends and short accelerations. So I was doing a fair bit of training on the track in, in Manchester for that. And I had a specially modified bike with, um, it was a track bike, but with a freewheel and two brakes. Um, our track bikes don't have brakes normally. So, you know, we put a lot of time and effort into this and it's, it's really frustrating. But if I'd come down and broken a bone at the start of the season, you know, I'd be letting my team down, my sponsors, myself. I don't want to miss out the season. Um, so it's a great shame. And I'm, I'm sorry for all the spectators that come here to to watch the whole event, but also to see Lewis and me race. Um, but, you know, maybe maybe next year, who knows? Nice to go out in the car with him and see, and at least see all the crowd. Incredible. The noise was amazing. And just, you know, to be in a venue like Wembley, I've never really done anything in that kind of um, arena before. So, you know, the track they've, they've laid down, you wouldn't know there's a football pitch under it. It's incredible, the work they've done here. And it's been a great experience. I've met, you know, Michael Schumacher, Sebastian Loeb, Lewis, obviously. It's, it's For a motorsports fan, it's, it's, it's been a big day for me. Well, listen, great to see you. Thank you. Sorry you didn't get to race. Chris Hoy, thanks a lot. Thank you. Chris Hoy fully prepared to uh, get out there on the track, but a disappointment this afternoon because uh, the track conditions just uh, not really good enough and not in the right condition for racing. Too much oil on the track. Anthony Hamilton joining his son out there on the track. What a partnership that's been, Tony, over the course of the year. Well, it has, and I think it's all been based on family values. It's about keeping his feet on the ground and you can see the way Lewis is really sort of saying, well, you know, thanking all the fans and really appreciative of everything that everybody has done. But in particular, he knows that the man on his right hand side there, his dad Anthony, is responsible for his success because it was about sacrifice. And in the early days, you know, his dad did all sorts of jobs. He even went out and put up for sale signs at houses. And during the day, he was working as an engineer and driving back. Anything to keep his son's karting career going along because he believed in it. And everything they did was based on family decisions. And that's why his dad is very much his manager, very much part and parcel of his career, and an architect, really, of his superb success. I don't think anybody, including myself, watching him come up through the ranks had any, any doubts about Lewis Hamilton's talent. You know, it was a no-brainer to see that the guy would make it to Grand Prix racing. But we never in our wildest dreams expected him to be so successful so quickly. And the audacious manoeuvres that he's pulled off right from the very first Grand Prix when he outfoxed Fernando Alonso. Everyone went, what? Well, he can't do that again, but he did. How well has he done, not just on the track, but also coping with the pressures that come with a Formula One lifestyle? And that sounds like a ridiculous thing to say because there are so many good things and positives that come out of it. But what about the negative pressures that come with it as well, the spotlight? Yeah, the spotlight is a very negative pressure. I think you can say in the middle part of this year when he had the accident with the traffic lights, when he hit the back of Kimi Raikkonen's Ferrari in Canada, um, he had a lot of media pressure, a lot of negative media pressure against him. And, and essentially that was a big down period for him. Of course, against with the FIA and you know, the various penalties that, that he's had. You know, if you look at when he went over the curbs, going past uh, Bourdais in France, he had penalties. He had penalties in qualifying in Malaysia. So he was always battling something or other, or battling the might of Ferrari. And, and I think you said it to him in the interview as well battling huge negativity when he was in Brazil itself. They even threw black cats at the family, which are, which are uh, bad luck in Brazil. And they were doing anything to really try and, you know, unseat him, unnerve him and put him off his stroke. But then, as I say, he went out there and he drove a very, very disciplined race in, in Brazil. And this is why now taking the accolades from the crowd, there's a huge crowd here. They're spread all over the three or four different tiers, but they're saluting their man, their champion, the people's champion, Lewis Hamilton. Such a shame that that uh, race between Hamilton and Hoy didn't get underway here at Wembley Stadium, but for all the uh, right reasons, uh, unfortunately. Let's just remind you, though, of what's still to come here on the show. It's all about teamwork next up in the race of nations that will determine the fastest nation. Last year, Germany and Schumacher stole the show. Lewis Hamilton 
is going to jump into his McLaren Mercedes F1 car in celebration of this year's title win. From four wheels to two, the X Fighters Freestyle Show promises to be a display of extreme. The best bike riders in the world are here. And then comes the race of champions to decide who is the champion of champions. As I said last year, the race of nations went to Germany. Here's how it happened. Are you ready? You've heard what's going to happen. Now it is about to happen. Explosive start to this event. Now the deal is, first team to get two victories will go forward to the semi-final. So France has got the lead at the present moment. Now Peter Solberg has got to pull something out of the bag. Second flag ready! And it's Peter Solberg. Really came fighting back, didn't he? And it's the tie for France versus Norway. Bordet, I think, has lost it completely. So it's going to be a walkover for Norway. Tom Christiansen drags a bit at the first corner. Heike Kovalainen has got the drop on it. And the checkered flag is and, coming down. And it is the red car of Heike Kovalainen. Look how close oh. he can go. And he's, he's lost it on, on, on the inside. Marcus Bronham is the winner. This is the race that I'm really looking forward to. Two top bricks from Formula One together. And I think there's a lot of bragging rights here. David's got it all to do. And Jason Button wins. Jason Button wins for England. And wins relatively easily. And there goes the check. Over the line right. goes Andy Prio to win for England. So England have won both their heats. This race could be sensational. Oh. Double, double NASCAR champion Jimmy Johnson against seven times Formula One world champion. And there he is. Michael Schumacher. Which he said he's coming to have a bit of fun, but he isn't really coming for fun, is he? He's coming to win. Over the line goes Michael Schumacher to win for Germany. Well, no, it's tremendously close. close. Tremendously close. And it's going to be Pastrana. Pastrana goes over yes. the line for America. Fantastic. Are we going to see the brilliant American beating the brilliant uh, German? Well, it's go. Green for go, Murray. And Michael Schumacher so focused here today. And takes Germany through into the semi-final. And this is close, Murray. This one is really close. Look at this. Oh, this is looking uh, very good indeed from Finland. Kovalainen wins for Finland. This is going to be a cracker, Murray. Two World Rally champions. And the checkered flag, and it's victory for Finland. Well, this could be the very, very big one. Jensen Button and Michael Schumacher. This is what the race of champions is all about. Absolutely. And it's Michael Schumacher wins for Germany. Over the line they go, and in the white roof car, Sebastian Vettel wins for Germany. And Germany has defeated England in the Nations Cup. No comment. The final is on, and Michael Schumacher has stalled, and they're on the same bit of track. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Because because Kovalainen has done the crossover, score a few points when he can actually overtake him. Not that there's much space around here. And pass him. Pass, go, go, go. Fantastic. Mikey Kovalainen <laughs> takes Michael Schumacher, seven times world champion, and an ecstatic Mikey Kovalainen is out of the car. If Sebastian Vettel can pull this off, it will be quite incredible and absolutely sensational. It's going to be Vettel, or is it? Is it going to be Kronen? Look how close it is. It is Sebastian Vettel who wins wow. for Germany. They are looking sensational around here, and it is very, very close. I can hardly believe my eyes. And the pin has actually nudged the wall, and Sebastian Vettel wins for Germany. Germany has won the Nations Cup of 2007. So last year, Schumacher delighted the crowd with that win. Let's hear from the seven-time Formula One world champion. I have to say there were very interesting things. They just opened up and uh, I was able to explore, mainly together with the family. And there was one particular thing that I enjoy most because school holidays, we are fixed and, and uh, close to those uh, moments that we can have uh, vacations together. 
it's nice to be home because usually I was testing, traveling, racing, uh, doing events uh, and the planning for, for the holidays with the kids was always uh, rather a compromise than, than a, a real straightforward thing. So these are the most beautiful moments that we can spend together. Otherwise I'm doing all these uh, uh, funny things to play soccer and uh, drive bikes and uh, whatever. One is the, the racing aspect, naturally. It's uh, a fun weekend with friends together and mates together that I know from the past. But much more, it's uh, a charity possibility that uh, we're going to donate, uh, I think, quite a substantial um, uh, value to ICM, which is an important organization uh, to me and to Jean Todt that uh, we have developed from day one. Uh, Jean is obviously the, the main person behind that and um, I'm glad to, to combine all those things. Uh, who knows what the future, uh, the long-term future will, will bring me to, I don't know. But right now I'm obviously in my advisory role for Ferrari and uh, be uh, quite happy and active uh, in this aspect. And otherwise just be a happily, happy family father and enjoy life. So Michael Schumacher, the seven-time Formula One world champion, 83 Grand Prix wins, 63 poles, 209 starts in F1. And today he'll line up alongside his teammate Sebastian Vettel for Team Germany in the Race of Nations. That, by the way, is due to take place in a little under 10 minutes' time. Germany will be going head-to-head -head with Ireland first up. Their drivers involve Adam Carroll and Gareth McHale. The F1 Racing GB, if you work your way from bottom to the top of the page, and all stars go head-to-head, -head. then it's USA against Autosport GB as well and then France in amongst the action against Scandinavia. This is the actual lineup and how things are going to look. Van Muller from France taking on Tom Christensen. Sebastian Loeb will face Matthias Ekstrom, a two-time winner here in 06-07. Carl Edwards of NASCAR goes head-to-head -head with Formula One's Jensen Button. Tanner Faust, the drift champion against Andy Prio, the three-time world touring car champion. It's David Coulthard will take on Jamie Algasari, just 18 years of age. Jason Plato faces up to Troy Bayliss, the superbike champion. It's Michael Schumacher, the seven-time Formula One world champion who goes head-to-head -head with Adam Carroll and Sebastian Vettel, who takes on Gareth McHale. Jensen, Andy, enjoying themselves ahead of the action this afternoon. First up for them will be Carl Edwards and Tanner Faust. As far as you're concerned, Tony Jardine, do these two stand quite a good chance? Yeah, very good chance because they've been teamed together before here last year. They were a little bit upset because it was Germany against England at Wembley and they, they lost out in the end. But uh, Andy did very well in the individuals until he hit the wall with the Aston Martin. But I think he said to you this morning he's going for the entertainment factor, isn't he? Well, he said he was going to be a crowd pleaser. But having said that, you know the Prio. He's likely to go out there, isn't he, for the race win. It's amazing, actually, how competitive these boys are in this environment. You don't expect them to be so because it's a fun entertainment event. But they can't really lose that competitive streak, can they? No, they can't. And even Jensen Button, you know, he's in dire situation as the same with the 700 other staff for Honda Formula One at the moment, desperately trying to get someone to take on the team and so that they can continue in Formula One. But despite all that, he's happy, he's smiling, he's been very optimistic about it. On his left-hand side, Andy Brio had a, a very good season. He ended up fourth in the World Touring Car Champion, but he's our most successful British racing driver. Triple World Touring Car Champion. Great bloke, he works with us at, at Sky Sport from time to time when he's allowed to. He's been testing the new BMW M3 in the United States. He's as busy as ever, he's as popular as ever, and there's Sebastian Loeb. That's a strong team with Van Muller from France. Van Muller is the man who's just won the World Touring Car Championship and taken the crown away. And alongside him, Sebastian Loeb. I'm a big fan of his because to win the World Championship mm. five times in World Rally, being the very best ever driver in rallying, is as good as Schumacher winning seven times in Formula One. Several cars are in action a little later on this afternoon. An eclectic mix, you might say, one of which is the Arbard 500. Amanda can tell you more on that.
these are baths are new this year for the race of champions and they may look quite cute and unassuming but i can tell you what this is a wolf in some sheep's clothing because underneath the bonnet you've got a 1.4 turbocharged engine that pushes out almost 200 brake horsepower they're front wheel drive so they're going to be great around this tight twisty circuit and they are loosely based on the arbath road car got a mechanical gearbox so it's going to be familiar to a lot of drivers and i bet they're going to have a hoot with these cars what's more it wears a scorpion badge as well so uh, tony jardine the obvious question is small car with big sting <laughs> <laughs> oh, very good. <laughs> Sting in the tail, perhaps? perhaps. Yeah, undoubtedly, but it, it's such a so small car and it packs a real powerful punch. It literally punches above its weight. But Fiat Abarth, which is the tuning side of the company, they've done that since the 60s when they had a, a 650 car which had the rear engine cover open so it could take more air in. That acted as a little aerofoil and had a big radiator on the front. So they've always been competitive. And if you remember last year, we had the Punto Abarth here, the S2000, which is the new world rally car that they're running in the international rally series so they've got a great tradition i'm looking forward to seeing them and hope that the proper drivers don't put them off into the wall as the celebrities did there's a few bent little fiats down there with little bruises and plasters on their wings you fancy yourself as a bit of a rally driver don't you so uh, who better to take a look at the ford focus that's second up Amazingly, Race of Champions is in its 21st year. It is based originally on a tribute to Henry Toivonen, the late great Finn who lost his life in the sport. And that's why a rally car like this plays a central part in Race of Champions. This is a Ford Focus RS. It's a world rally car. It's just finished Wales Rally GB. Yari Mati Latvala was second overall. Herven and actually rolled his car, but it was rally car of the year in 2007. And the racing drivers, the sports car drivers, the motorcycle riders have got to get to grips with this rally car. Some of them not used to having a roof over their head, never mind being caged in by these roll bars, but at least they'll be safe, hopefully. An obvious car for these uh, rally drivers, an obvious choice for them. How big an advantage could it give them out there? Well, quite a bit. As I say, people like Sebastian Loeb, I think he's going to start off in the Focus. Well, he's used to a world rally car. He's used to, on the Super Specials, going between the walls. Uh, the other drivers, not so much. But interestingly, Adam Carroll has been out in Gareth McHale's world rally car in Ireland on a kart track. And McHale told me yesterday that he was extremely quick. So he could give uh, the other drivers a real run for their money. Uh, the car that we're all looking forward to seeing, the new addition to this uh, particular lineup is the KTM Crossbow. Tony's been uh, explaining about that one too. Now here's a fabulous new car which the drivers are going to have to take. It's been built by the motorcycle people KTM and they've built this car, the KTM Crossbow. It's 46,000 pounds worth of track day car. It's powered by a two litre turbocharged Audi engine. It's got a six speed box, it's rear wheel drive, but look at it. It's Formula One style, carbon fiber. It's got a fabulous tub. It's got aluminum in the tub as well. The suspension is hung off the corners as well, which means it has fantastic road holding. It even has a diffuser at the rear and it will suck itself down onto the ground on the faster corners. So it's a fabulous, fabulous piece of kit but it's raw and savage in terms of the energy and the power that it's going to be producing. No doors, no windows, no boot, the driver climbs into here. So we should be able to see the driver at work, soaring away at the wheel, having a fantastic time here at Wembley. They can't adjust the seat, they have to press a lever here and the pedal box will come towards them. And then they have a digital display. Are you ready to race? Well, they better be, because they're in for a big shake-up call in this, the KTM Crossbow. Well, how about the RX150? Tony's also been looking at that one.
Now here's a little projectile that's really going to sort the drivers out. This is an amalgam of RX Racing, which is Ollie O'Donovan, a rally man, and Rage Motorsport, Joe Adams, and they've got together to produce this RX 150. It's a rally cross buggy. And it's got this tubular chassis, tubular rollover bar, all made by Rage Motorsport in Dunstable, beautifully manufactured. But the only thing not manufactured there is this Honda Fireblade 954cc motorcycle engine. That means it's got an amazing power to weight ratio. It will go like stink, which is why I said to you, I think the rally boys in here are really going to sort this car out. They're gonna to have to throw it. Will the Formula One boys and the sports car boys do that? I don't know, they'll probably be quite smooth. They're very safe in their shell in here. They have got this debris netting a la NASCAR style. The great thing for us today during the races, we'll be able to see the drivers hard at work. We'll see all their body language. Now, Adam Carroll from A1 Team Ireland had a bit of a no-no yesterday in practice. He knocked off a front corner. These little RX150 machines can bite. Let's hope they can really tame them today. I think a bit of a no-no is a far too fair way of explaining exactly what happened with uh, Adam Carroll yesterday. The RX150 though, at home on tarmac and loose surfaces. So how much tail sliding could we see out there this well, afternoon? Well, it should be a lot, but that's why I'm saying I think the rally boys are saying, well, well, then we're gonna go from stop to stop, which is lock to lock, to really get it to work. But I think that the track is so slippy, they're going to have to be a little bit tentative. And the racing drives are going to try and take smooth racing lines. And I think that you're going to see the rally men like Sebastian Loeb chucking it around and Gareth McHale, and uh, they might get a better result. We know that uh, one man certainly uh, enjoys this event. It is Michael Schumacher in all his glory for Germany, up next in the Race of Nations. Welcome back to the Race of Nations and the Race of Champions 2008. Michael Schumacher for Team Germany coming up very shortly. Just a reminder of how this is going to work. Eight nations represented by two drivers compete for the title of the fastest nation of the world. Last year, Michael Schumacher teamed up with Sebastian Vettel and helped Germany win its first Race of Champions Nations Cup title. The first team in each match to reach two heat victories wins goes through to the last eight to the quarterfinals, then to the semifinals, and lastly, of course, to the final. This then is how they're going to line up in the Nations Cup draw in the quarterfinal. France will go head-to-head -head with Scandinavia. First up, it'll be USA against Autosport GB. F1 Racing GB will take on the All-Stars. And then Germany with Michael Schumacher in their lineup take on Ireland. A bit more of a breakdown of uh, the lineup. It'll be Van Muller up against Tom Christensen. Sebastian Loeb will face Matthias Ekstrom, a two time winner here. Carl Edwards goes head to head with Jensen Button. For Tanner Faust, it's Andy Prio. David Coulthard meets Jamie Algusari, the uh, 18 year old. Jason Plato faces the Superbike champion Troy Bayless. Michael Schumacher up against Adam Carroll. And Sebastian Vettel goes head to head with Gareth McHale. Setting the scene then at the moment and uh, everything is uh, just about ready for the off. Let's uh, take you over to our commentators for the Race of Nations, Andy Marriott and Toby Moody. Yes, thanks very much. And the interesting thing here is, Toby, that two of the very best teams are up against each other. It's the way the draw worked out and off they go. And we are underway here for the Nations Cup. We've got Ivan Muller on the out on the inside and we've got Christensen on the outside in these little Arbath Cinquecentos, it's the Arbath 500, Assetto Corsa, 1.4 turbocharged engine, and as we saw in the celebrity races earlier, Andrew, very, very slippery. Very slippery indeed. Now, of course, we've got the eight times Le Mans winner here, Tom Christensen, against Ivan Muller, who's been hugely successful in ice racing, so the slippery conditions should suit him. Yes, 10 times an Iandros ice racing champion in France for Ivan Muller. He's also, a couple of years ago, he did the Paris-Dakar rally. He's also going to do it in January on his own in a buggy. Yeah, that is absolutely phenomenal. Well, this uh, is a one kilometer circuit. They do two laps. It's actually just one piece of road. It's not two tracks, although for much of the way, they are running parallel. And there is a little bit of a stagger. So as they come now, we're halfway through the race. Right now, the flames go up. 
Christensen ahead at the moment by just eight of a second. So that's the split at the moment. There we see into the cockpit the Scandinavian flag, the sort of a mix of Denmark and Swedish flags on the side of that Fiat. Tom Christensen in there, as you said, eight times the Le Mans winner, the reigning champion, of course, at Le Mans, alongside Scotland's Alan McNish and Dindo Capello. Yeah, Tom has been uh, very quick, had a great year in the Nations Cup, helped at Denmark win in 05. He's been an ROC finalist as well. Bit of a slide, bit of a slide from Christensen. So Muller is on the outside. Muller having a good run as we focus in on Christensen on the infield. I'm getting the feeling, Toby, that this one's going to be very close. This first race here is absolutely a cracker. And as it's uh, just unfolding now, you see now they're in the last run, I think, towards the chequered flag. Christensen on the outside, on the left-hand side, and Christensen is going to beat Ivan Muller. Scandinavian, wow. the first victory for Scandinavia against France. Well done to TK, excellent. Now there will be a second race with the two other drivers in it, and it is actually the best of three. Now, if it's one all, then there will be a third runoff. Well, that will happen after the rest of all these heats, so we'll have a group of those. But in theory, if every uh, team dominates the other team, we'll only have eight races, but we could have a few more. Well, that was a good one to start with. And coming up next, Tony, well, some interest here. Well, as we see the super slow-mo, you can see Tom Christensen inside the Arbor. 200 horsepower with such a tiny little car, yeah. you really are going to be digging holes for yourself with those front wheels. Yeah, iconic car. Actually, these cars are built in Poland, but then they're modified in, uh, in Italy, of course. And now we get the other two drivers from the nation, and they have switched cars, and they are in two World Rally cars. And these are M Sport prepared cars, and these are two cars which won only last week in the Wales Rally GP. One was driven by a Barry Clark, and the other one was driven by a mate of yours, Valentino Rossi. Absolutely. They both it had good finishes. So these they've modified the cars, they've changed the suspension, and uh, put this different suspension on. Sebastian Loeb on the inside, closest to our camera. Yeah. Matthias Ekstrom on behalf of Scandinavia on the outside. Matthias Ekstrom is in the actual car that Valentino drove in Wales last weekend. Ekstrom going on the outside, Sebastian Loeb on the inside at the moment. Now we saw the wet practice here yesterday, Andrew, and I have to say I had goosebumps yesterday watching Sebastian Loeb, the five-time World Rally Champion. He had that focus drifting like a dream, like a dream. And he's absolutely brilliant at this discipline. He's been a success in 03, and look at that, 03 and 05. He's been a winner of the uh, race of champions. But equally, of course, the man he's racing against is fantastic at this as well. Matthias Ekstrom, twice a winner in the race of champions. So two top guys up against each other. There you see Sebastian Loeb. He's got a brand new crash helmet for this event. He's got a brand new five on the top of it, signifying his five world championships. Now then, as they come in, into the final corner just unraveling this that's their first section done and it's pretty well even Stevens Sebastian on the inside and this is absolutely held for leather now don't forget that Ekstrom he might be a DTM champion Andrew but he won Group N on Swedish Rally he did about three years ago yes he's an all-rounder of the very best here and this one's going to be close two of the very fastest men of course they will again meet each other in the later race of champions but we're on the nation's cup now and we're three quarters of the way through this race as the flash bulbs go off and it is close. 330 horsepower from these World Rally cars, a big handful, bags of grunt, the turbos popping and bagging. I can see a red hot exhaust out of the back of Sebastian's car. We're on board with Ekstrom. Look yeah. at the eyes, look at the concentration as the stagger unrolls and the Scandinavia on the outside. Sebastian's on the inside. Yeah, look at this. Oh. Coming to the line. This, this is excellent. Good. Oh. Oh. Side by side, fantastic! Ekstrom gets the victory of 52-4, a tenth of a second between them oh. in nearly two minutes of running in this Wembley Stadium track. That is as close as it comes. This night will go down in gladiator history. Records will be broken. Bodies will be smashed as the legends strike back. I know they're up for a bit of revenge this time. 
The old guard returned for a piece of the new generation. I don't think I want to do it anymore. Gladiators, the legends strike back next Sunday at 8, Sky One. Meet the Peugeot Boxer, the biggest and most versatile van in the range. And the Peugeot Expert, voted International Van of the Year 2008. Here's the Peugeot Bipper, the new low emission van designed for the city. And introducing the new partner. Welcome back, and we've had sensation already here. Maybe the favourites for the Nation Cup. France are knocked out, Toby Moody. Yeah, Scandinavia has gone through. Meanwhile, oh, big got shot. drama immediately. We got Jensen Button battling with Carl Edwards, and it was Edwards on the inside who's gone off, and he's having to barge oh. his way past the barrier Carl in the Edwards. little sphere at Arbar. So now Jensen Button has got a massive, well, massive advantage. He can just walk it out. Carl Edwards, all those victories in uh, NASCAR, but he won't be back flipping out of that little <laughs> <A> bath with <laughs> it after this. First corner, and we saw the boxers do it in the celebrity event, and we laughed at them, but uh, Carl Edwards, big mistake by him. And for Jensen Button, well, he can just poodle around now and head towards a, a victory in this one. So for Autosport Team Great Britain, Jensen Button driving on behalf of the squad, and Jensen Button got a going to have an easy victory here in this race. The little Fiat with their flags flying away, yeah. but it's going to be the Union Jack that's going to be the victor in this race, providing he gets to the finish safely, because that corner where we saw the accident with Carl Edwards, the NASCAR driver, the very first so corner, slippy. not only is it very slippery, Andrew, but also there was an engine blow up in one of the rock cars, the race of champions specially built buggies this morning, so there's actually quite a lot of oil on that corner. Yes, they put some uh, cement dry down and it hasn't really cleared up all that oil and uh, just no grip there at all. But Jensen Button's going to stroke it home here. And, uh, well, a man from NASCAR, Carl Edwards, has got egg all over his face. Well, at least it was a left-hand corner, Andrew. It was, yes, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> Yes, it was very wet here in practice yesterday and Carl Edwards joking that, well, I don't normally race in the wet, of course. He only once this year did race in damp conditions and that was one of NASCAR's races on the road courses at Montreal. So uh, that was his only experience of racing under damp conditions. In at the deep end. Oh, Carl Edwards, what a shame. What a character he is. And yeah. we're lucky to have him here in London. Absolutely. And we'll see him a little later as the flames go off for Jensen. Button's victory here, 210.5220, one of the uh, slower times I think that will be, because no pressure on Jensen, Carl Edwards comes home too. OK, safe and sound though for the remainder of the run around this Wembley Stadium circuit, the circuit that has been laid down over the last week, 10 days or so. Now this is Carl Edwards at the first quarter, he turned the left-hander, actually nearly hit Jensen through the wall, such was his Closing speed into the left-hander, selects reverse, and has another bite at the jam. France is out of the Nations Cup so early, and Sebastian Lowe, the guy you thought would win, failed. Yeah, but you know, here is very tricky, and um, any small mistake costs you a lot. And, uh, okay, yeah, it's like this, you know. Um, we were probably a bit uh, too conservative to, to be sure to not crash. Okay, that's uh, not very important. Sebastian, uh, everyone wanted to see you in a Ford Focus. It wasn't a good first test. No, it, it finished close. I, I was happy to be so close from uh, Matthias because uh, usually he's beating me a lot in this race. So, But uh, yeah, it was close, but just behind, so not enough. Uh, and that means no more racing until the actual race of champions. Yeah, sure. That will not be a, an advantage because uh, I will not get used to the cars and to the track. So it... Uh, Will be difficult in the race of champion for sure. How different is the focus to the C4? I'm not sitting, sitting well in the car, so the feeling is a bit, bit different. The brakes feels much harder, uh, so to be, it's not easy to get used. But uh, the handling of the car is is, is not bad. Thank you. 
And coming up next, it's Andy Prio. Yes, Andy Prio is going to be racing with a late standing Tanner Foos. Now, what do you know about him, Toby? He's a bit of a drifting star. He's taken the place of Travis Pastrana, who uh, fell off the motocross bike on Thursday, damaged his hip and his ankle. I think. Such is the uh, the last minute of that accident to poor old Travis Pastrana. Tanner Faust, who is starting on the inside with the Ford Focus WRC. Tanner Faust, he was actually... Oh, he stalled it immediately on the line. The American has made a mistake. He and has to the cherry. And that means that Andy Prio has got an enormous advantage for Autosport Team Great Britain. Finally gets it off the line now. Tanner has done a lot of rallying in America. He may be the uh, Formula Drift champion. He's done a lot of rallying. Uh, well, he struggled there. Now, it's probably uh, symptomatic that he stalled it on the line. Very, very complicated electronics on these WRC oh, yeah. cars. The anti-lag, the launch control, you've got to hold it on the anti-lag. It takes a full 10 seconds for the launch control to be activated by the drivers. There's actually a big diagram that Malcolm Wilson's mechanics have put in the car to explain to these drivers how to handle it. But Andy Prio has got the advantage at the moment as he goes over the top of the bridge. Well, yes, he has made it easy for Andy and you notice they've got passengers in and I believe that they're all competition winners and in fact it's all interactive with people on their phones in the stadium and uh, by going onto their onto the web and onto the phone of uh, this race of champions they can get a run in a car fantastic so then this is the second race for USA versus Autosport oh. Great Britain oh Tanner has another moment. I was going to say, such a last minute stand in, Andrew. He was actually en route to Florida and he got the phone call. That he came straight to London. He only arrived with shorts and flip flops. He had to go out and buy yeah. some winter woolies. Well, he's uh, going to need more than that, I think, when this is over. And there is Andy Lock, three times world touring car champion. Didn't win it this year. Had another good run for BMW. As Tony said earlier, he's been testing for the American Le Mans series. A little bit of debris on the uh, circuit as well now in these two Stobart Ford focuses. So then Andy Prio coming out of the final corner and Andy Prio makes it two victories for Autosport Great Britain and they, they cut out yep. the USA. Prio the victor. Indeed. And indeed of course we'll we'll have uh, the Scandinavian team against uh, that British team in the uh, next round but of course we're still continuing with these quarterfinals and there's a man well he's gonna I think I just saw him about to slap his hand on the steering wheel he's gonna be absolutely furious with himself but a very big ass Tony to jump into a car like this oh there's there a replay of the yeah, start there. yeah the anti-lag you've got to hold it on the handbrake you've got to just feed the clutch in now that's his first yellow card we yeah. have to talk football of course we, we should here yeah uh, you're allowed to touch the barrier once. once. If you touch it twice, you get a five-second penalty. That's absolutely correct, yes. But look at Andy there. He was delighted with that. And it's going to be great to see Andy actually racing in America. Um, you know, he's so used to these touring car, world touring car events. But it's going to be a very different discipline. I think it's going to go very, very well. Yes, he's already tested at Road Atlanta in the brand new BMW M3 ALMS car. It's a very similar car to the one that he used to be victorious in the now legendary Nürburgring 24 hour yeah. race in 2005. I was there that weekend and it was a tremendous, tremendous victory for Andy Prio. But in the meantime, Amanda's stop got Tom Christensen. Well, Tom, you had, uh, it looked like a fairly easy victory in that first round. Um, I think even I talked to him after he made a mistake because we started with cold tyres and into turn one I think he overdid it a little bit I hear after and at least I knew, noticed after the, the first lap that I got a lead so in that sense it was um, a good way uh, a good way to start and, and happy to progress because last year I was out against cover line in the first blip so uh, it's nice to uh, at least to go to the second round. Now, of course, we're all really disappointed that we didn't have the race between the McLaren and the, and the Chris Hoy on the, on the bike. But tell me, how slippery is it really out there? Because we had a lot of rain here yesterday. Mm. It is uh, it is very slippery because um, it doesn't dry completely. And then uh, on top of that, we have uh, a fellow British man. I won't mention any names, but I mean, uh, DC from Scotland. He uh, put quite some oil down on the, on the racing line this morning. 
uh, in his eager to be to be competitive and this oil has sunk a little bit into the track as well so in all in all it's uh, it's different di it, uh, it's different between every corner and then sometimes when you hit the barrier they are full of water this water is then sprayed onto the to the circuit on top of that as well and then sometimes you hit the grass and the, the gravel and it's also in so it's a it's a bit mixture of I would say four or five different kind of tarmacs all around well we'll be seeing you in the next round thanks Tom pleasure and indeed we have the next race already underway Toby and we've got the uh, crossbows these KTM cars out on the circuit for the very first time making history again today we've even got somebody commentating for one of them and uh, I think that must be our old colleague Martin Haven out there absolutely he's sitting alongside the British Formula 3 champion from Spain Jaime Agasuari the youngest ever winner of the British Formula 3 championship and of course it's great names that have won that title in the past Senna and Hakkinen and such like he in in my eyes, Andrew, is an absolute superstar for the future. Yeah, and he is racing against David Coulthard, and this is a very close one. We're halfway through this race, and uh, Coulthard pushing really hard, but this is going to be another close one. A very first race we had was mega close, and another close one, then we had others that have seen people make mistakes. Nobody has made a mistake yet in this, and there is DC, famous Scottish crash helmet, the Scottish flag, flying proudly. Oh, we got DC on the inside, Coulthard on the inside for Great Britain, and David Coulthard yes. is the victor ahead of the All Stars squad that has got Spaniard Jaime Agasuari in the seat of the KTM crossbow. So then, F1 racing, Great Britain, Coulthard, the victor. He may have retired from Formula One, but he's still winning, Andrew. Yeah, uh, he was a late standard as well because Mark Webber, who we were going to have a team Australia originally with uh, Troy Bayliss and Mark Webber, and Mark was here for the preview event, but he then took part in a charity bike event, which he actually promotes himself. There is Michael Schumacher, he's enjoying it. And, uh, well, plenty of support too. But uh, Mark Webber unfortunately uh, fell off a bike and broke his leg. Goodness, that didn't happen to Chris Hoy today. So here is that uh, Audi powered uh, crossbow, and that's the commentary going on. And that is not easy to do, uh, Toby. I've heard, tried that myself, and uh, it's very hard. Once did a lap of Silverstone on two wheels in a van, tried to commentate, but it was on two wheels on its side. You know. oh, I did. I did. A, <laughs> I did a commentary of a circuit on the on the back of a Grand Prix motorbike. Right then, next up, let's keep the action going. Yeah, we've got F1 uh, Great Britain, Jason Plato versus the reigning world superbike champion from Australia, Troy Bayliss. Now then, we've got Jason Plato on the inside. Jason Plato in the RX150 buggy. So Jason finding his way around the inside. He's just about to go over the bridge at the moment. In the meantime, got Troy Bayliss just on the inside. Troy finding it quite difficult, of course, Andrew. These motorcycle races, they depend so much with the weight and the feel and the grip of yeah. the front end of the motorcycle. It's quite alien for Troy to have understeer. Absolutely, they've got to be so aggressive with his cars to get the best out of them. And uh, with the conditions changing, I know that the setup of these cars have been changed to cope with that. And there is Jason Plato, look. Former British Touring Car yeah. Champion Jason Plato and a star, of course, out there on the racetracks are all around the UK. The flash bulbs are going, the brake lights are on Plato's car. It's got a, 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 a standard Honda Fireblade 950cc engine in the back of this. It's got a transfer box to the rear and it's just push me, pull you, gear changing. And it's, uh, it's tremendous fun yeah. with such a short wheelbase. Yeah, these cars have been used in a support series alongside the British Rallycross Championship. The car's built by Ollie O'Donovan and his friend. Oh, oh near go, spin. go on, Troy. Near spin for Bayliss. Got There's away a, with it. Tremendous amount of uh, lock on those cars, so you can get them back from those angles, but that has cost Troy some seconds. Okay, now then, it's really going to unravel in this last lap as we are riding on board and hard on the brakes. We are riding with Jason Plato going right round the outside. That's the quick corner here at Wembley through the chicane. Hard on the brakes, then feed it in under the bridge. Only minimal amount of head clearance. There is. You don't, oh, you? Bayless spins! Bayless spins oh, and no. he's on the Wembley turf and he's going <laughs> up the wrong way. But Bayless gets it back. Oh, what a fighter, Bayless. Three time world superbike champion. But the victor is going to be Plato. Plato wins. racing. Great Britain. Excellent, excellent. Oh, well, I think he's going to get a bill from Wembley there. Bayless over the line. 
Oh, so close. So, more live racing coming up after this break. It's been all action here in Wembley. That is the World Superbike Champion, Troy Bayliss, looping it and then jumps the buggy over the kerb, takes to the Wembley turf and then back on spreading the sand. But coming up next is going to be, we're waiting for it, Michael Schumacher. I think we've got Michael coming up, haven't we? And he's going to be ranged against Adam Carroll for Team Ireland. And great to have Adam Carroll. Here we are. There is the famous red helmet of Michael Schumacher. We're not sure who the passenger is, but his heart is going to be beating very hard. We're underway. It's Germany versus Team Ireland. A debut for Team Ireland at the Race of Champions. We're on board with the current A1 Grand Prix World Championship leader, Adam Carroll. Adam Carroll with the trickle off flying. There is Michael Schumacher. Red helmet, the black and white overalls. Big, big armfuls of lock with the KTM crossbow. Two litre, 240 horsepower. Now, Michael Schumacher has been racing KTM motorcycles in his spare time, but it's the first time I've seen him race on four wheels with a KTM. Well, absolutely, and uh, interesting to see that shot of him really looking at the kerb, really just looking at the angle of his head. This is a very different sort of discipline to Formula One, and these uh, KTMs, a lot of technology from the Dallara company who make all the Indy cars, and uh, these have a lot of grip even on this tricky surface. Just trying to work out, Toby, how close this is. And I think Schumacher is quite a bit ahead of Adam Carroll. Silky smooth as always, yes. Michael Schumacher as he crosses the line on the inside now. With the KTM crossbow, Michael Schumacher loses time at the infamous corner. Yep. It's so slippery there, there was some oil dropped this morning, and that's going to be a big handful for other, other drivers. Now, do remember, Germany, the reigning Nations Cup champions. Yeah, with Schumacher, of course, and Sebastian Vettel. And uh, you noticed on the split times, Schumacher was two seconds quicker on the uh, first half of this race. So Schumacher in the lead here, but uh, he did lose that time. This could be a very close one. Look at Schumacher, and he hates to lose to uh, the seven times world champion. Adam Carroll now on the infield as Michael Schumacher goes to the right-hand side of your screen, underneath the bridge for Michael Schumacher. Big slide! with 240 horsepower underneath his right foot. All carbon chassis of the KTM. It's built in Austria, it's here in Wembley. Now we got to Michael Schumacher on the inside and Schumacher is gonna be victorious. The reigning champions, Germany victorious but, um, against Team Ireland. Toby, I just heard there may be a penalty uh, imposed. Didn't hear which of the two cars it was for. Aha, uh -huh. well, well wait, let's wait and see what happens. Germany confirmed winners. Germany confirmed winners. Well, so, uh, well, Michael, uh, that's the first. Now then, what can Sebastian Vettel, on behalf of Team Germany, do against Gareth McHale, on behalf of Team Ireland? Yeah, Gareth McHale, a McHale, couple of seasons in the World Rally Championship. Just some nice replays here. Look at Michael Schumacher. His only car racing event of this year, of course. So, Gareth McHale, has a lot of experience in rally cars, second in the Irish Tarmac Rally Championship this year against Sebastian Vettel, who of course had his breakthrough Grand Prix victory in the wet in Italy this year. Vettel was very quick last year in this, uh, this championship event, and I think he's going to be good. See all the names quickly changed by the, the organisation, Frederick Johnson and Michel Mouton. They've really got this thing down to a T. Yeah, this is down in the depths of Wembley Stadium. Adam Carroll just uh, congratulates Michael Schumacher. Autograph Hunters down there. Right then, let's get on with this. We've got Germany and Ireland battling. We've got Sebastian Vettel on the inside with the red top to this 150 horsepower Honda Fireblade engined RX buggy. And we've got Gareth McHale on the outside. And if Ireland are going to stay in this, then Gareth McHale has got it all to do, Toby. He's really got to push hard now. Well, this is a good balance, really, because as we have mentioned already, Sebastian Vettel did so well last year on behalf of Germany to make them victorious in the Nations Cup. But on the flip side, although Gareth McHale he's new here to the race of champions he will have he'll be comfortable he'll be cool about understeer bags of oversteer look at it as Gareth tips it into the left-hander he'll be cool about that kind of wishy-washy feel yeah look at the nerf bars on the back of that car as well and uh, going from lock to lock 
board with Gareth. Look at the concentration. Yeah. Look at the no co-driver, of course, for Gareth. He's all out there on his lonesome as he goes over the top of the bridge. A World Rally Championship point scorer in Mexico and on Rally Ireland. And he's, uh, I'd love to see him in a Ford Focus. It'd be uh, pretty well similar to the car that he regularly drives, such as we saw on Rails Rally GB last weekend. Yeah, son of the famous Austin McHale, Irish Rally Champion. Past days. Oh, and he's touched the barrier, so he's got a yellow card. He can't afford to touch another barrier, otherwise he'll get that five-second penalty. And now they're coming towards the uh, finish of this race. Brake lights going on. Giffen is in the lead of this one. Another lap, another yeah. lap. Yeah. We've got uh, McHale. McHale on the inside. McHale, as we trace yes. the progress of Vettel in the blue car, there we have the white-helmeted Sebastian Vettel. Youngest ever point scorer in Formula One. Youngest ever pole position in Formula One. And, of course, that tremendous victory at Monza in the wet with the Toro Rosso. What an emotional day. What a, what a day. As we got it up, staggering. And Vettel's going to have the advantage as he's on the inside. And Germany victorious again. Yeah, so Germany go through. They knock out Ireland, Ireland have been put out immediately, so it's two wins for Germany, and Germany through. They will come up against F1 Racing, Team Great Britain, next time. So we're through these uh, quarter-finals, Stobo, and uh, this has been absolutely stupendous stuff already, and lots more to come, of course, here from uh, Wembley Stadium. Certainly looking good for the British at the Race of Nations this afternoon, live from Wembley Stadium. Scandinavia have found a way through past France, beating them resoundingly in their shoot-off. Autosport GB with uh, JB and AP, Jensen Button and uh, Andy Prio in the driving seats into the semi-final, as are David Coulthard and Jason Plato for the F1 Racing GB team as well. And uh, Michael Schumacher's Germany has gone through resoundingly. Schumacher victorious over Adam Carroll, looking to make it back-to-back -back wins here. Michael, Germany through. Talk us through the challenges of this short circuit. Well, it's uh, quite technical, very narrow, very easy to make mistakes, bang walls. Um, the cars are usually they come out with cold tires because uh, of circles, so it's uh, extra tricky, especially this year. Uh, one of us uh, dropped some oil around the track, so it makes it uh, very thrilling and exciting. Who was it that dropped the oil? Uh, DC had a little technical issue and, uh, and dropped some oil. So it's slippy out there. Uh, your young teammate did very well. Yeah, uh, we both went through, so uh, now we have a rest till uh, the next one. And do you think uh, this will be Germany's year to win the Nations Cup? Put it this way, we, we like to keep it in our hands as we got it last year. Thanks, Mike. Michael Schumacher happy, he's smiling because he goes through, but so too to both of the GB teams. What did you make of that first round, Tony Jardine? <laughs> well, the Americans just handed it on a plate, didn't they, to GB, and Jensen just cruised off into the distance, and the same happened really with Andy Prio. At the same time, it's good for them to build their confidence and get through to the semi-finals from the quarters. I think, you know, that the track with the oil as well and the fact that you've got this five second penalty which I don't like for touching the walls mm. it's really restricting people a little bit but having the superstars France who, who were my favourites with Sebastian Lowe <laughs> <laughs> knocked out like that is it, amazing it just shows you the experience of Ekstrom and Christensen um, that they just put it together and just, just got the win. But, it, but it's still going to be a fascinating contest. Maybe GB can get into the final. Uh, Jensen Button deserves to be in the VIP area after that performance. He's <laughs> been speaking to Oliver Jarvis. I've sat here with Jensen Button. Jensen, uh, an easy first round. In the end, it uh, looked like Carl nearly went into you in the first turn. Yeah, I'd, um, I was up against Carl Edwards from NASCAR and um, I was a little bit nervous, a little bit apprehensive because yesterday in practice he's very, very smooth and he was good in the Fiat, the little front wheel drive Fiat. But um, he went a bit wide at turn one, almost collided with me um, and I almost hit the wall in turn two. But it was, it was, it was fun and I, I knew that it was going to be easy because it spun off but I still had to push to get a feeling for the car because now I'm up against uh, Tom Christensen uh, in the same car. Yeah, we saw Team Scandinavia have a great start. Tom Christian got a flyer, also Matthias Ekstrom. Do you think they're going to be the boys to beat out there today? Well, there's a good chance. You know, they've put France out already, who was, who were very competitive. And um, Ivan Muller obviously drives a front-wheel drive car for his profession, and Christensen beat him in a front-wheel drive car, and um, and Ekstrom beat Loeb in a, in a rally car. So 
they're going to be very strong along with uh, Germany and you know you never know when you come here it's, it's everyone's very competitive we've heard a lot about conditions especially with the rain yesterday can you feel the grip improving throughout the day um, well the only thing is that yesterday was wet all day so we don't really we haven't really put any rubber down or anything but uh, at the moment the problem is that the, the asphalt's very new and it was raining yesterday so the, the water's sort of seeping through the asphalt still so it's very greasy um, and also DC put a lot of oil down this morning when he broke one of the cars so it's very slippery um, but, uh, but adds to the excitement I suppose. Excellent, thank you very much Jensen and best of luck. Cheers. Thanks. So uh, Jensen and Andy Prio go through for uh, Team GB in one of the, the categories. Team GB also represented by uh, David Coulthard and Jason Plato. As Jensen was saying, it is fairly slippery out there, but it does give the crowd something to uh, get excited about, doesn't <laughs> yes. it? <laughs> well, they're sort of whooping and hollering. We can hear it from the studio in here. But it is a temporary base. Got to remember, underneath there is the hallowed Wembley pitch. And on top of that, they put a lot of metal. They put a lot of real of this undersurface and then poured the tarmac on top of that and the rain that was flooding through has gone all down the cracks now what's happening as it's heating up it's bubbling up back through the cracks then the oil that's been dropped is mixing with the water and it's giving it a really hazardous top surface which is almost akin to driving on ice as I was in Wales Rally GB just a week ago. <laughs> it's a lesson in science isn't it with <laughs> Tony Jardine. Uh, let's hear from David Coulthard he's been speaking to one of our reporters as well. Well, David Coulthard, you're through to the semi-final, mm. and I know you must be delighted because, of course, you're very weary these days. Yeah, absolutely not getting much sleep. Uh, first time father, I'm only four weeks in, so I'm realising that they really don't understand that you know racing drivers or even ex-racing drivers <laughs> need a bit of sleep. But great experience, and I'm delighted to have won that first heat because I haven't won anything in years. <laughs> Hey, listen, you've got a number of more heats to go, but I mean, it is good fun, isn't it? It is competition, but it is good fun. Yeah, the, I think the fun element is, is the, the primary one. Um, you know, you have a passenger beside you screaming or headbutting the dashboard or whatever happens to be going on when you break into the corners and uh, all the, you know, you jump in the car and it's literally, right, which one is this? which gears do I use, Where's, you know, where is everything? So we, we, it's not as if we uh, have done a lot of mileage in these cars. And who do you think the real competition is going to be between for the, for the actual race of champions? Uh, I think I'm sat here with Jensen Bud and Jensen, uh, an easy first round in the end. It uh, looked like Carl nearly went into you in the first turn. Yeah, I'd, um, I was up against Carl Edwards from NASCAR and um, I was a little bit nervous, a little bit apprehensive because yesterday in practice he's very, very... Apologies there for the uh, confusion and sound, a bit of a mix-up uh, in the tape room, but uh, David Coulthard looked fairly happy, and so he should be, because he's through to the uh, semi-finals. For David Coulthard, this is all just a great bit of fun, isn't it, after what's been an incredible F1 career? 13 Grand Prix wins, uh, runner-up in 2001. I had a long chat with him yesterday about life after Formula One. He said, I've been busier than ever because he's a father for the first time. Mm. And Karen Minier, his Belgian wife, is here. Uh, she brought their new son, Dayton, over on the train. <laughs> and he said, I don't know, I was going to fly him over, you know, do all that. And then, <laughs> but he didn't. And he's happy, he's relaxed, he's really enjoying himself. But at the same time, he said, I haven't had any sleep at all to it. He yeah. said, obviously, Karen's been doing all the work, but I've been up with her during all the night. Sleeps beautifully during the day. Just so a big so excuse, said, isn't yeah. it? So how are you going to do all this <laughs> and drive all these cars? He said, well, I'm a little bit tired, let's just say. He's probably really knackered, actually. But he's, he, the adrenaline's going. He's enjoying it. Okay, well, let's rejoin uh, Amanda Stratton because uh, she has more for us uh, behind the scenes. I'm on Sky right now, oh, Anthony. Great, thanks. Anthony, thank great to see you here. Thank I you. know you were here last year checking it out. Bitterly disappointing, though, that Lewis didn't get to run. Um, yes, but uh, it's just nice to be here. The atmosphere is fantastic, and all the fans that have come and they're in the stands, absolutely great. So wouldn't miss it for the world. Now, you must all get such a buzz when you go out into that stadium. I mean, Wembley's huge, iconic name anyway. And the roar that, abs uh, that it took the roof off, if there was a roof, absolutely. when Lewis was out there. Absolutely crazy, yeah. It's a sort of feeling that you just can't explain, but uh, much appreciated for sure, the support. Now you've got a busy weekend as well, haven't you? You're all going to be jetting off up to the north of the country to Liverpool later on. Well, it's I'm, I'm actually not going because uh, Lewis. Well, I mean, we've had a busy week as it is. With uh, we picked up the award for the World Championship on Friday in Monaco, and then Lewis was working in Stuttgart yesterday. He's here today, flying up to Liverpool, and then he's off to the States it's tonight as well. So it's a pretty busy schedule. And plans for next year? Do you ever get a holiday? Um, we think we're going to have a couple of days off over Christmas and then uh, back to work. Merry Christmas. Thank you very much, and to you, and to all your viewers. Thank you. Thank you. 
Oh, they can relax later and have holidays later. They're enjoying themselves at the moment, aren't they, those two? But it's what you were asking me before about the punishing schedule mm. of being a Grand Prix driver. He's been on Mercedes activities. He has another award ceremony tonight. It's non-stop, non-stop. And if there was one thing that really took it out of him at the end of his very first season, it was that punishing schedule of all those promotional activities, all the testing. It was relentless. It doesn't matter if you're 23 and the fittest thing out there it takes it out of you, it saps your energy and eventually you've got to recharge your batteries and I think what McLaren will do is they will make sure that he has some time off and especially now that testing has been cancelled in Formula 1 as part of the new rules he's going to have a little bit more time when he can really really be fresh uh, and concentrate on, on, on other things and perhaps have a little bit of life outside the sport. He certainly got a, a great reaction from the uh, Wembley crowd uh, when he came out a little uh, earlier on with uh, Chris Hoy in the passenger seat unable to do the Hamilton Hoy challenge but certainly able to put the SLR car around uh, this track in front of a huge Wembley audience today and uh, clearly he's enjoying himself but how much were the fans enjoying being able to get a glimpse of Lewis Hamilton the now youngest F1 champion? Well I think they, they've had one other opportunity which was at the British Grand Prix at Silverstone earlier this year and we got him up on the stage we have a concert after and there he is taking the accolades along so and people are also cheering for Chris Hoy as well with that triple medalist he he did a fantastic job really lifted the nation during August this year as did this man who <laughs> he, people have taken him to their hearts you know and especially the dramatic fashion in which he won it but the point is that when you, when you actually do that and you actually win and you can you can enjoy it for a while I think it's great but he's been in very aggressive situations and, and in Brazil that whole crowd were against him they were booing they were wolf whistling it you know you, you expect it not to be sporting especially if he's going against a Brazilian driver head-to-head -to, -head to try and take the, the world championship but I think the point I'm trying to make is that he's absorbed all that pressure and he's learned from everything he learned a lot from his first year he learned a lot about trying to equalize things out and not doing too much the drain on the resource the drain on him physically and mentally because you've got to be so mentally alert the whole time in a Grand Prix it's certainly been an incredible first couple of seasons for him in F1 what about next season what about looking ahead to uh, the coming year will he want to win it by a whole margin of points because it came mighty close this time and also in year one where he failed just he will, he will want to win it convincingly, but there's a few people out there that are going to be stopping it. Uh, but the one of them is young Sebastian Vettel. Yeah. You know, at 21, he has shown what a fabulous driver he was. Gerhard Berger, who was a fabulous Ferrari driver, a great Grand Prix driver, said, you know what, I misjudged that young man. Mm. And he saw him emerge as an absolute superstar. Even though BMW took him through the ranks and put him in as test driver first, and then as a substitute driver when Kubica got injured and he then scored first ever points for eighth place in the USA the youngest ever point scorer so you've got all these records that keep being broken by Hamilton and Vettel they've all taken the records of Fernando Alonso who in turn took them off Emerson Fittipaldi so we're into a kind of record breaking but I see Vettel as the man that's really, really going to give Lewis Hamilton a hard time in the coming years in Grand Prix race. Could yet give a couple of our uh, Brits a problem out there in the uh, race of nations this afternoon. Let's just confirm for you how things look for the draw as things stand because we're now at the semi-final stage. Scandinavia will take on Team GB Autosport GB1 next. That includes Jensen Button and Andy Prio. And then it's uh, DC David Coulthard and, J and uh, Jason Plato who go head to head with Team Germany. Michael Schumacher and as we were saying Sebastian Vettel. That's live next. German Michael Schumacher is the world's greatest ever racing driver. Schumacher retired from the cockpit of his Formula One car at the end of 2006 and brought to an end an illustrious career.
He started 248 Grand Prix, of which he won 91, the most by any driver in the history of the sport. Schumacher's total is only one win short of the combined totals of both Prost and Senna. Schumacher also holds the record for the most podiums, points, fastest laps and pole positions. Without any question, Michael Schumacher has enjoyed a most sensational career. And Michael Schumacher keeps alive his chances of back-to-back -back victories in the Nations Cup here at the Race of Champions. Germany are through to the semi-finals where he'll be partnered by Sebastian Vettel. Let's hear from him. Sebastian, that was a good run first time round representing Germany. How does it feel in Wembley? Oh, it feels great. It's uh, <laughs> bloody, bloody slippery out there. Um, obviously, some cars <laughs> were not always staying on, on, on the track uh, this morning. and. Uh, Unfortunately, we had some oil on the track, but it seems to get better, but still it's, as I said, very, very slippery, so it's quite difficult to manage, and uh, the secret is, first of all, adapt to your car, and second, stay on the track, so uh, it was good fun. Um, it's always nice to, you know, to, to win the first race last year. I remember I had the first race against Travis Pastrana, and uh, he beat me by a little bit, so I had a better start this year. Hopefully, I uh, have a, a longer time in, in the car than today. Since the last time we saw you here at Race of Champions, of course, you've had an amazing uh, season in Formula One. Uh, what's the plan for next year? Challenging Lewis Hamilton? Well, basically, we are challenging every, everybody, <laughs> not only Lewis. So obviously, he's the, the favourite for next year. I think together with his, with his team, he's back in the, in the favourite uh, position. But we are trying hard. We, are, we will push very hard over winter. I, ho I hope we have a, a very competitive car and I believe we have a strong team. So we will do anything to get close to the top guys, but obviously it's a different league there. So our, our task is to, to get as close as possible and yeah, uh, try to <laughs> bother the guys in the front. And back to the race of champions, obviously your teammate is Michael Schumacher. That's great that you have you know, a legend of uh, Formula One and a, and a current slash future star. Yeah, even more, he's a nice guy and it's always good fun uh, doing these kind of things together with him. He's uh, very relaxed and uh, it's, it's just too good fun. And, of course, I can rely on him, so especially in the Nations Cup, uh, if I should struggle, <laughs> which hopefully I won't, uh, he's the one to, to help me. <laughs> but I think in every team you're relying on each other, so it's good fun. Thank you. Thanks. A good day at the office so far for Germany. What about for a GB and in particular Andy Prio? Let's hear from him. He's with Amanda. Amanda. Thanks, Georgie. Well, Andy, one of our British stars here this weekend. Great to see you. And uh, you had a nice, I said, easy break in, really, that first round. It's always nice to get the first one out of the way, and it's always nice when your opponent stalls. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, that was good. It was good to get practice. Um, the next race is going to be tough with Ekstrom. He just beat Loeb in the same car. So, you know, maybe they'll, we'll make up for it in the next one. It's going to be a tough race. Now, come on, realistically, I mean, both of them fantastic drivers. But, um, you know, Ekstrom won last year. What do you think your chances are? Ekstrom won, has won every year almost yeah. so the chances are slim but uh, if there's a chance you've got to go for it and uh, he's you know he's pretty good in the in the rally car I mean he's done rallies and stuff but if you look at your opponents all the time then you're never going to win are you so we've got to have a go. Now it's a great crowd isn't it and it's fantastic to be here in Britain in Wembley I mean it just doesn't get any better than this really does it particularly for a Sunday hobby. Absolutely the crowd is fantastic they're really up for it tonight which is good and uh, there's a lovely atmosphere in the in the, in the stadium there and uh, I'm just pleased that we've got a lot of people here because uh, you know it's great to have the race champions here at Wembley uh, we hope we can keep it here next year we'll see but um, you know it's an awesome opportunity for all the drivers to be together and have fun and also race against guys and hopefully I'll get a chance to race against Michael Schumacher and you never know. Now what's the atmosphere like amongst all the drivers because I mean you're all champions but you come from such different backgrounds don't you? Yeah there's an awful lot of respect for each other um, there's a lot of fun and camaraderie in the changing rooms as you can imagine <laughs> and uh, yeah I mean everybody's uh, everybody's just having a good time but you know, when the flag drops and uh, the pressure starts, and everybody sort of tenses up a little bit, and the interviews are a few, a few fewer and fewer, you know, between sessions, and uh, you know, the pressure's mounting up now. And uh, if we can get through the next race, then we're in the final, which would be awesome. Jensen's doing a great job, so hopefully he can get me through into the final. 
great stuff but the thing is it's still slippery isn't it yeah it's very slippery it's cold it's a lot more slippery than last year but maybe with the with the extra running today in the dry there's going to be some rubber on the tarmac and it's going to be a little bit quicker because yesterday was wet and uh, we couldn't you know it would look it's really bad I mean we're all running out of talent mid corner and hitting <laughs> the barriers and it wouldn't have looked so good but we're dry today and uh, yeah it's going to get faster and faster at least you haven't got those big Aston Martins to haul around you got the little R bars they must be easier that was my favorite car the Aston Martin and the R bar is harder to drive believe it or not because the rear tires are stone cold it's front wheel drive uh, I love the Aston it made such a good noise and uh, I always did all right in the Aston but anyway JB Jensen was quick in the uh, in the little Fiat R bar so fingers crossed my guys are now going to the paddock so I better get going off you go thanks Andy cheers so earlier on today, uh, Lewis Hamilton not able to do that a Hamilton Hoy challenge, but he was able to take his dad for a drive around the track, which has to be worth it, doesn't it? So uh, Lewis just uh, driving his SLR around the track in front of the crowds, a celebration of a fantastic year in F1. Uh, Tony, it has been a remarkable year, hasn't it? It's been superb, as we've said, just second year. You know, he was a rookie in that first year and he lost it by one point. He won it by one point, last race, last corner. And the nation held its breath, shredded our nerves, absolutely in pieces, especially you and I were back at Sky doing the news and things from our end. Uh, but it was a wonderful, triumphant end. And, you know, through adversity as well. Uh, there were lots of obstacles to overcome, but they did it. And Team Hamilton and Team McLaren and Mercedes did an absolutely wonderful job. And Britain is back on top yet again. And we are the most successful nation. In so the let's world. enjoy uh, Team Hamilton for a moment because uh, Anthony is with us in the studio and can explain to us how that felt driving around <laughs> with your son at the wheel of the car in front of the Wembley crowd. Oh, that was incredible. That was actually absolutely incredible. It was nice to see everybody. And uh, I, was, I kept saying to Lewis, slow down, you know, let them see you and wait to <laughs> them. You know, but he, sometimes he feels a little bit embarrassed about it. But. Bit of a shame, of course, that you weren't able to uh, at least see that challenge through, Hamilton Hoy well, challenge, that's, that's but it was too shame. dangerous, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, that was a real shame. But to be honest, it was really nice to meet Chris. You know, absolutely nice to meet him. And uh, I hadn't realised he's such a big guy. <laughs> 27 inch thighs as well, you. but you don't need to know about really that. Really nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> but this crowd is quite spectacular, isn't uh, it? What, really what sort of an opportunity is this for Lewis to be able to get out there and demonstrate what he's all about in front of a crowd like this after the year he's had? Well, I, I think it's fantastic because the thing is, uh, you know, obviously we have Silverstone, but not everybody gets to go to Silverstone, and you know, and, Ho and Wembley, where well, it's the holy grail of, uh, of football and, mo and, and uh, sport, basically, isn't it? So it's nice to actually come here where people have easy access and just to show that, you know, appreciation for uh, for the fans. The dust hasn't really settled has it on this uh, F1 win because still the awards are coming. Yeah the awards are coming, the Lewis has got all the work to do still, I mean we've obviously got the uh, Sports Personality, uh, Personality Awards tonight and there's a couple of others coming up but um, but to be honest I was just saying to somebody earlier it, it still hasn't sunk in the whole F1 championship thing you know um, you know Lewis is an ordinary ordinary kid done well and I think probably until we've got the number one on our car next year and we're sitting on the grid for the first race, maybe that's when it'll uh, all come to. Yeah, but there was, <laughs> then we had the BRDC awards and for us in the motor racing industry, that's everything, British Racing Drivers yeah. Club. And it was a day after the Autosport Awards. The Prime Minister himself came to give uh, the big trophy, which yeah, was the Dick Seaman Trophy across yeah. the Lewis. And I know that was a proud moment yeah. for you and a proud moment for him, but that's the industry, our industry saying, Lewis, fantastic, yeah. number one, and the PM, the government recognising what's been done. That's about crazy. time too. Huh? Absolutely crazy. <laughs> but the whole thing is surreal. It really is. Is it still surreal? It even really now? is. It really is. You know, um, you know, we still live in the same house. We still live in the same place. And you know, we get up every morning. And you know, if we go back seven years. Lewis was in single seaters, just learning his craft then. And here we are, world champions, family living in Hertfordshire, and doesn't quite make sense, doesn't it? Doesn't have that ring to it of um, <laughs> world championship family living in Monaco or something like that. But you know, it's great, absolutely great. But the, the other thing, George, is this man has to be so cool. And we see him when the camera's in, all right, you know, it's again, right, look, there are no fingernails left, the whole thing. But you were so cool in Brazil when the Ferrari camp thought they'd won it and they came out yeah, yeah. and you were just very, very cool. Let's wait a minute. They started shouting yeah. before the facts were known. If, yeah. if I can, I'm just going to stop us in mid-flow of conversation, okay. take us back to some racing and I'm going to keep Anthony rooted to the spot so we can hear from him a little bit later on. So the semi-finals are about to start now. As we said, we have British teams in both these semis and Toby Moody with me. This will be a cracker. 
Jensen Button on the outside. We've got Tom Christensen on the infield. Button just going underneath the bridge at the moment. This is Scandinavia versus Autosport Team Great Britain. Next up, we've got then F1 Racing Great Britain against the reigning champions, Germany. Yes, and it's still the uh, best of three here. So uh, if Britain get beaten in this one, they will have a chance to come back, of course, as they complete. This is a quarter of the race through now. Now then, I do think, Andrew, that the track has dried just a little. It's yeah. still very slippery. We've heard Tony say it's slippery. We've heard Andy Prio say it's so slippery. Sebastian Vettel. It really is like oil on ice. It's so slippery out there. But I think the track will be coming a little bit to the drivers as Jensen leaps, bunny hops almost, over the top of the bridge. And we heard Andy Prio say how difficult these cars are to drive. You just can't get any temperature into the rear tyres. You've got to be so careful. And look, inch perfect there just millimetres away from the barrier. Point three of a second between them after the halfway point. Very, very close indeed. Tom Christensen, reigning Le Mans, 24 hour winner and uh, eight times a uh, Le Mans victor in three different cars. Jensen Button, of course, keeping his fingers crossed for next year. Hopefully he'll be staying with Brackley. Well, let's hope so, but TK, you know, also races in the DTM series where they are sprint races. He knows how to come out of the box Whoa. quickly. Jensen, I thought Whoa, a little bit yes. deep there, Andrew, sorry. He was, he was a scrabbling a bit, wasn't he? Jensen on the infield, we take up the look into Tom Christensen's eyes. Couple more corners to go. This could be touch and go. I These are the last few corners. I'm looking for TK to win this one, but it is going to be close. It's not going to be far. TK is on the inside and gets a button coming around the outside. And it's going to be neck and neck. And they go to the line and Tom Christensen for Denmark, for Scandinavia, takes it. And a very good run from the eight-time Le Mans winner. And a great guy too, incidentally. Fabulous guy. Oh, <laughs> and he's lost his flag. The flag <laughs> goes flying and, uh, well, coming up next will be Andy Frio, I think. Let's see what happens in this second. Best of three, remember. But it's the other driver from the team in now. Uh, a nice look down this uh, a very slick track. And uh, there's Lewis who just uh, discussing things with Adam Carroll. Adam who currently is having a, a great year with uh, A1 Team Ireland. Um, the boss of Team Ireland, Mark Gallagher, here today as well to cheer him on. And uh, this is what it's all about. This is why they love to come, because they can talk to their old mates and so on. And uh, that pair, and of course, will be racing each other later. As you see some... Uh, replays there and see the rear wheels coming off the ground and uh, just look at the car pushing there getting a bit of understeer on and uh, that was the victory margin well just a Christensen whisker really yeah and of course it's quite bizarre really for Tom Christensen he's so used to being racing uh, at Sebring or at Le Mans over 24 hours and he's had a race decided by 0.3 of a second <laughs> over two minutes over two minutes <laughs> yeah. as Jensen gets out oh yeah hey. <laughs> look camaraderie is absolutely great at this event. Everybody's smiling, all of the drivers down there in the depths of Wembley, in the driver's um, area. There's much joviality and a, a bit of ribbing going on. Yeah, and uh, it's jolly cold down there as well, Toby, I noticed. So, well, Matthias Ekstrom, of course, with Andy Prio. Andy Prio, to keep uh, this GB team in, has to beat Matthias Ekstrom there. Sebastian Vettel, Sebastian Loeb, Looking on, Loeb recently just drove the uh, Peugeot Le Mans car. Incidentally, we expect him to race at Le Mans this year. Andy Prio versus Matthias Ekstrom. Toby. Next up, we've got Prio on the outside. Matthias Ekstrom on the inside. Prio has got to win this for a chance of Autosport Team Great Britain to stay. Oh, and Prio's got the start. Andy Prio, oh. because Matthias Ekstrom has stalled for Team Scandinavia, the second stall we've had in the Ford Focus WRC. Well, Rio, hot favourite at the moment. That proves that these cars are difficult to get off the line unless you know what to do. It is very difficult to get a DTM car off the line and Ekstrom is a past master of that, but he hadn't got the technique right and these races are so short, Toby, that that just hands the victory then. But we've still, uh, got to to keep, we've still got to keep our fingers which, crossed which, on behalf of, of yeah. Autosport Team Great Britain because Andy doesn't want to make a mistake. Andy no. might not know where Ekstrom is. I was speaking to Andy yesterday and he says, you can't look no. at the other driver. You've got to concentrate on your own race. I think 
halfway through the race you may get a chance to have a look across and then realise but uh, of course this will take it down to the uh, tie decider won't it? Absolutely, it's going to be one for Scandinavia after Christensen's victory against Jensen Button and soon it's going to be one for Order Sport Team Great Britain. And look at that lap time, 56.7. Andy Prio, that is quick. Thanks. As you say, Strom now is not trying because there's nothing he can do about it really. Well, he's still got to keep the pressure on. He's, yeah, he's case, case Andy spins of course. Yeah, visibly Ekstrom looks bad. To only lose four seconds in that first half is not bad considering he's still... Yeah, right. I think Ekstrom has made up time as Prio starts his last circulation of this Wembley Race of Champions track. Now then, there's Andy. And for me personally, Andrew, it's quite nice for me to be commentating <laughs> on Andy Prio because it was way back in 96 when I last commentated on him when he uh, when he had a, a drive with the number one place on his pill beam at the British Hill Climb Championship. Absolutely, yes, he's come a, an unusual route to the uh, top of touring cars through hill climbs, as you said. But here we go, towards the jagged flag. Prio across the line as the flares are lit. Look at the, look at the celebration. The elation on Andy Prio's face. And uh, extra then having that problem, but uh, we're going to take a quick break here from Wembley Stadium. Lots more to come. Michael Schumacher is in this, Toby, and uh, they are in the crossbows. You can see Michael Schumacher there working at the wheel. Michael Schumacher versus David Coulthard. It's Germany versus F1 Racing Team Great Britain. Well, it's just like the good old days in Formula One in the late 90s and then the early 2000s. Schumacher against Coulthard. Coulthard, the 13 victories, but at least Coulthard has won the big races. How much would DC like to beat Schumacher? Oh, yeah, he would absolutely love it. And I'm sure that was going through his head on the start line, looking across at that fluorescent red helmet of Michael Schumacher. David Coulthard, Victor at Monaco, Silverstone, Spa at Monza. Could he add Wembley to that tally? The big four Formula One races David has been victorious at as Michael leaps the bridge. We hone in on David Coulthard with a very lucky passenger. Indeed, but Schumacher over the bridge and then blue smoke coming off the tyres. And this one is close, Toby. This is going to be absolutely mega. This is huge. About 0.7 of a second between them. David goes a little bit slowly through oh. the tight left-hander. Michael under the bridge. Lights are blazing. Do you know the impressive thing about it? Just look at it. He is so smooth. Look at the effort on the steering wheel. Look, it's just the silk the way drive. It's, it's the trick, fantastic. isn't it? It is the absolute trick of being silky smooth. Just oh! Oliver Chris, he's off! And David had a wang <laughs> into the barrier, and that's crumpled the front oh. of the Austrian belt machine. He's had a big handful, and he can lose the game! Yes, well, I think the steering's broken because he went into the concrete barrier. A lot of these are plastic with water in. He went into the concrete barrier. Well, he's got going again. Has he got steering on that? Well, it looks like Germany are going to go through well, here. for sure. Yeah. So, uh, the F1 oh. Racing Team Great Britain had a moment with David Coulthard and he has damaged the front right of the KTM crossbow. There are pieces continuing to fall off it as we see Michael Schumacher. Oh, he's going to wait. Oh, he's going to wait. <laughs> the passenger was applauding. He's looking, he's looking across to see where DC oh, is. Oh, he's waiting to give David a wave <laughs> before he nips across the line. <laughs> this is pure show business here at Wembley. Michael's <laughs> creeping, <laughs> Michael's tempting David, but Germany finally <laughs> wins. Oh, that was fantastic. <laughs> oh, a bit of showmanship for Michael Schumacher, fair play. And that uh, 
Isn't that that's a lady there, yeah. Uh, she is going to remember that for a very long time. She'll be putting that in all her Christmas card notes for sure. So then, that now means that Germany have won victory against F1 Racing Team Great Britain. Yeah, so Sebastian Vettel has got a lot of his very young shoulders coming up now. Sebastian Vettel will be up against Jason. Oh, there was that. There was that. Uh, that shunt of uh, Button and then lost it again. Look, all charging the barrier. Yeah, David having trouble even in a straight line I with think the front it, end of that. It, was, it, a, it had a quite a significant wang into the barrier. Yeah, I, and you see, look at smoking the tyres. They just came over that bridge with too much throttle on, and David knew that was a concrete barrier coming up. Ooh. Dear. We had a couple of accidents yesterday. Jensen Button actually went off at the same corner. Well, watching us, uh, the final here is with uh, Sebastian Loeb and um, also with Michelle Mouton. What do you guys think of those uh, semi-finals? Yeah, I think uh, I think Germany and Scandinavian will be in final. Uh, they seem to to be a strong team both. So we will see. You were saying whilst we were watching it that uh, when Matthias Ekstrom had that stalled start, that's not uncommon in rally cars. I don't say it's not uncommon, but uh, it can happen sometimes. Uh, in these cars, uh, it's an automatic strategy, so you don't have to do anything. And if the engine stalls like uh, for Ekstrom, it's just bad luck. He's not, uh, it's not a fault from, from himself, so I think he's very, very angry now. <laughs> Michel Mouton, co-founder of the event. What, uh, what are your thoughts on the, uh, what's likely to happen in the final now? You know, I am very concerned about the cars and the walls and everything, more than the competition, I have to say. But uh, no, it's going well and it's fun and uh, they enjoy it, you know, so. Good atmosphere out there. Yes, it is, it is. Everybody likes it, so we are looking for the, for the best one. But I agree, I mean, the two, the two is, he mentioned will maybe be on the final for sure. Thank you, guys. So Jeremy Hart asking Tom, the question there, uh, but here's must uh, be very another interview. With that stall. Yeah, but I think it's something happening on the on the car because it has happened also on another one. But you ask him with that, he's obviously disappointed, but he knows what he's doing in a WRC, so it's unfortunate. But anyway, it gave, gave me another chance to uh, to race again. And uh, you're about to race in the buggies against Andy Prio. Uh, do you fancy yourself to beat him? Yeah, I fancy himself having a lot of fun. It's beating a good time, and if it's better than Andy, I, I hope so. But he has been very smooth and very well also last year in this car. So I, um, I hope it will be tight on my behalf. The start light and waits. Thanks. Tom Christensen preparing. So just to recap in this race of nations, France are out. Sebastian Loeb losing in a world rally car. Not a, a, obviously his Citroen WRC that he's been so used to. Let's have a quick rundown then. Scandinavia against Team Autosport Great Britain. It's one win each and we're about to have the third round to decide who will go to the final out of those two. Uh, but uh, next up, we've got Jason Plato against Sebastian Vettel. There we look into the eyes of Jason Plato. Ever the joker, ever the jester, but it's all serious now. Well, pretty serious too because he does not have a ride for next season. Sayat had pulled out of the British Touring Car Championship. Just uh, look at those uh, lights up there on the bridge. They go to green and they blast away in these KTM. Oh no, we're not in the KTMs. No, we're in the uh, little RX cars. These rallycross buggies. Honda Fireblade engine in the back. It's all about revs, as you can imagine, with a little 950cc engine. There's not a lot of torque, but they are particularly twitchy due to the short wheelbase. There we trace the progress of Jason Plato on behalf of F1 Racing Team GP. Uh, Sebastian Vettel now coming towards, uh, coming uh, around the racetrack, the first of their four laps, if you want to call it that, here at Wembley now completed. There we have Sebastian and Plato, on the infield. Yeah, Plato's got it all to do to keep his team in this competition, of course. And uh, Jason, fabulous competitor. Also, very good TV personality as well. All-round good guy. And uh, he'll be pushing hard. Now then, halfway point just about to be completed as we look down on Wembley Stadium from the spider cam. Vettel goes over the line, a 2.1, 0.9 of a second faster than Jason Plato. 
So, well, let's see how it unravels itself on the second half as Sebastian goes underneath the bridge. 100 tonnes of bridge yep. down on 4,000 tonnes of tarmac, sand and metal here in Wembley. Yeah, weaving its way through the pitch. You can see the green bits. They are the original pits. And you, you can see bits of the uh, white lines of the, uh, of the football pitch on that uh, hallowed turf that still remains there. OK, last lap now started. Uh, Plato going closest to our camera. Now we cut back to Sebastian Vettel, keeping it cool. He's always been cool. He won the Formula BMW Championship, won a ride in a Formula One car, and we know the rest has been history. Now then, over the top he goes. We've got Jason Plato in the red car on the inside. I think Sebastian Vettel's going to win this in the white top car. Vettel on behalf of Germany. Yeah. Germany go through. They put out. F1 Racing, uh, Team Great Britain, two victories to nil. They're through to the final. In the meantime, let's see what Michael Schumacher has got to say about going through to the final. Joined here by Michael Schumacher, a man underneath no introduction. Michael, that looked like an easy race for you there. Well, I don't know what technical problem DC had, but uh, obviously it slowed him down and stopped him. We had a meeting up front that uh, in case he had a problem, I should wait for him. So uh, I kept my word for it. Uh, I waited for him, but obviously we wanted to win. Obviously a technical problem for DC and not a mistake on his behalf. But uh, you're back here again. Do you enjoy the event? Uh, absolutely. It's always a pleasure. It's fun. And well, we'll just uh, keep enjoying it as long as we can. Well, thank you very much for joining us and good luck for the rest of the evening. Thank you. And Michael really does look as if he's uh, having a great time here. So, look at this. We've still got uh, Scandinavia versus the Autosport GB team, the uh, third and deciding round of that competition. And we're not exactly sure, Toby, who will be driving, but we're going to find out right now. Well, Tom Christensen is going to be in there on behalf of Team Scandinavia and it's Andy Prio Rio. who is driving on the inside with the red topped buggy. Now these are the Race of Champions buggies, they've got an 1100cc Honda engine in the back of it out of a Honda Blackbird motorcycle, an absolutely bulletproof engine, absolutely bomb proof and tremendous fun. I think Andy might have lost a little bit of time, in the meantime Christensen having a good safe run. I was looking at the start, I'm sure Christensen got the uh, best takeoff there, but there is uh, Andy Prio, hugely competitive man from uh, Guernsey in the Channel Islands. Yes, he uh, taught himself by doing some karting in the early days, then he started hill climbing at Val d'Etre, then he came over to the mainland and got an absolute maximum score in the British Hill Climb Championship in 95. Ten victories out of ten point scoring opportunities going on through the touring car ranks and of course having a drive in a BMW Formula One car. He's very, very experienced. A cool hand. A cool hand and you saw how close he sat next to the wheel. Now look at the times there, 0.8 of a second. Christensen just in front at uh, this portion of the race. And uh, TK, actually one of the oldest men here actually, but uh, still mega competitive. And uh, Tom had a huge accident at the start of, not this past season, but the start of 07. Took a little while to recover from that in a DTM car, but he is on top form here, is uh, TK. OK, Christensen goes across the line first underneath the bridge as we ride on board with him. Now this is the deciding lap. Who will go through to the final? Will it be Team Scandinavia or will it be Team Autosport Great Britain? Andy Prio, the weight of the nation on his shoulders, but he knows how to win championships. Three times a world touring car champion, once a European champion. Oh, Christensen over the bridge as he braces himself. Final corner, Christensen a little bit ahead with the white top buggy, but Andy's got the inside line. Christensen wins on behalf of Scandinavia, and Scandinavia go head to head with Germany in the final for the 2008 Nations Cup. Oh, it, it's, I don't think we've had a race no. without accidents decided by less than half a second. That was a good run. I thought that uh, Andy really pushed hard in the second half of the race, was really trying to make up that ground. And I reckon that it was, uh, it was all decided on the start, Toby, that one, actually. So uh, there is Tom Christensen and uh, the old chest pumping a little bit. And uh, plenty of spectators watching on. She knows she's on telly. 
and uh, look at that over the bridge and that's the really tricky part where you have to be hard on the brakes so easy to lock up and you can just see that's where some of the oil was dropped uh, in that blow up this morning so you've really got to place the car perfectly there nice shots of Andy Prio flames coming out of the back of that motorcycle engine and uh, we're gonna just check out the uh, current positions then so here is the uh, final draw it will be Scandinavia versus, versus Germany and we're going to be live with that coming up after this break Welcome back to the Race of Champions 2008 into the Race of Nations final go Scandinavia and Germany <laughs> Confirmation of how Scandinavia and Germany booked their place in the Nations Cup final. Scandinavia putting out France 2-0, putting out Autosport GB 2-1 and uh, making their place for uh, Germany in that final. Germany getting there by virtue of uh, seeing off F1 Racing GB and Team Ireland as well to book their place and a chance of back-to-back -back victories for Sebastian Vettel and Michael Schumacher against uh, Scandinavia in today's final. Anthony Hamilton is with us in the studio. He was uh, watching events unfold uh, with us on the track. Then, what did you make of it all? Uh, good fun, absolutely good fun. But I'm sure, you know, if I was down there in the car, it might have been <laughs> different thing. What do you, what do you reckon Lewis's chances car, actually, would be like out there today? If he's oh, he'd love it if he, yeah, he'd love it if he was out there. But um, you know, politics, I suppose. What next for uh, Lewis? Then, what's going to be happening next between now and the start of the next Formula One season? Um, well, I mean, he's, he's back to work, Lewis. I mean, he's already training and getting himself ready for when the cars launched in January and uh, straight back into testing in January and then um, yeah it'll be uh, another 12, uh, 8 to 10 months worth of uh, full-on racing. Did you get a holiday being a, an F1 superstar as he now is? Well uh, to be honest you know the holidays for us are just quiet times when you're actually not on a plane because throughout the F1 season you're always away somewhere so it's quite nice just to stay at home stay indoors and do nothing and um, over the Christmas period we're gonna plan to do that if we can. So you've been watching on the uh, action today uh, watching the uh, race of champions unfold also Lewis are gonna be taking part in a demonstration run yep. in his title winning car around this track you've got a chance to see the track how do you think the car's gonna go out well, there? Well I'm, I'm a bit worried about the car but to be honest you know I'm sure Lewis will look after it it's, it's, the, it's the car that we had out in Brazil so it's a, it's a fairly historic car for us uh, and a lovely car at that too so we're, we're emotionally attached to that a <laughs> Cu couple of donuts perhaps in front of us in the commentary booth <laughs> I'm what sure there'll think? be a few donuts <laughs> oh, I certainly hope so uh, let's hear from uh, Sebastian Vettel he's competing in the race of nations final today alongside Michael Schumacher for Team Germany well Sebastian you've made it through you're coming we're coming to the end of it now how do you feel better and better so uh, now I have to jump into a car that I should know Let's see, let's wait and see. I think it will be good fun. Now this is your first race of champions. What do you think of it? Second. So, Second? Yeah, I've been here last year. Of course Where you were, you yeah, been? so was I, so was I, I'm sorry. Um, but seriously, it is a fantastic event, isn't it? And I mean, the track's good, the cars are good, and also the variation that they have. Yeah, Wembley is great. Uh, a lot of fans this year, I think more than last year. So atmosphere is fantastic, cars are great. Circuit is very slippery, very difficult for us, but that's you know that's uh, what it's all about. So it's good fun. It's a very very nice event. You get to meet other drivers from other categories: Formula Series, Rally Series, NASCAR, whatever, Touring Car Series, and uh, it's it's good fun because you get to laugh a lot, joke a lot. So it's nice. Now you're going to be uh, against. Am I thinking Matthias Ekstrom? Yeah, that's right. I'm against Matthias. So let's wait and see. He, I know him very well. We are good friends and. Uh, yeah, but he, he's won this for like the last four or five years. Two. You see, your memory is not very good. <laughs> anyway, have a good time. Thank you very much. I've got three-time World Touring Car Champion Andy Prio here with me. Andy, you just missed out there, unfortunately. It was a close one in the end. Yeah, it was close. It was a tenth of a second, but you know, that's what it takes to win or lose. And I always said this, this, this race is all about the smallest of margins. So I was a tenth behind today, but uh, you know, to lose to an eight-time Le Mans winner is not such a bad thing, is it? Tommy, uh, Tom's a pretty good guy, and uh, it was a good race, and hopefully the crowd enjoyed it. 
I spoke to Tom beforehand and he said he was taking it much more serious this year and I've got a feeling you might have lost to the eventual champion. Does that make you feel any better? That's what happened to me last year. I lost to the champion, uh, Matthias Ekstrom, last year and that does make you feel a lot better. But, uh, you know, all these guys, Oli, as you know, are really good and uh, they all put up a good fight. And this event is all about the smallest of a little mistake and you're out. You know, if I, I bogged on the start and that was it. That was, the, that was the race over from the start. So, but, you know, we had a good fight and we nearly, nearly got back to him at the end, but uh, not quite good enough. Have you kept a little behind for the individual event later on this evening? You know, do you reckon you can probably beat Mateus and Tom if you come up against them again? Um, I've got no expectations, but I just want to win. That's all. So I'm going to have a good go. It depends on what, in which car. Uh, Oli, um, you know, as you know, the WRC car is, is fantastic to drive, the World Rally car. But Matthias is a bit special in that. So maybe uh, we'll see. But at the end of the day, this event, you just, you just don't know who can come through. I mean, Travis Pastrana has been in the final before and, you know, some, some, some wild card drivers. So anything can happen. And don't, don't lose sight of uh, Troy Bayliss as well. He, I went with, I was a passenger with him yesterday. Uh, and he was really smooth and really quick and he had a good race, he made a mistake. So he's also possibly could be up there. Well, thank you very much and best of luck for later on this evening. Cheers, mate. Thanks. So uh, gearing up for the uh, final of the Nations Cup, Scandinavia going to go head to head with uh, Germany and Tony Jardine. Who's your money on? Scandinavia have the experience, but I just think it might be the edge of Vettel, as he showed last year. He's just so quick, and I think he's managed to suss out the conditions so well so far. OK, over to uh, Toby Moody and Andy Marriott for more. Yeah, well, I think this one could go, uh, Toby, to the best of three, don't you? And uh, two of the best teams, who are both uh, pre-event, both joint favourites, I'd say, have got through to the final together. This is a little bit what we expected. And uh, Michael Schumacher, such a professional. And Tom Christensen, equally so, of course, the best ever sports car driver in the world. Lights are red. They're hanging on a bit. They go green. And who gets the best start? Schumacher is on the outside. Schumacher right on the apex. Ooh, Tom made a little bit of a mistake there. Maybe a couple of tenths of a second on the infield on the left-hand side. Tom Christensen with the orange roof. Um, with the rock buggy, Michael Schumacher already to our right hand side as we hone in on Christensen. Don't forget, uh, Michael Schumacher has done Le Mans, but it was many, many moons ago in a yeah. Mercedes. Many moons ago, and I doubt he will ever go back actually. Yeah. Um, but Tom Christensen is one mean competitor. This is going to be very, very close, and uh, once we get that uh, time split, uh, Toby, then we'll really know what's happening here. Look at the precision of Michael Schumacher, and of course, he did drive this car a lot last year in the Nations Cup in the final he knows how it handles and over the bridge it's just the ability of the world's yeah. best in you know 91 Formula One Grand Prix yeah. victories for Michael Schumacher it's just such a joy you've seen it I've seen it in our careers you sit alongside somebody in a rally car and you think you've never sat in this no. car and they just have the touch they drive cars every day of the week and there's two of the world's best right in front of us and Toby the split showed them only 0.3 of a second apart Schumacher, I think, who was just edging ahead there. This is the, essentially the third lap. Look at the hot exhaust on the back of the race of champions buggy. It's absolutely red hot. They're running these engines very rich. They've got a lot of good pick up as we have got Michael starting the last lap ahead, as it were. Christensen barreling into the uh, first corner. Christensen closest to our camera. We come back to Michael Schumacher. Silky, silky smooth. Yeah, the uh, stagger, of course, will unravel here in this uh, final section with a chequered flag at the ready. And it is going to be very Whoa. close indeed. Look at this, they're coming towards the line now. And who is it going to be? Is it going Whoa. to be Schumacher? Sherry sure, just does it. Sherry, sure, that is the closest race we've had thus far. And it was, uh, well, they were neck and neck, but just a whale ahead for Michael Schumacher. Just under two tenths of a second in the final for the first runoff here. So Michael Schumacher celebrates with a few donuts. Let's uh, uh, hope he doesn't get too dizzy <laughs> yet. No, best of three, of course, coming up. The second shootout between uh, these two nations. Well, the combined Scandinavian team, of course. And uh, Shuey. Has he stalled it? Hang on. The, the, no reverse, of course. Oh, bike no box. Reverse. No, bike, bike box. box. Some uh, bike engine sports cars have a little sewing machine engine, not sewing machine, uh, washing machine engines. You can push a button and get reverse, but not on these. 
Yes, it'll be a, a push me, pull you, gear change. First will be forward, then neutral, and then second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth will be pulled backwards. Wow. And on the upshift, you won't need to dip the clutch. No. You only really need to dip the clutch going down the box. Great slow-mo shots there, Michael Schumacher. The absolute precision. Look how close he is to the apex of the corner. Absolutely spot on. And then you see the front dive down with that uh, suspension. Lots of travel there. And these are not easy cars to drive. And there was the finish. Just uh, magnificent stuff. Yeah. And the donuts uh, ensuing for Michael. Uh, oh, premature celebrations for the time being. So Sebastian Vettel can clinch this now in this uh, next race. But uh, Matthias Ekstrom will have other ideas, of course. There is Schumacher. And uh, look at the pair of them there. Look at Tom. Absolutely love that. But he'll be disappointed not to have won that race. Sebastian Loeb there, just uh, fresh from that victory in Wales Rally GV. Terribly icy conditions. And uh, actually, Sebastian Loeb upset a few of the fans by not waving in the... Uh, in the arena section of the rally but he's been doing plenty of waving here we are back in the crossbows tony you've driven one of these i believe yeah that's right andrew that's right i drove one at silverstone in the summer this year and they are tremendous fun tremendous fun it's very responsive steering it's a tremendous design you've got a, a delara developed vehicle in conjunction with ktm in matigoff and it's actually a very small town just yep. on the foothills of the mountains there not far out of salzburg and uh, they've got that all carbon fiber chassis all the aerodynamics you've got under tray you've got venturi you've got downforce uh, the seat is solid it doesn't move the pedals come towards you and it is tremendously exciting and responsive to drive cars being staged up drivers looking at their passengers have i got a light one because the weight makes a difference these cars are so light and uh, so we've got Matthias Ekstrom yep. versus Sebastian Vettel. Vettel versus Ekstrom. Vettel gets the drop for the first couple of yards. Oh! oh. Ekstrom goes wide and clouts the barrier. That's his first yellow card, Andrew. He cannot afford to touch the barrier again. He can't. And, of course, he lost time in the process. So uh, Sebastian Vettel looking good here. And uh, Germany could be heading towards a second successive victory in this nation's event, this nation's cup here at the Race of Champions. The individual uh, knockout competition yet to come. Plenty more action coming here from Wembley Stadium. And uh, Sebastian on the inside now with a predominantly white car, the familiar orange, that is KTM's trademark color. That is the Ekstrom car as we look on board with Sebastian Vettel. You can almost hear, you can almost hear the, the, the concentration. You can see it in his eyes through the slightly tinted visor with that white crash helmet. Vettel on the outside with the let's, German flag. Let's wait and see the times. We'll get the times at the halfway point. Ooh, not a lot in it, not a lot in it. Ekstrom up at the moment. Ekstrom, with his versatility, could be getting this one back, but just underneath our commentary box, yep. Vettel had a big, big moment there. Lots of opposite lock. And I really thought Ekstrom had lost time with that little shunt, but obviously it helped him round the corner. And uh, this one is going to be close, but he thinks knows he can't make a mistake or he'll get that five second uh, penalty of course this is the end of the third lap if yep. you want to call it that yeah so the next time around will germany come out the champions as we ride on board with sebastian vettel taking another handful of lock around Big the lock, yeah. into the infield the right hander the infield at wembley the grass is still there but they're trying to stay on the tarmac as we hone in on Ekstrom around the last right-hander into the left, even Stevens between them, over the bridge goes Sebastian Vettel, Ekstrom in control, I reckon Ekstrom is going to level it for Scandinavia and he, he does. does! Wow! We go to the final it's what all for Scandinavia and Germany, we couldn't have written the script a better way. No, I guess oh, that fantastic. means we're going to see Michael Schumacher out again and I think it'll be it. <laughs> oh, oh and off into the uh, sand there. Well, KTM with their victories on the Dakar since 2001, I suppose it feels at home, doesn't yeah. it? And you just reflect for a moment on the success of this car. They've been racing these cars in, in GT events, but for the little Austrian company in motorcycle racing, Toby, to take on the might of the Japanese and beat them, it, I think it's phenomenal. There was that incident which really didn't uh, hurt Matthias Ekstrom at all. Absolutely. KTM's first world champion, Heinz Kinigadner, 
is uh, here this evening at Wembley and he'll be enjoying it and screaming his voice <laughs> as I'm sure we are up here in the commentary box. There we can see Michael Schumacher about to put his crash helmet back on. There he goes. But it's so difficult to climb into another car. It's a different car. Just got a different feel about all the pedals, about the steering. And uh, Michael Schumacher, father of three. I heard him talking earlier about how important it is to have family time. And uh, I wonder if he's just doing a little bit of out psyching now. You know, it's a part of the racing driver's armory to try and out psych the opposition. Never, ever leave a door open. A racing driver will, will be putting a bit of. Uh, bit of rhetoric through, he'll put the wheel and alongside you if it was out there on the racetrack. Toby just looking at Michael there, he stopped racing, except of course at events like this and a bit of motorbike racing, but he's still very trim, he's still very fit, and there isn't any extra weight on that tummy, is there? And uh, of course he can live the good life now, he is a multi-millionaire, he's got the jets, he's got the huge houses and uh, more money in the bank than you would know what to do with. But uh, nevertheless he is still so competitive, and he really wants to win this and give Germany back-to-back -back victories. Absolutely. After the 91 Formula One Grand Prix victories for Michael Schumacher, even only, what, a, a month and a bit ago, he was uh, testing some world superbikes at the brand new Portuguese circuit yeah. of Porto Mayo. And uh, the Ducati squad, the Yamaha squad, the Honda squad saying, wow, he's just got the touch, as I was saying yeah. earlier. He's got that magic feedback which makes him a world champion and so unusual to I'm um, not that he's taking motorcycle racing seriously but to make that switch to bikes quite a lot of we've seen bike blokes of course uh, bike uh, bike to car switches have been made but this of course is a rerun Toby of uh, the event we saw for the actual race of champions last year yes it uh, was uh, going to be the showdown now, so uh, Sebastian, the two Sebastians are up there. Sebastian Vettel with Sebastian Loeb, the five-time World Rally Champion, having wrapped up the title just a few weeks ago. And look at Japan. that magnificent sight, that huge arch all lit up here in northwest London as we are on this cold winter's day. And at this event, always brightening up for uh, hours before uh, getting ready for Christmas. No tyre warmers, of course, with these BF Goodrich tyres on these rock buggies. So Michael using every little last piece of asphalt coming out of the driver's collecting area before he comes into this Wembley Stadium to try and get some heat into the tyres. It's only a very light car. It's under half a tonne, 475 kilograms, but 170 horsepower. Just to put that into context, a Golf GTI has got only a little bit more horsepower, but it's nearly thrice the weight. Yeah, but this is this. This is crunch time here in Wembley. This is the third and defining heat. And Michael Schumacher gives the cameras a double thumbs up. He's feeling confidence. The young DTM, double DTM champion in the past, Matthias Ekstrom, a man who's so good at this discipline, wants to stop him. Who will it be? Off they Ooh. pass. Schumacher with the best start. By far and away the best start, but we will not forget what Ekstrom said to us here yesterday. You've got to have that adaptability. You've got to mould your driving to the situation. The track was so wet yesterday, it was damp this morning, but it's drying out now. Oh. It's different from when they were last out. It is, and Ekstrom taking great handfuls of opposite lock. And that tricky bit over the bridge and uh, that magnificent camera position tracking these two cars. 25% of the race done. Yes. Ekstrom on the inside with the Scandinavian flag. Big slide from Ekstrom as he goes round the left-hander. Michael coming closest to our commentary position as we hone back in on the DTM champion. Yeah, two different styles going on. We've got the aggressive style of uh, Matthias Ekstrom here, the uh, Swedish driver. And then we've got the silky smooth drive of Michael Schumacher, the seven times world champion. Halfway point coming up, I suppose the advantage to Ekstrom may well be if he's won Group N on Rally Sweden, well, he's used to the wishy-washy feel through the front end. Yeah, Schumacher though was fastest halfway through and uh, this is looking good for Team Germany. But only one little mistake and it can all be reversed, Toby. I mean, that is the great aspect of this race of champions track here. 
Michael just just leaps so the touched. bridge. Leaps the bridge on the third time of four. It's just tremendously exciting. I can't tell you. I've got any nails left. <laughs> as he lifts an inside front wheel, level pegging as they start the last lap. Ekstrom on the inside has another big moment, but he just about ditch hooks over the curb. He does, but Schumacher super smooth again, and I think it could just go the Schumacher way. The German flag flapping on the roof of the ROC car. And will it be Schumacher? Will it be Ekstrom? And this is the run to the line. And who is it going to be? It's looking great for Michael Schumacher. And Germany wins the Nations Cup here at Wembley. And a lot of that is down to the great man, Michael Schumacher, and a victory by what well, is a vast margin in this event. Two seconds. Over two seconds. 2.2 seconds. The biggest margin of victory we have seen here so far today in Wembley. And that's what makes a champion, Michael Schumacher. He may have retired, but as you said, Andrew, only a moment ago, he's fitter than a butcher's dog, yeah. <laughs> as, as svelte and as muscular as ever, and that mind has never turned off. Now, and what I like about this particularly is that last year, Vettel really helped Schumacher a lot to win this Nations Cup. But this time, it's Schumacher can really take all the glory, and look at, look at Vettel down here. Look at uh, Sebastian Vettel. Here he is watching, yes, and uh, a young man there who's got so much talent, so much charisma, and he is the true successor, I believe, to uh, Michael Schumacher. But uh, Michael Schumacher, there's life in the old dog yet. Yeah, hate to call him a dog, but you know what I mean. And uh, Michael Schumacher, well, he has been magnificent. But of course now, do you know what he's doing now? He's focusing on the race of champions. I can win this. I'm quick in these cars. There he is climbing up, but he's already thinking about this. And we're hoping we're going to get a uh, swift reaction from him down there in the pits. Toby? Uh, are we going to see the famous Schumacher leap, Andrew? Well, maybe I'll uh, leave that for a bit later. Just a discussion there with Mattis Ekstrom. And uh, Michael just uh, reliving this. And, uh, hopefully we'll hear a little bit from them in a moment. But uh, look at Ekstrom. Just the hand signals. I just got that really good wrong. You know, quite on it here. And uh, if you just... Uh, well, pause for a millisecond. Michael Schumacher's going to have you. And that's exactly what happened. And so it is Team Germany for the second year running who win the Nations Cup. But don't forget, folks, there's lots more to come. We've got the individual knockout with all 16. We've got drivers like Sebastian Loeb who will want to make up for the problems they had in the Nations Cup. So it is going to be fantastic. There is that magnificent sight of the stadium. And there is the... German flag flying, Deutschland über alles. Well, Michael, we're live with Sky now. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> it must be nice, though, to win something again, having been retired. Absolutely, yeah, for an old uh, man like me, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Does it make you feel young again? Uh, I don't really feel old, actually. <laughs> well done. <laughs> it was a joke. Doesn't uh, feel young, doesn't feel old, but certainly feels good in a car still, Tony Judge. Michael was making one of his jokes there. <laughs> his legendary sense of humour coming through. <laughs> My, how we've laughed during his years in Grand Prix racing and chuckled by Jove. Now, he still is, got it though, hasn't yeah, he? Yeah, but he's also more relaxed and, and, and he is smiling, and but he's scheming at the same time. And uh, he got his team around him in Grand Prix racing. He had everybody working for him. He worked very, very hard. Every aspect of the game he explored, you know, the car, the technical side, the, the, the chemistry of the team as well. And there he is, the man in the middle. And you beat Matthias Ekstrom. Yeah, I mean, uh, last year... Are you okay? Okay, we're back in action. <laughs> I think a cameraman might have just been taken out by a rogue, rogue flag uh, in the audience. So one of the Santa's helpers flying a rogue flag. But 
as we were saying about Michael Schumacher previously, um, Tony, he's been out of Formula One now competitively for two years. If he was to jump back into F1 now, would he still be competitive? He would be competitive, and what he's done regularly is test for Ferrari. He tested last winter, and every now and again he steps back into the car to make assessments on behalf of the team, as well as helping the team in an advisorial capacity this year and with Philippe Massa. You know, he, he still does a lot of competition work, whether on bikes or carts, he keeps honing that edge. Lifting the uh, trophy aloft, Sebastian Vettel uh, alongside Michael Schumacher there and uh, just accepting their award. Back-to-back -back titles now in the uh, Race of Nations for these two gentlemen. Uh, a big achievement at this event. There's so much talent on show there. You can see uh, just to the uh, left of them as well in shot there's Team Scandinavia who come off runners-up this time around. Tom Christensen and Matthias Ekstrom who's been uh, so prolific here in the past. And it is a great moment as we've said. It's a real camaraderie isn't it between these drivers who on any other occasion would never get to meet would they? I think there's a tremendous respect as well as you see Schumacher there talking to Ekstrom and Christensen. They know that Christensen has won Le Mans eight times. No man has ever done that. They appreciate and they understand what a great racing driver he is. And, and Ekstrom, again, for his brilliance in terms of DTM, he was third in the championship this year. He's won the championship twice. They know that he's a really, really good driver. On the other hand, they're both looking across at the future of Formula One racing with Sebastian Vettel, just 21 years of age, and Michael Schumacher at 39, you know, the doyen of the sport, the expert, the man who is admired worldwide. But I'd still say this to you. Michael Schumacher, a genius, but a flawed genius in his time. Well, certainly uh, today he's enjoying his moment in front of the uh, fans here at Wembley Stadium in the Race of Nations. A little earlier on, a cameraman managed to get in the way. This is what happened then. Oh, that's what happens when... Uh, oh, look, a very caring Michael Schumacher. He did want to know exactly uh, what had gone wrong there. But, yeah, all sorts of problems for that particular cameraman. But we do understand he's alive and well at the moment. Uh, let's uh, see what's going on uh, backstage at the Race of Champions. Lewis Hamilton and family just uh, enjoying time out. <laughs> Taking the mick out of Nicholas. How dare he? <laughs> when we come back, more from the Race of Champions. on the way and the build up to the race of champions too but next up is Lewis Hamilton So coming up next, Lewis Hamilton will be in his championship winning F1 car and in front of that Wembley crowd very shortly Coming up after that, there's a demo run that comes from the X Fighters Freestyle Show. Best bikers in town, right here. Then it is the grand finale itself at the Race of Champions to determine who really is the champion of champions. Michael Schumacher's got a taste for winning, especially at this uh, Race of Champions event. Can he do the double? I think he can, yeah. I think he's one of the favourites, certainly. But the point is, Georgie, that he's never really been able to leave his racing behind. He's either going to the kart track back at Kirpham, where he came from, where the family had their own karting business, testing himself still. Racing motorcycles, um, you know, he had a big accident this year where he dropped his, his racing bike in France and he's been racing in the German Superbike Championship. I'm personally quite surprised that Corinna and his wife has allowed him to do that, having got, you know, won the championship seven times and you go back and race motorcycles. Motorcycle racing is far more dangerous than car racing. You get thrown off, someone runs over you, whatever, but that's Michael Schumacher. He pushes the corners of the envelope all the time. He always tests himself. And there's no more of a challenge. And if a younger driver is around, he wants to show that he's still competitive at 39 years of age. He'd be really, really pleased with that performance. What was impressive, as Toby was saying and Andy was saying in commentary there, 
how smooth Michael was, and yet the other drivers, even Matthias Ekstrom, was flinging the ROC buggy around, rally style. Michael wasn't, and I thought the way on this slippery surface was definitely to chuck the car a bit to try and get some adhesion. He's finding the grip where others aren't finding it, and he's smoothing out the corners and just kissing the walls, just slightly brushing them, using every inch of this very, very narrow track as well. So it's superlative performance from a man who is still in peak condition. Andy Prio said how difficult it is and how every second counts out there on a track like that at Wembley today. Just talk us through Michael Schumacher Macca's final race and where he managed to make this two seconds lead up. Straight away it was off the line, uh, no question about it for me, you know, the anticipation there and there's a rare moment there where he was catching the curbs on the inside but he was using a little bit more of the track and what we're looking for here is the key that you see that in there that you saw um, Ekstrom there soaring away at the wheel and look for the clues here in Michael Schumacher and there are much smoother movements with the steering wheel look at the ROC buggy itself with an incredible power to weight ratio really powerful piece of kit to use in these circumstances there we go there's Ekstrom flinging it around rally style tail coming kicking all the way out this is a man who won his class and he's having to scrabble around there and get on the brakes. Won his class in the Swedish rally uh, about three years ago in Group N, which is a feat in itself. And even though Ekstrom, great in DTM on the track and also on the, in the forests as well, Michael Schumacher, you see Vettel looking on, he wasn't sure there, Vettel thought, you know, 50-50, because you never can tell on these two tracks, although they're parallel, it's one kilometre on each of the tracks and it's one track goes all the way around and it's the smoothness of Michael Schumacher that goes on. The other thing is Michael is used to going wheel to wheel, car to car and racing against other people. The other thing that he's used to is winning. The winningest driver, if I can say that, in the sport ever, ever, 91 Grand Prix victories. You know how to do it in any discipline and there, just look at him there, that is superb. Under the bridge, just can't see how he shaved the wall underneath the bridge there as well. And he's taking the racing lines rather than the rally lines. Look, look. Yeah, there was a little bit touch of opposite lock there, but his hand came up, he turned in, he knew where the grip was. Fantastic. Look, 2.2 seconds. And, and this is the man he's beaten who has twice won the champion of champions back to back in race of champions. So deservedly raising the cup there for Team Germany and back-to-back -back winners for them. So for Michael, that will be deep, deep satisfaction. He's here to enjoy himself, but most of all, he's here to compete. And now Scandinavia lining up to congratulate uh, the champion. Seven times, who'd have thought that? Amazing. Then again, Team Scandinavia, they got beaten soundly last year in the Nations Cup, so they finished runner-up. Um, but as Ron Dennis would soon tell us, you know, second is the first of the losers. Uh, Michael Schumacher's uh, teammate in that uh, Germany success was Sebastian Vettel. Up next for him is the superbike star, Troy Bayliss. He's with Amanda. Well, I'm now joined by Troy Bayliss. So tell me, how's it been going for you? Well, a difficult day, but uh, I've really enjoyed myself. Um, actually, I was doing quite well until I had a bit of a spin run out of luck. But, uh, you know, I'm up against some tough guys and... Uh, there's no great expectations of me to like take the podium here today, so we just like roll with it and have a good time. And what possesses you on a really wet, miserable, cold Sunday morning to come to Wembley and to do this, rather than stay at home, put your feet up and enjoy some Australian sunshine? Well, it is a great event and uh, it's like an honour to be here. Uh, it's good for everyone to get close to all the races and, and basically everybody's just here to have a good time. Plus you get to try a few different cars and uh, it's just a nice all-round good event. Now, I mean, you're in an, in an, a, an exceptional position, really, because, I mean, you, a, a two-wheeled racer, you're not used to racing on four wheels. No. What's it like mingling amongst all these four-wheeled guys? Are they actually giving you any help? Are they telling you what, the, what you should be doing? Yeah, no, I've had uh, a nice time here with the guys, and, uh, you know, we're all pretty similar. We're all just boy racers, really, and uh, even when you look at Michael, the top, you know, deep down, he just wants to go fast, and that's all what it's about, and uh, everybody has a good time here and just, you know, rolls with the weekend. Now we're going uh, into the second stage of the event very shortly, going yeah. down to the individual stage. Mm -hmm. What are you going to be looking forward to? What are your ambitions in that? Well, I think I'm, in the, I'm going to be driving the same car as I was in the, in the Nations Cup first. The only problem is I've got Vettel uh, <laughs> first up and yeah, okay, he's doing quite well. So it could be an early shower for me this afternoon, but never mind, I'm happy. 
Okay, so let's hope you're not going to be going home too soon. But what does next week hold for you and next year? Well, uh, right at the moment, in the, in the process of getting organised and a bit of organisation to move back to Australia. It's been 10 years away and uh, finished the career on a high and I'm just looking forward to uh, starting a new life back in Oz. And uh, presumably putting your feet up though. I mean, you need to take a bit of a break and as I say, enjoy the sunshine. Of course. The first thing I'm going to do is relax a little and spend some time with my family and uh, have a good think about the next move. Any ideas what that might be? Who knows? Great stuff. Well, anyway, have a good time. See you later. Thank you. Thanks. Troy Bayless playing his cards close to his chest there. As uh, Andy Prio said early on, if you're going to bow out at uh, this stage of the race as nations, you might as well do it to the eventual champions, which is exactly what Team Ireland did a little earlier on in the race of nations. Well, uh, we've been catching up with the A1 team boss for Team Ireland. That's Mark Gallagher. I'm joined here by Mark Gallagher of A1 Team Ireland and also Adam Carroll, the driver for A1 Team Ireland. Now Mark, what is your, uh, what is your position here today? Well, I mean, just uh, delighted that we uh, got Adam into the race of champions by virtue of him leading the A1 GP World Cup of Motorsport and uh, we had a good start to the season, as you know, and uh, we got a call and uh, what a fantastic event to be part of. It's uh, truly terrific. It's the first time Ireland have been represented here. I mean, what's it mean to Ireland as a whole to, to be here and, and representing motorsport in general, you know, for the fans back in Ireland? Well, I think it's terrific. I mean, uh, Wembley is such an iconic venue uh, for sport full stop. Uh, the Race of Champions is such an amazing event. And I think for Irish fans, you have to remember, I think something like 10% of the population of London are, are of Irish extraction, you know. So uh, I think for Irishmen uh, and Irish sports fans in the UK and in Ireland, it's terrific to have Adam and Gareth here. And really the sort of nation versus nation thing, which we're very used to in A1GP, that works well here at the Race of Champions as well. Can I have a quick chat with Adam now? Adam, a bit of a baptism of fire, shall we say? Yeah, it was... Uh not quite what I was hoping for, but obviously to lose to Michael Schumacher isn't, uh, isn't too bad. No, if you're going to lose to anyone, it might as well be Michael. Are you looking forward to the event this afternoon? You know, a little bit of practice now. Do you think you can go one better and, uh, you know, hopefully make it through at least the first round in the uh, individual event later on? Well, that would be great. You know, Matthias is the two-time champion now of uh, this event, so, uh, you know, he's another tough cookie to, to race against, but you know, I'm going give to it, give it everything and hopefully we can, we can beat them in this one. Well, best of luck, Adam. I'm going to go back to Mark. Mark, before you disappear, you know, what, what are your aims and hopes for A1 G Team Ireland this season? You know, you fantastic start to the season. You're leading the championship. Where do you think you can go from there? Well, there's only three races gone. Long way. 70% of the championship still uh, remaining. And as you know yourself, it's a very, very competitive series. Terrific driving talent for Adam to be competing against. But I think we're off to a good start. And as long as we can keep our heads, make the most of uh, this good start of the season, the championship we lead we have, and remember we don't have to win every weekend. We just need to take it nice and calmly and hopefully be in there at the last round of the championship. Well, I wish you and Adam the best of luck tonight and also for the rest of the season in A1. Thank you very much for joining us. Put A1 to one side and concentrate on uh, F1 for the moment because Lewis Hamilton has taken to the track in his championship winning car. Andy Marriott and Toby Moody, what do you make of this? Absolutely phenomenal. The uh, noise of that uh, Mercedes V8 engine is just bouncing inside the stadium all around. It sounds absolutely great. And there's a lovely shot. A very complicated steering wheel, of course, with all those control buttons on. And off he goes. Toby, what do you make of this? Oh, it's fantastic. I wish there was a camera up here for you to see at home because the hairs on the back of my neck must be touching the ceiling of this commentary <laughs> box. <laughs> and as you know, I, I don't, don't have much hair. No, I'm not sure that makes great challenge. No. <laughs> no. All a bit of opposite lot. Oh, yeah, well, he's doing some donuts. Oh. Andrew, you and I have done motorsport all our lives. <laughs> you're, all, you're a little bit older than I am. Uh, indeed, yes. But the echo is just like the yeah. echo through the trees at Monza or at Spa Francorchamps. The echo, as you said, around this Wembley Stadium is just fantastic. What a treat for these British fans. And there he is, and that's a difficult area to do that, don't I? Oh, and across that top white box there, laying the rubber. And this is not just uh, any demonstration car. This is, of course, the car in which he won the championship in Brazil. He won some races in this one. I was talking to the team earlier in the day. And uh, these donuts, in the old days, used to damage the clutch quite a bit, but uh, these days it's not so bad, and uh, they find that uh, the car comes out in pretty good shape after all this is over. There he is, of course, the cars will look a lot different next season. Uh, Toby, as you know, the aerodynamics are all changed, and of course, all the rules. There's uh, his what? brother just uh, covering his ears as well. Hey, 
out here. Oh, it'll be noisy for the people in the front row down there. And, and, and now, I've never seen a driver do that before. He's doing, doing the spin turns and he's doing the spin sign they normally do to start the engine at the same time. That is unbelievable. And there, his uh, stepmother just uh, looking on. Well, the flashbulb's going off. It's just like a pop concert here at Wembley. We've had Madonna, we've had Live Aid, but now we've got Lewis Hamilton down there in the base of Wembley Stadium. A round of applause for the 2008 world champion from Great Britain. <laughs> he's not finished yet. <laughs> Just reflecting on that uh, race we expected to see between uh, Chris Hoy and uh, this man here. Uh, just uh, reflecting back on the fact that race didn't happen because the track was so uh, slippery. I remember being at a Long Beach Grand Prix when it was a Formula One race many years ago. They had the Long Beach Grand Prix. They had a motorbike race, which was Barry Sheen actually was in, not like Barry Sheen. And they had a cycle race as well. Track was a bit slippery, and the only major incident was in the bike race. Rear tyres steaming off Lewis Hamilton's McLaren. There is so much heat in those rear tyres. Obviously, they've had the tyre warmers on, but it's only 600 kilograms, this McLaren. No weight, of course, on the front tyres. All the weight behind the driver, behind the fuel tank. And the, uh, well, 700-odd horsepower nowadays out of that 2.4-litre yeah. V8 smoking those Bridgestones. Now, Tony mentioned uh, in the studio the fact that uh, Lewis received uh, his BRDC Gold Star Award on Monday at the Café Royal from uh, the Prime Minister, Gordon Brown. And I'll bring politics into this, but I have to say that Gordon Brown made a fabulous speech at that function. And uh, he was uh, clearly overjoyed to meet Lewis Hamilton and really did uh, appreciate what Lewis has done this year. And there he climbs out. A great role model, apart from anything else. Yes. Uh, for yes. all those people. And the uh, flash bulbs are just going off all around the stadium here. And Lewis Hamilton, he's a young man that really understands what the public want from him. He's got tremendous pressure on him, but, uh, you know, he really knows what's required. As his father said to Tony and Georgie in the studio, he's he's just a, a, a nice guy, done good, and he's continued yeah. to be a nice guy. And that win at Silverstone in the wet conditions on that very that wintry great. summer's and July Monica afternoon. And, yes. well, I mean, and he's he won the on. race by over half a minute. Proper genius stuff. And he, he's, he's just got the touch like maybe few others have ever had in Grand Prix racing. He's up there with Clark and Senna in my book and of course Schumacher. Schumacher's got the stats but uh, you know, it's, it's difficult as you know to compare era oh, with era. Very difficult indeed and I think Tony called up Michael Schumacher a flawed champion actually uh, a little earlier on in the studio and I have to go along with Tony on that. And so far we haven't seen any flaws with Lewis Hamilton really but the silly incident in uh, in Canada of course but uh, really that wasn't uh, a major issue and I think we're probably going to see an interview he's going to go and see the Santa helpers here in amongst the Santa helpers and I don't think he's probably ever done that before new experiences <laughs> in his life almost every week and there's another one and I think he's going to catch up with Martin Haven first congratulations and second welcome home Thank you very much, and uh, thank you to everyone for all of your support this year. Really, it's made such a big difference to me. And all the support you give me gives me so much strength, and uh, we've had an amazing year, not just for me, but for British sport, and uh, I'm just very proud that I could bring it home for you. Well, it's a, a lifetime's achievement. <laughs> this is going to be as emotional for them as for you, I think, because it's a lifetime's achievement for you. I first met you at the Autosport Show when you were about eight years old, knee high to what you are now. And even then your ambition was clear. You wanted to get to the top. You wanted to be the Formula One world champion. Is there any way you can sum up what it feels like now? You've had a couple of weeks to think about it. You know what? It's just been a ball. The whole year uh, was, is in, it was intense. And since the last race, I've been quite busy doing different bits and bobs, but I've never really had the time to sit down and, and really take it in. But I think it really hit me when I get to the first Grand Prix next year, when I have number one on my car. And, uh, but I'm going to keep pushing. I hope we can do it again. Well, of course, there's a lot of legendary drivers in the stadium, and uh, you now have put yourself firmly in amongst those. You're still very young. You're the youngest ever champion. You've still got lots of years in front of you. Have you got any targets for the future other than just having fun? 
Uh, no, I mean, we're going to keep on working hard. I'm going to have some fun with my family this Christmas because during the year you don't get too much time to do it. But then um, it's on to next year. We need to do it if we can do it in an even better style than, than great. But um, I want to bring it home for the country and make you guys happy. I hope you keep on supporting me and have a great Christmas. Lewis Hamilton, thank you very much indeed, ladies and gentlemen. The Formula One world champion. Lewis Hamilton uh, enjoying his uh, moment there in front of the Wembley crowds and uh, why not? Tony Jardine uh, watching on in the uh, studio here and uh, seeing all the plaudits being uh, given out there to uh, Lewis Hamilton. A lesson in donutting. How is it best to do it? <laughs> <laughs> you have to give it loads before you actually drop the clutch in that one it's quite difficult because you've got all the start procedures you want to try and learn to do it I don't do, you? I you do, I do, I want to go. And okay. you're going to come back here and probably drive a car yeah, aren't you? Yeah probably Wednesday. not in front of a no, Wembley no, no, crowd okay. of uh, that size, okay. certainly not. This is, this is how to do it isn't it properly? <laughs> It is, it is great, it, it's spectacular. It's, it's the noise apart from anything else and then the tyre smoke that you get to do the old swivel. And what you do, you get, you get the momentum of the throttle yeah. uh, and it could just, with, with the right amount of wheel spinning, it just gyrates around its own axis and that's how you can do it. And it is fabulous. But is it great that even his stepmom, Linda, you saw, she was watching there with his brother, Nicholas, they're eagerly watching at the edge and getting as close as you can ever get to a Formula One car because when you're at the race circuit, you're miles back. Here it is, right by the barrier coming along. And uh, there he is having taken all those. There's, there's stepmom there, Linda in the middle, and Nicholas on the left. Mum Carmen as well, who's played a big part uh, this year, as have Mercedes, because uh, they've powered the team. And as I say, <laughs> so, oh, there we are, all right. There is, there's his tyre marks from the donut. We're gonna have the big Lewis Hamilton autograph on there now. And that's Frederick Johnson, who's the co-founder on the left-hand side, just giving him his, <laughs> giving him his uh, instructions, signing his own donut. Who the fuck? See, that's what I was after. Yeah, <laughs> a signed donut as no. opposed to just an explanation. No, I think you just want to put your paw print in that wet <laughs> in that wet concrete outside Sky Sports, don't you? <laughs> I tell you what, though, these F1 cars they don't like going slowly, do they? No, they can't. They stutter and then they stall, and then behind us again, you see the crowd are, are up on their feet, clapping again. Uh, he's going round uh, in the track. Hopefully, in a minute, he'll do do a lap of honour in the back of the SLR. Said, yeah, he's jumping in the back of that. And that's what they do sometimes before the Grand Prix on the parade lap to be shown around to the to the crowd before the Grand Prix. They ride on the back of cars. They've also ridden on the back of the big Pantechnicans as well to wave to the crowd. But this is a real, real lap of honour. Nine time Grand Prix winner in just two seasons of racing. In his second season of racing, he's clinched the World Championship. That is absolutely brilliant. Take another look at right, there it up. is. Oh, there we go. <laughs> there is. There's the one that he signed. He couldn't quite write Lewis Hamilton with the rear wheels, could he? I don't know. <laughs> he should next learn year. to do that. That's next year. <laughs> oh, that was great. Fantastic. As he goes, it takes the car away. So it's the thumbs up. It's the waves and the youngest ever world champion at 23 years of age. The man who was the youngest initially was uh, Emerson Fittipaldi and then Fernando Alonso who he had the big spat with when he was teammate with him at McLaren in that first year in 2007. They fell out big style but you know what even Fernando Alonso came down to the garage in Brazil after Lewis Hamilton mm. had clinched the title and said well done. And I thought that took a real man to do that despite the big fallout that they had. The Spaniard came and shook his hand and said congratulations on winning the world championship. So I don't suspect Lewis will be uh, the passenger on the back seat of that uh, SLR all the way up to Liverpool this evening for his uh, <laughs> award ceremony but yes he does have another award ceremony to attend this evening so well, off he goes on the back of the SLR car he'll jump in a helicopter and uh, hot foot it up to uh, Liverpool for the rest of this evening. While we're at Wembley though there's still plenty uh, more to come from here. The uh, Race of Nations is done. That went to Germany, but what about the Race of Champions? That action is still, of course, to come. And the uh, first round matchups look like this. In the uh, first round, Schumacher is going to go head-to-head with Christiansen. They uh, put out 
uh, that country a little earlier on. Uh, can Schumacher do it again? Edwards against Algasari. Button will go head to head with the drift champion Faust. It's Coulthard against McHale. GB goes head to head. Jason Plato faces the uh, three time world touring car champion Andy Preo. It's Matthias Ekstrom who'll go head to head with new boy Adam Carroll. Sebastian Loeb, the five time world rally champion faces Ivan Muller, his France teammate, and then it's Sebastian Vettel who takes on the superbike champion Troy Bayliss in the uh, conclusion of the race of champions. So uh, coming up next, the race of champions and also the freestyle fighters. Welcome back to Wembley. We're building up to the race of champions 2008. Next up though, comes the X Fighters Freestyle Show, the best of bikers on display here at Wembley Stadium. After that, it is the grand finale, the race of champions to decide who really is the champion of champions. So plenty still on the way to look forward to. Let's uh, build up to the race of champions now and catch up with Ivan Muller, the 2008 World Touring Car Champion. He's been speaking with Amanda. I'm now joined by World Touring Car Champion Ivan Muller. Now Ivan, you didn't have such a good start to the day really, did you? No, not really. Uh, I lost on the first hit uh, against, uh, against Christensen uh, by, uh, by not much, but uh, it was too much. Yeah, too much. It was second. You didn't come through. But now, I mean, now we're really getting to the serious business, aren't we? I mean, this is now the race of champions, as opposed to being a country race. It's you against everybody else. Who do you think your biggest competition is going to be? Ah, for me, it will be the first heat already because uh, I am <laughs> against uh, Sebastian Loeb, so uh, um, that will be tough. And that, uh, for me, is uh, almost like a final. So I have to beat him, and, uh, and then we'll see. But. Uh, for sure, uh, Loeb is quick, uh, uh, probably Ekstrom, um, Vettel as well, and uh, of course uh, Schumacher. But all of them, especially on this kind of track where every kind uh, of thing can happen. Now, what, what possesses you to come out and do this every year? Because, I mean, I know this isn't your first time. Um, I mean, it's tough because you're racing against, as you say, you're racing against Sebastian Loeb. I mean, he should be tremendously experienced in an environment like this. Why did you come? I don't know actually why, uh, especially we are out uh, all year and that was maybe one of the weekend free I, I could have, but we still come because we have the invitation and uh, it's important to, uh, to do some PR as well and to represent uh, our uh, sponsor and uh, um, our boss and our team, so it's, uh, that's why it's important to come. But are you really a petrol head? I mean, the, the opportunity to race against, uh, you know, motorcyclists, rally drivers, uh, NASCAR drivers, is it that that also brings you out? No, to be honest, no. Uh, I have to say I'm even not much uh, uh, very motivated uh, to do this. It's fun because uh, we, we meet some guys, uh, we share some experience of uh, every driver from different countries and different categories. But uh, yeah, you know, we are 100% in all season to, to try to win some race. Here for me, it's uh, okay, it's just for fun. Three, two, one, go. I'm joined here by Jason Plato. Jason went out to the eventual winners Germany and I hear you're up against Andy Prio. Yeah, I mean the draw draws a bit odd actually because Van Muller's up against Sebastian Loeb. Two French guys, two Brit British guys, which is just same because it means one, one Brit's gonna one Brit's gonna get, go out. The bad news for me is Andy's been in the WRC car twice this morning in the Nations Cup. I've yet to drive it, so he's got a bit of an advantage in that he kind of knows what that car's going to do, but I'm going to give it the big one. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, like you say, he's got an advantage out there, but you've got it all to play for, go out and attack, and, uh, you know, we've seen a lot of drivers prone to mistakes out there, so do you think you can force him into an, um, you know, an error? Who knows, you know, I mean, it, it, you know, even though this is meant to be a fun event, and it is great fun, we all really want to win, you know, there's a lot of competition, and... Um, but, you know, you can be sure of what, one thing. There's 18 guys out there going to be driving with absolute maximum attack. And uh, we all want to win it. Of the cars here, you know, what's your, been your favourite so far? Like, you mentioned the WRC car. You haven't had much practice in that. Do you have a favourite car? Um, I must say that the rock buggy 
um, is a great bit of kit. You know, perfect for this sort of event in that it turns really well and it's got tons of power. Sounds great. Um, uh, and also, you know, musically, that little Fiat Arbath, the 500, that was really good fun to drive. But, you know, anything, to, to be driving anything in front of an audience like this and a venue like this is, uh, is just a joy. You mentioned the audience, there's a great crowd out there. It's nice to be in front of the home fans, isn't it? And, you know, see the appreciation and also give a little back to the fans, you know. It's great for them to come here and see all the, you know, big name drivers out there like yourself, Michael Schumacher, of course, you know, Jensen Budham. You know, what does it mean for you to be here? Well, I mean, it's just a fantastic event, isn't it? I mean, I've been spending hardly any time in that dry driver's room and most of the time outside because the atmosphere is just electric. But like you say, you know, it is important to, to have these sorts of events. I mean, this is a unique one. Where, where else would you get Schumacher, Vettel, Button, all these guys competing on equal foot footing? They've got a lot to lose, remember. And um, let long may it continue, especially, you know, how great, great it was with, Lu with Lewis being here today. It's a great event. I'm having a ball. Well, Jason, thank you very much for talking to us and best of luck. Thank you. Jason Plato looks very relaxed considering he's just about to take Andy Prio on head to head. The race of champions around about half an hour's way or so, but uh, the atmosphere is still building in Wembley Stadium, and this is the reason why. The X Fighters freestyle show just about to get underway. They've just been uh, building the ramp and putting everything together uh, for this to uh, get going. And Tony, what's in store? Well, it's freestyle motocross. It's developed over a, a series of seasons, but in particular, you know, Red Bull have put these challenges together in cities all around the world, where sometimes they do all these different trick riding, but it really is spectacular. Where some of the riders go for the highest jump ever. One of them was 11 meters, I think, about a couple of years ago, and uh, they're amongst the best. Uh, P Travis Pastrana, who competed here last year and unfortunately injured his knee this week earlier in California. He made his name as one of the ex-fighters, one of the freestyle riders. He's a stunt rider and you can see, look at the truck under this is, these are major, major jumps. This is like going off the end of the ski ramp at the Olympics and doing a massive big jump. But, but with, not landing on snow. But not landing on snow. And you will see the bikes doing full circles, backflips, the riders letting go of the bikes and then grabbing the bikes again. Basically, you're going to see some grade one nutters on motorcycles <laughs> trying to fly through the air. It is dangerous, it can be dangerous, but my goodness me, it is spectacular and it is something else. The timing has to be right, how they hit the ramp, how much throttle they give it, and I think it's going to be quite skiddy on landing. Best way to build up to a, a huge afternoon, huge evening of a race of champions action as well. Amanda is behind the scenes. Let's go down to her now. I've now found Carl Edwards. Now, Carl, I mean, NASCAR race of champions. <laughs> <laughs> Where do I start? Yeah, it's, uh, there's a, a huge gap there, but uh, definitely I've learned that uh, racers are the same no matter where you go. The guys are hilarious. Uh, Matthias Ekstrom would be perfect in NASCAR. He's uh, a wild man, and uh, I've been having fun here, that's for sure. Now, I mean, I, you know, I've seen some NASCARs. I had a go in a British NASCAR once. And I mean, they are pretty basic. They, you know, they really, you don't have an awful lot to do. Just keep on turning. Um, I mean, this must be really tricky also for you. Yeah, the, uh, the thing that makes NASCAR so competitive is it's so simple. Yeah. So uh, the competition level goes through the roof. You know, it's like uh, soccer. It seems like it should be simple, but uh, the guys are, are really good. The problem is, is uh, here I'm racing front wheel drive cars, uh, open cockpit cars. And I have to use all three pedals, which um, which is not a problem on a big road course, but uh, on this small one, it's uh, there's a lot going on, and um, I'm not the best at it so far, but uh, we're having fun. And how are you coping with that thing that sticks up out of the floor, yeah. the shifts? Because of course, in the states, you're used to having your gear shift on your steering wheel as well. Yeah, we um, we do have gear shifters on the floor in the uh, in the stock cars. The thing is, we have the gearboxes such that you don't, you hardly ever use the clutch. The clutch is just a, you know, a convenient thing to have for taking <laughs> off. And uh, when I have to use the clutch here, um, I get a little confused on my feet. Uh, I'm so used to braking with my left foot. I mean, I make a living braking with my left foot. It's, uh, it's interesting. But yes, um, there have been a couple times where I've uh, definitely missed the gear that I've been going for. But hey, you must be having fun. You're obviously, I mean, you're keeping me laughing. You're obviously having a good time. Oh yeah, I'm having a great time. Uh, you know. The, the folks here are hilarious. They're so much fun, and they they, uh, they pick on each other quite a bit. I've already, I'm sponsored by Aflac. Okay, my sponsor is a duck, 
And everybody was saying, what's the deal with the duck? And I said, what, you don't have ducks here? And all the drivers said, yeah, but they're in the tub. So uh, we've just been, we've been having fun, and it is enjoyable, and I'm, it's really an honor to be here. So what does next year hold for you then? Next year, hopefully, uh, two championships, the Nationwide Series and the Sprint Cup Series. We were second in both this year, won a lot of races, but uh, being second is um, it's not that great. It's, uh, it, it, the, at best, it's very motivating, so hopefully we'll win it next year. I think we call that no, always the bridesmaid. Yeah, that's uh, no fun. Uh, makes the banquets uh, a little bit boring. You sit there and watch somebody else get a trophy. That's no good. I don't know. But anyway, listen, have a great time. Good luck in the rest of the Race of Champions. All right. Thanks for having me on Sky Sports, and uh, thanks to all the fans for, for coming out here to Race of Champions. What a pleasure, Carl Edwards. Uh, plenty of action going on. Entertainment out. Wow. <laughs> out uh, on the Wembley uh, stage at the moment. Let's uh, take you over to our commentators, Sam Emelenko and Toby Moody, for the uh, X Fighters Freestyle Show. Chaps. Thanks, Georgie. I'll tell you what, if they've got that ramp positioned in the wrong place, I rather fancy that one of those motorcycles is going to end up in your studio with you and Tony up here in the rafters at Wembley. Now then, Sam, have we got a show in store? It's not all about sheer height, it's all about balance and finesse. And it's very tricky conditions out there, Toby. I was talking with the boys earlier, and they were saying, you know, because of the rain they had yesterday, it's a bit slippery, and they just got to get out there for the first four or five minutes and just kind of work out how much grip they got when they stopped the bike at the end. But they're just warming up now. We can see him out there. This guy here going off in the black. His name is Jimmy Verbra. He is the team leader here for the FMX Forever team. And these guys race all over the world, compete all over the world doing competitions. You can just see the levers, uh, the handlebars. they got little attachments all over the bike. And each individual guy has a little bit different routine that they, they specialize in. So once you're in the air, uh, from so far as I understand, and normally my motor racing is in contact with the ground, uh, they can actually alter the attitude of the bike by touching the rear brake and throwing their weight around with the bar? Correct, yeah, these guys are, I mean, this is a team that they have, um, they're based in Belgium, and it's the, f it's the first time that a factory um, manufacturer, K-Team, has got behind the, f you know, the, the freestyle um, jumping and so forth, and these guys got a camp there in Belgium, and they're constantly training and working out new routines. I mean, we don't even know all the names of the different tricks that they do. And there's, um, I believe there's 15 guys that are that are on this team, and there's four of them here competing tonight. That right there, that just went over there, he's from New Zealand. That's Nick Nick Franklin, and uh, he's probably, I'd say he's probably the best guy on this on these four guys. Uh, well, they got all four KTM's out there, all two strokes, of course, very light, very chuckable, quite responsive, and just the kind of thing they need to uh, to go skywards and of course as you say there's hardly any names for some of these tricks because they make them up literally as they go along they're they're practicing by jumping into the foam pit they almost get a swimming pool drain all the water out of it and put loads of old cushions and foam in to to, to, to deaden the landing they just got to make sure they, Whoa, they still land in the, the pit first 360 awesome and that there was the new zealander nick franklin and as i said i think he's the one that's probably going to be the key to this night some of the shows that they're going to be doing throughout the year now this is their 65th show and the last one that they're doing for this year and I said there's 15 riders that are on this team competing all over the, all over the place in the different different arenas and there goes another one another one the camera shows his view right there that is excellent oh it's just brilliant we see we see the green we see the black of the London nighttime sky before he comes down to terra firma I see another one going up the ramp and straight out the front door. It all looks so easy and effortless. Oh, if it only could be. Well, I believe what we're seeing here right now is these guys are getting really comfortable with the conditions. They've adapted to them, and I think it's just going to keep getting bigger and better. Look at that. Straight up in the air. Let go of that thing. Go. Now, of course, the king at this in the early days of the backflip, the first person to do a backflip, Travis Pastrana. He was here last year. He unfortunately had an accident whilst filming during the week, and he's broken his pelvis and he's broken his leg. And uh, when he woke up from the operation, I think he was straight onto the phone to these guys here in London saying, I'm really sorry, but the doctors say not a chance. Another backflip, just as I was discussing that Travis did for the first time, and Pastrana also the first to do two double backflips. That is pretty incredible. These guys are constantly inventing new new tricks out there, and it's really hard even for us talking about it, what they're going to do next. Right now, they're just discussing it. Jimmy, the team leader there, was saying to his rider, what are you going to do? How are you guys feeling? I'm sure they're going to start really letting loose now. Sideways, almost the rear wheel leading the bike as it's midair over the top of the jump. 
straight out the back door, one way then the other goes the boots. And of course the soft suspension making the landing so easy. Suspension on these bikes really has been the development over the last 20 years. Power is nothing new, grip and suspension is. Oh, how do they get the thing back? I just will never... We could watch it forever and you think, no, 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 he's lost it. Oh, oh no, he's got it back. <laughs> yeah, these guys are definitely pros at what they're doing. They get the crowd going right now. They're really cheering everybody on. Give them some motivation. They'll go out there and, and just stretch it to the limit. I mean, these guys got a really good pedigree, this team does. I mean, one of their team members, which has just had some metal work torn out of his knee, I guess, or his leg that he had uh, broken. Matt Rabal, he's actually the, the series champion. And, uh, you know, these guys are really quality. Now, we've seen these, this kind of riding just, just for show. We've seen it put in a bullring in Spain, for example. We've seen it at the X Games, of course, West Coast uh, in, in Los Angeles. It really has taken the West Coast by storm, and now the world. Well, actually, um, yesterday, last night, I believe, it was the World Championship, and it was won by Arima Bazar in Brazil. That's how wide this thing goes. It goes all over the place. These boys know. And I was talking to them earlier, and they said it's just growing and growing next year. These guys are doing it professionally. That's all they do is go around the world competing and doing tricks. Well, I saw a video the other day of Jean-Michel Bale, of course, the former motocross world champion. Then he took on the Supercrossers. And we see a backflip live here on Sky Sports. Uh, Jean-Michel Bale on a motocross bike going down the Cresta Run in Switzerland. Okay. <laughs> I guess he, he's, he wants to get back on it, I guess. Who knows? Yeah. Well, he's one of the most talented motorcycle racers I have ever seen. He was just unbelievable. This is a great shot from the camera. I was there when they were, the cameramen were putting the cameras on Nick's bike, and he was saying, yeah, they were adjusting things up a little bit. And he says, when I'm going over, I'll give you a signal, whatever that means, whatever it's going to do. Well, they've got a bit of an air fence there in case they get it wrong before they come back down on the ramp. Is this another backflip? Yes, it is. Both feet off the pegs, only his hands in contact with the KTM as he comes back down to the Wembley tarmac, not turf, here this evening for our race of champions. But as these, as these ex-fighters, wow, the crowds, the DJ, as always, spinning the wheels of steel. They're really up there getting the crowd going. I guess they want to hear it. There's Jimmy up there, the team leader, saying, give it up there. We've got Chris Birch. He's, a, he's from uh, Great Britain, and he's the youngest rider on the team there. He's the one wearing the white and blue with the, with the black helmet. And then the rest of the boys from New Zealand. And you got Ronnie Renner from USA. So there's a big mix here of these guys. And like I said, there's 15 of them that actually are a squad, and they go around and they split it up. These are the last remaining four that are going to finish off their 2008 um, run of uh, shows. Well, as you said, 65, was it? Consecutive shows that they've been doing. Christian Pfeiffer on the BMW, the stunt world champion. He's been uh, showing off his skills That's every weekend since January. As you say, it's a growing, growing sport, and you just can't get enough. That's right, and everybody out there gets a lot of... Uh, enjoyment I watch these guys especially when they start inventing new tricks and like I can say it's really difficult to keep up on uh, what they're doing next but they're when they're at a camp as they have in, in, in Belgium they say they're constantly out there just training and, and trying different things and they're even supposedly there's somebody that's actually trying to do a front flip and they're working on that one now oh brave a man than uh, maybe he or I or <laughs> I asked, how are you guys going to pull that off? And they says, well, the front end of the bike is stuffed down a little bit. And as they're coming up to the ramp, they just dab the front brake for a second, and it throws them over. And they just really, they don't really know what they're, it's all about. It almost happened in a show, as they were telling me, but the guy bailed out the last second. Well, it's always, it's like Travis found when he did his first backflip. It, yeah, as we see one here in front of us, the first backflip, you think, I know I can do it, I know I can do it. But then the, the actual confidence to pull it off particularly it tends to happen with with Pastrana in the past in front of a big crowd well I'm sure most of the viewers have seen these guys on some of the highlights that they've uh, produced shows where they're they're actually doing all their tricks and they're landing in a big giant container full of foam and it gives them the confidence to be able to go out there and practice their routine but then it's the first time you got to actually do it when you don't have that foam to protect you is a uh, it does take some guts. And you also see some other people doing it on, on the big super bikes. You know, I've seen somebody on a video uh, flip a, a Hayabusa into a foam pit, which is a rather large 1300cc motorcycle. Yeah. 
more for the experience, I'm sure. Yeah, I think that one was just for show and maybe he didn't want to use it again. Unbelievable, these bikes, of course, so much more chuckable and so much more handleable as we're going to see another quadruple run. Nose to tail, nose, nose to, to tail, tail, nose to tail as they go up and over. They've oh. actually, oh, they have a backflip on the third one. We actually had to raise the spider cam, the airborne camera, just in case I thought one of them was going to get tangled up in the wires, Sam. If that was a competition, I'm sure they'd be trying for that. <laughs> Almost need a 50-pound note hanging, hanging from the camera. Who can grab the 50-pound note? Yeah, these guys, like I said, they come from all over the place and they're constantly working it out. Now they're doing some freestyle wheelings and they're riding on knobby tires out there, um, Toby, so that's uh, pretty difficult. Well, the X-Fighters giving us one hell of a show here at Wembley. Once more, spectacular stuff. X-Fighters making quite an exhibition of themselves here at Wembley Stadium. Incredible stuff uh, from them. Tony, uh, what did you make of that? <laughs> It is amazing, it is spectacular. All the time your heart is in your mouth. And I, I fear for them at times, I really do. And I, I have seen some of the uh, activities they put on around in Barcelona, of course in Spain they love their biking, uh, in Mexico where they do a lot of Baja racing and so on. You just look at the, the cameras, the onboard cameras, and you see them going upside down. Innate control and how they shift their bodies it is absolutely remarkable, but the bikers have always been the bravest and, and the most skillful in terms of what they do and what they put up with and how they sort of, most of them have, have broken many bones at many Presumably times during their practice. Presumably during practice yeah, sessions got to. to get Absolutely. these sort of jumps right, but they do seem in control most of the time. I mean, Travis Pastrana is, is, is an example, you know, when he's been into the SK, X Games and he tries out all these new tricks, he tried them out from a kid doing these tricks on little motorcycle bikes and so on. And you've seen some of the video of him falling off and landing and breaking so many bones and he repairs himself and gets back on and does some other incredible stunt. I, I, you've got to be crazy to do that. Those are the bikers, uh, done and dusted. Uh, when we come back after the break, the focus falls back on the drivers for the race of champions. That's live next. Wembley Stadium still reeling from some stunning stunt action from the X-Fighter Freestylers, putting on quite a show in front of the crowd here. So far, this Wembley crowd has seen Lewis Hamilton in his championship winning car. They've seen the Race of Nations with Michael Schumacher taking glory with Sebastian Vettel at his side in that. And they've also been treated to an incredible display of bravery and sportsmanship from the X-Fighter Freestylers. taking performances from the X fighters and certainly something the drivers will be looking to emulate in the race of champions that's up next
here's a look at how they're going to line up in the race of champions. The top half of the draw looks like this. It is the eight-time Le Mans winner, Tom Christensen, will take on the seven-time Formula One world champion, Michael Schumacher. James Algasari takes on NASCAR's Carl Edwards. It's Jensen Button in action against the drift champion, Faust. Coulthard will take on Ireland's McHale. Bottom half of the draw looks like this for uh, Andy Prio. It's Jason Plato. Matthias Ekstrom gets to take on the new boy, Adam Carroll, for the five-time world rally champion. It's Sebastian Loeb who takes on his French teammate, Van Muller, in round one. And for Sebastian Vettel, a winner in the race of nations here this year. And last, it's Troy Bayliss. Michael Schumacher certainly going for the double this year. He came ever so close last year. Let's remind you of exactly what happened. This is going to be really terrific. It's Norway in the yellow car, the Norwegian driver Henning Solberg against seven times world champion Michael Schumacher in the Red Solution F. And, and off we they go. go! And Michael Schumacher and Henning Solberg turn in together. This is where they separate Henning Solberg over the bridge. The Solberg looks as though he's got the edge at the present moment. What a lap to go and make no mistake, Michael Schumacher wants to win this event. Schumacher goes over the line to take victory. Jensen Button hits the wall there, action all the way, Button approaches the bridge. Alison McRae trying to right, right down to the end, but Jensen Button is the winner. Bourdais from France, he will be wanting to yeah. regain his reputation he in will. this event. Look, it's close, and Johnson, have, yes, Johnson is quicker. Nearly home and dry now, a quarter of a lap to go. It looks to me as though Bourdais just about got it. Just about oh, got just it. Just about. But only it. just, as they come towards the finish line, is it going to be Bourdais? Is it going to be Johnson? Oh! Johnson kicks the car up in the black buggy is David Coulthard, and in the one with the white stripes on it is Peter Solberg. So it is Formula One race driver against World Rally Champion. Should be an absolutely cracking contest, this one. Peter Solberg with a lot to prove, of course, and he is new to this event, Murray. You think that Peter Solberg, all that rally success, will be a regular, but he is a And an anguished look on his face. He's driven himself out of the race. DC's enjoying this now because he knows there's no pressure. Victory for DC. David Coulthard wins it. Lights are red. The lights will go green and it's go! And Vettel. Vettel gets a good, a good beautiful start. Whoa! Whoa. That was well, Vettel that who was, nearly lost that the front. Was Vettel very nearly buried it. Well, a flying fin with a flying Finnish flag on his car. Kovalainen and is ahead. Yes, he He's is. gained time. And Kovalainen from Finland gets his revenge. He does. Yes, sweet revenge for Heike Kovalainen. Dandy Prio really going for it. And I think Prio could win this one. And he's got a lot of supporters out here. Oh, look how close it is. Coming this down is... to the line absolutely together to go into the last quarter. Could oh. be for the... Full slide, give it lots, Andy, and he's doing so. Yeah. Yes, it's looking good for Andy Prio. The World Touring Car Champion is heading towards yet another chequered flag, and Prio wins it! Andy Prio wins! And we're into yet another heat, and it's Ekstrom and Christiansen. Travis Pestrana in the white car. Marcus Gronen from Finland in the red one. As Pastrana's car squats on the suspension on the braking and then leaps ahead as he puts his foot down into the left hand and not very far to go now. And uh, the flames go off and Travis wins it. And it's all action here just as it's all action there. Michael Schumacher on the inside in the predominantly orange car. Can Jensen Button get his revenge? He's been beaten by Michael Schumacher in his heat in the Nations Cup. Button will want to get back to him, there's no doubt about it. The young man from England is definitely going to be trying to go for this. Germany versus England, it's a classic Wembley manoeuvre. Yeah, and Jensen Button looks to me to be leading. In fact, he is leading, there's no doubt about it. Looks to it. He's on the inside. But the outside line, Murray, is much, much quicker. And certainly look at the way that he's drifting into German. He's really drifting through before he comes under the bridge. And I think this is going to be a lot closer than it looked on that opening lap. It's pistols at dawn in the commentary box. Never mind the track. And I think you're right, Keith. You are right, Keith. Michael Schumacher comes up to the line and takes victory from Jensen Button for the second time. He beat him in the Nations Cup and he's beat him in the individual Race of Champions contest. So it is Coulthard versus Bourdais. Who's your money on, Murray? 
I have to say Coulthard because Bourdais has disappointed me. So it's race time now. Bourdais in the red car, Coulthard in the yellow car. Scotland versus France. It is Coulthard as they come. Half distance. Of, yeah, half distance this. Coulthard's got it at half distance. Right, that gives us indication. Bourdais has got time to make up. Can Coulthard keep that advantage? Mark? Very precise. Bourdais has passed the point where he went off in the rock buggy in the Indonesians Cup. Sebastian Bourdais takes victory there ahead of David Coulthard to join Michael Schumacher later on. This is going to be quite an evil match too. So then, the big Aston Martin's about to shake the foundations of Wembley Stadium here now. Now, watch Andy Creo, Kovalainen in the white roof, in the yellow roof car, over the bridge. Now they're coming up to, this is where we can compare them. And uh, yes, it is definitely Andy Prio in the yellow roof. Aston Martin is getting the power down better. Will the Englishman be able to make this work for him? It's going to even out. It certainly looks like it to me. That, oh, or, or am I wrong? You are close, Andy Prio. Come on, Andy Prio. Oh, last Andy, corner. Give it plenty. It's not going to be enough. Yes, it yes, is. Yes, Andy Prio just did oh. it. And Kovalainen oh. loses it in a big, big way. Prio goes through and Kovalainen goes through the fence. Round the outside then is Ekstrom, and this is the quick line round the outside. Ekstrom oh, really the short Pastrana line. gets it really sideways as he comes the out of the left hand. Superb from Ekstrom then, Ekstrom goes through. Matthias, I've raced twice and uh, he smoked me both times. So one day, Matthias, I'm gonna beat you. Oh, oh they're they're you an idea how lines. much grip they've got as they surge off into that good start by Bourdais. Smooth, smooth, smooth. Country run for Michael Schumacher. Bourdais going well. He's holding, he's holding. Oh, oh no, he's not! Bang, bang, the into, the, into, the, into the wall. Schumacher, yes, he's on the inside and he's got about half a car's length, but Bourdais is on the quick part of the circuit now. Bourdais has gained that time. It's Schumi looks absolutely brilliant to me. Great he's, stuff. He's surely going to take this win. Schumi will go through. Michael Schumacher goes through by defeating Sebastian Bourdais. I think when they knock the old Wembley down, they hope that that would uh, put Germany to disadvantage, but it certainly hasn't done so today. Michael Schumacher is in the final, and who's going to be with him? Is it going to be Andy Prio from Guernsey, or is it going to be Matthias Ekstrom? Wouldn't it be something special if we had England versus Germany? If you're British, think red, because that is what Andy Prio is driving. Matthias Ekstrom grimly determined to make it two Race of Champions winners in succession. It looks as though the Jersey man is going to be out, but we've still got a bit of the race still to go. This is the last lap, and I think Prio is beaten. The Guernsey man is going to go out. It's going to be Matthias Ekstrom yeah, that, that beats Michael Schumacher. There's Matthias Ekstrom at the wheel, approaching the line. He's going to win, no doubt about it, and he does so to join Michael Schumacher. Prio is in the dirt. He's tried that hard. He's spun out, so Andy Prio unceremoniously dumped in the dirt. So we've got the scintillating certainty of seven times Formula One world champion Michael Schumacher against Matthias Ekstrom, who is the reigning champion. Ekstrom's got a lot of experience, but not against the seven times world champion. And they're going to be out again. There's two more races after this. One, uh, one of them in the Fiat and one of them in the, uh, in the Rock Buggy. This is the final then, this is what it's all about. This is what 50,000 fans have come to trackside to see. Are you ready? Go, go, go! And Matthias Ekstrom gets an absolutely fantastic start. He's got a good lead over Schumi as they come around then to start the uh, second part of it. Schumacher has got a lot of work to do oh. if he's going to catch extra. Oh. Schumacher's got it all to do and for my money, there's not a hope that he's going to do it. It looks as though it's going to be Ekstrom all the way. Over the line. It is Ekstrom out, Ekstrom in, Michael Schumacher out of this race, but there's still two more to come. They're about to come under orders then for the second part of the final here in Wembley, and this is going to be a cracker, the crowd are on their feet. Ekstrom on the inside, Schumacher on the outside, Schumacher's reputation to some extent is at risk here. That's it, away they go. Never say die, he won, he lost the last race to Matthias Ekstrom, He's got to win this one, he knows it, the pressure's on. Hip, pat, right, left, under the bridge. 
and he's building a lead all the time. If Michael Schumacher can win this race, it's going to be one each, it's going to go down to the wire. Ekstrom fighting, 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 but it's not enough. Michael Schumacher bears down on the line and takes the victory. So it's one each. It is going down to the wire, and that is only right and proper. Matthias Ekstrom is going to be fighting in the last race of the day for the champion of champions title against seven times world champion Michael Schumacher. Great! Red and light! It's, and it's... Go, go, go! Ekstrom on the inside. Michael Schumacher on the outside. This is the race that matters. Smoothness is essential. Breaking at the right points is essential. Precision is essential. They've both got a lot of those characteristics. Tyres extremely cold. A lot of time for the tyres to cool right down on these cars. Not all the grip on the opening lap, of course, but it will get perhaps a little better as this uh, first lap goes underway at the moment. Schumacher looking good. He's got a bit of a lead, but he doesn't have a big enough lead as Ekstrom goes right out to the barrier. Almost looked to me like he kissed it. Ekstrom, with that red car. Ekstrom on the quick bit, but he'll need to make up a lot of time and distance here because Michael Schumacher is really on form. He's flying. He had a good lead at the end of the first quarter of the lap, and it looks to me as though he's building up on him. Ekstrom goes flying Ekstrom's into quicker. the corner, and Michael Schumacher in the yellow car is losing out to Ekstrom. There's Ekstrom. a lot, lot of work for Schumacher to do now. Schumacher goes right out to the wall, but it's Ekstrom that has the advantage in this final race of the day, and if it ends like it did just then, it's going to be Ekstrom the Swede that takes the race of champions and the Henry Twyford the but Michael, trophy. But Michael Schumacher has got the advantage now having just cleared the fast, the really quick bit of the circuit. It may have enabled him to make up a bit of time and indeed it has because he comes out of the last corner but one and on the first half in the lead ahead of Matthias Ekstrom. But it's Ekstrom that has the advantage overall as it's going to tidy up on this last lap. Ekstrom definitely has an advantage over the German. Ekstrom the Swede is surely going to take this bar in a mistake because it looked to me like the German just hasn't quite done enough despite the fact he pinched Ekstrom's car look to at, try and do it. Yeah, look how close it is. You're right, Keith. Ekstrom, Ekstrom has got the advantage as they come out of the left-hander. He holds the advantage. He sprints down to the checkered flag. Oh. And Matthias Ekstrom, as Michael Schumacher loses it, is the champion of champions for the second year in succession. A brilliant, brilliant, brilliant afternoon driving by the Swede. Legends are abound here in Wembley Stadium. Well done, Matthias. Fantastic drive. Well, DTM champion, now he's the champion of champions at the race of champions for the second year in succession. So that was last year's race. This year's race of champions is just around the corner. Michael Schumacher is first up. Will he be crowned the champion of champions? Welcome back to Wembley in an afternoon of motorsports entertainment. David Coulthard celebrating his 14-year career in F1 with a demonstration lap and a couple of donuts as well at a Wembley Stadium. 13 wins, 61 podiums in his career. He's been part of this event for the past four years. He's never won it. Could this, Tony Jardine, be the perfect sign-off? It could be, but I think it's doubtful that he could win the champion. champion. He's, he's too relaxed now, he's, he's too into retirement and thinking about family and so on, but just think about it, it's an amazing career, you know, when he made his debut in Spain after the death of Ayrton Senna and things that he has personally been through. He survived uh, an air crash in the year 2000 when the private jet came down at Lyon, the two pilots were killed, he managed to get out with his personal trainer and his girlfriend at the time. The very next race, just days later, he was on the podium in second place. A man of steel, twice winner at Monte Carlo, the big race for any Formula One driver to win, twice winner of the British Grand Prix. And so it goes on and 13 victories. I think one of his sweetest ones was in 2000 when he beat Schumacher fair and square at the French Grand Prix and he gave him the little bird, a little signal from the cockpit. <laughs> he really enjoyed that. And during his time, he's had contretemps with Schumacher, who's here, of course. One was nearly a massive fight in 1998 in the Belgian Grand Prix in the garage afterwards, when Schumacher hit the back of his McLaren in the blinding spray, knocked the wheel off the front of Schumacher's car. Schumacher retired. 
he retired and went and grabbed a DC by the throat in the garage. You tried to kill me, etc., etc. So he's been through the highs and lows of everything. Supreme, supreme professional, uh, consummate statesman, if you like, for Formula One. And I'm so pleased uh, to see him here in retirement. And the good news is they've both been smiling and chatting in the VIP area. David Coulthard and Michael Schumacher. Let's uh, bring the draw to you. The first round matchups for the uh, race of champions this afternoon. Schumacher will go head to head with Christensen. Edwards against. Uh, Algusari Button will take on Faust. It's Coulthard against the Irishman McHale. Bottom half of the draw looks like this. Prio against Plato, Ekstrom, Carroll, Loeb, Muller, Vettel, Bayliss. Uh, let's get the very latest from uh, In The Pits because uh, Amanda Stretton has been finding out how the drivers are building up to this one. Amanda. Wow. Right, Hamie, what are you going to be working on for the actual race of champions? Oh, to be honest, I have to push the power and that's it, you know? Think about winning and that's it. Are you thinking about winning? Yeah, for sure. I need to push the power. Great stuff. And what about you? Do you think you're going to get round, get through the first round, Tana? I've got to get through the first 10 feet, I think. Uh, you know, the start. Once I get through the launch, you know, everything's okay after that. Uh, just being uh, smooth with those buggies. They're really fun, the buggies. They, they probably look fun. And in the driver's seat, they're awesome. Great stuff. Now, Gareth, we haven't had much of a chance to talk to you, but I mean, you must be in your element here. Yeah, definitely. You know, really, to come down to the race of champions here and to compete with all these uh, world superstars is fantastic. But it uh, really puts you up for it, and uh, you really want to fight and try and beat them. Right, Adam and Jason, two of you are there comparing notes. Are you giving him tips or is he giving you tips? I was actually just giving him a few tips there on the, on the rally car, but you know, once we get out there, you just got to go for it and, and hope for the best. And Jason, you did quite well that last time. I think you were looking slightly bleary-eyed this morning. <laughs> How very dare you? You've got to get in the spirit of these things. But to be fair to Adam, it was, early. It was, it was just, I'm not an early morning person. I'm a nighttime person. But I'm looking forward to this. I've drawn Andy, which is a bit of a shame because it means one Brit's going to go out. And the other bad news is we're in the WRC car and he's driven that twice. That, hence why I was having a chat with Adam. So he's given me a few little tips. I'm going to go, I'm going to go hard or go home. You will. That's right. Very profound. Thank you. Here's something different, female Santas uh, for the crowd. I think the uh, crowd are certainly enjoying that, as is uh, Tony Jardine uh, up in the uh, studio, but the less we say about that, the better. Uh, an incredible camaraderie we've mentioned before between the drivers, but now it's all about individual pursuit. It's not about racing for a team, it's about individual talent, isn't it, and individual skill. And you heard them, they're already sitting, thinking there about how they're going to get off the line, how they're going to use the traction control, the launch control in the rally car, etc. But there are two championship champions out there who've won it twice each. One is Lope, he's won the Champion of Champions twice, and so has Ekstrom, back to back. They're the big ones, along with Schumacher and Vettel, who I expect to see in, in the sort of final six. Uh, is the best driver today going to be the one who can adapt best to jumping from one car into another and perhaps getting to grips with it straight away? Because they're very different. Absolutely, absolutely. And you just saw uh, Schumacher there. Look, look at him getting, getting some heat into the brakes, even in that short distance coming out from the, from the garage behind the pits there, getting a little bit of temperature into the brakes and the tyres as much as he possibly can, those few feet. OK, champion of uh, champion will be determined through the uh, race of champions and heat one is just about to get underway. Over to our commentators. Yes, thanks very much, George. Is that man Michael Schumacher and he's against Tom Christensen and Toby. Oh, I'm jumping already because Michael <laughs> Schumacher has flubbed the start momentarily yeah. and at least two car lengths advantage already going to the eight-time Le Mans victor Tom Christensen. We're drama right from the word go. And what we have to say, this is not the best of three like the Nations Cup. This is just a one-off. So Schumacher's fluffed it there and that's probably the end of him. He's probably going to be out of this unless he can really put the pressure on now. Pedal to the metal for Schumacher. You never but, know. But Tom Christensen is a wily old driver and he won't have seen what happened probably, but he'll just keep focused, keep going. And it's definitely advantage Christensen at the moment. Well, the pair of them call under pressure. We know Michael Schumacher, seven time world champion. Uh, Eight days, I mean, as, as Tom Christensen won Le Mans, if he started on a Monday, he'd still win the race the following Tuesday. 
now then, as we come around for this final lap, even Steve. There's a split, look, it's very close. In fact, oh. Schumacher just a fraction in front. So everything to play for this second half of the race. Schumacher absolutely attacking now in that buggy, and not quite as smooth as he was earlier. Well, maybe he's been a little bit rattled. Just to reiterate, guys, what Andrew said a moment ago, there's no second chance, it's just like Wimbledon. If you lose this race, you are out. You yeah, are going to the shower unit, that's where you're going, <laughs> because they have got the sweat up here. Now, we're three quarters of the way around now. There is a stagger at that point, so... Christensen, Christensen, yeah. Christensen on the infield, there's Michael Schumacher. He's got the red top to this race of champions, little buggy, but... Michael did go best last year and at the Stade de France in previous years when he's driving the open this is it. car. This is it, heading towards the line. Will Michael Schumacher be knocked out or will it be Tom Christensen? Whoa! Schumacher wins the first round. Tom Christensen goes out. That was a close one after Michael fluffed the start. Oh my goodness me, less I reckon than, than a couple of tenths in it. Less than a tenth in it, maybe. We'll see the times. And there is Michael Schumacher. And, uh, well, he's been called arrogant. And uh, he is certainly mega confident, that's for sure. So, some great slow-mo action of Michael Schumacher as we take a break here on Sky Sports. Welcome back, and uh, here we see the next pairing, and uh, this is a very interesting two drivers. We've got Carl Edwards, and we've got Jaime Agacera, the uh, Formula 3 champion from two very different disciplines, Tommy. Carl Edwards on the inside, the American, the Bush champion from last year, and now into NASCAR, Agaswari, Jaime Agaswari, the 18-year-old, the British Formula 3 champion with the Spanish flag on the ox, and the crossbar oh. into the barrier. Oh, and he runs over the microphone, and there's a great big long snake that he's trying to push out of the way. <laughs> and he finally gets to the end of it with a whip and a kick and a flail and he's all over the shop so that should mean that Carl Edwards well, has got the advantage. Carl, yeah Carl Edwards has definitely got the advantage and Jaime is history. Now he would have been in big trouble if he'd done that in a Formula 3 car but uh, it just shows Toby how easy it is to make a mistake here. This track is still very slippery and you've got to be inch perfect here. Well there's Carl Edwards He's got the familiar NASCAR helmet, he's got the fireproof skirt around the bottom lip of his crash helmet. Now we ride on board with Carl, a real, a real wag he has been down there yeah. in the driver's area. Now we're riding on board from high up with Carl Edwards, looking at that dashboard system in the middle of the carbon fibre chassis of the crossbow. It's the same kind of dashboard that they actually have on some of the KTM road-going motorcycles. So there really is a crossover with the crossbow. Well, this is all for Carl Edwards just to romp it home now. And I wonder if he's going to do a backflip out of the car when he's finished. I don't think he'll have time here. Surely he would do it if he won this event overall. Of course, Carl Edwards had a problem in the uh, Nations Cup, but he's going to go through here. But of course, he's going to be against Michael Schumacher in the next round, and that is going to be tough for him. But uh, Carl Edwards then, runner-up and winner of eight races in the uh, Cup. And, uh, NASCAR. Yeah, and uh, you know what he said to Amanda down there in the pits as he takes the checkered flag to take the victory is that he was having trouble with uh, three pedals and the six-speed gearbox in the KTM crossbow, but he doesn't seem to have any problem at all as he does a donut to celebrate. Carl Edwards beats Amy Agaswari. So Carl Edwards, the American, going through. What a super job. Now let's have a look at this. So Michael here, Schumacher yep. victorious against Tom Christensen. Carl Edwards victorious against Agaswari. Next up, we've got Jensen Button on behalf of the UK against America's Tanner Faust. Talking away, I don't know what I'm to say, I'll say it anyway. Take on me, take me on. I'll be gone. Remember. 
Welcome back to Wembley. A bit of reconstruction needed here after the British Formula 3 champion attack offence. But coming up next is going to be Tanner Faust from Capristano Beach, California, against Jensen Button from Froome in Somerset. Well, Tanner Faust uh, is. Uh, let's just see why uh, we need to rebuild the track. Just take you through it, uh, Toby. <laughs> well, look at this, Amy Agaswari. <laughs> well, the, uh, the the bull has uh, really certainly gone through the china shop here. Smash uh, a I think they call him. Smash <laughs> Agaswari. Oh, <laughs> yeah. well, Amy, what have you done? Right then, now we look into the cockpit. This is Jensen Button with the 1100cc buggy. Now, this guy Tanner is the American version of Jeremy Clarkson. He actually is the front man for Top Gear America and BBC, if we dare mention that name, have exported that show to America and Tanner is the guy who actually hosts it. Um, we'll see exactly how he can drive in just a moment. Though. Is he the American stick? Uh, do we, oh, no, do no, we, no. <laughs> Strangely enough, last year at this event, we had Stick Blomquist doing some laps in an Audi car, but one national newspaper thought he was the Stig, and he got the pair mixed up, so well, maybe there he you is. go. Um, but anyway, he has done a lot of rallying, he is a drift champion, uh, Tanner, and I suspect he could go quite well here, but I also suspect he won't be Well, you never do know what Tanner Faust does have is the outside line he's the one with the white roof with this 11 1100 cc buggy tanner now jensen tanner has been a former ice racing champion and a rally champion so he will be used to not a lot of grip and he's a film stuntman in fact he was the lead stunt driver in the film tokyo drift he was the lead stunt driver in the uh born ultimatum and in dukes of hazard so he's done a lot of things <laughs> in his life this guy and I want to know where Daisy Duke is. That's <laughs> what I want to know. <laughs> but of course he was called up at the very last minute. Travis Pastrama having that uh, accident, of course, in his native California. He's uh, a friend of Tanner's. I think he recommended him. Well, as I said earlier, Tanner Faust was actually en route to Florida. He got the phone call at the last minute from Frederick Johnson on behalf of the Race of Champions, and he actually diverted straight here to London, he throw. He arrived, he only had a pair of flip-flops <laughs> and some shorts, so he's been winter shopping down, down Regent Street. There you see the times on your screen, and it's quite close. 0.3 of a second halfway through. It's Jensen Button in the lead. Love to see uh, Jensen go through. I think that Faust has got the better Do driving you? style, personally. Yeah. He seems to be the one who's more confident, chucking it around the corners. There you see the matte black crash helmet of Tanner Faust, the man yeah. from stateside. He's just coming through to complete the third lap, if we want to call it that. Oh, and he's got a hell of an advantage over Jensen Button, but Faust nearly spins it as he goes into that very, very slippery right-hander. Left-hander, sorry. Faust Depends is, which way you're looking at. Yeah, Faust is used to being in a stadium like this. Toby, uh, Toby he did the uh, X Games, didn't he? He did. He won uh, medals there this year and last year in 2007. And I'd say that Tanner has got an advantage here. He's just dabbing the brakes into the final left-hander. Tanner Faust on the outside. Oh. Jensen Button fighting back. But it's going to be Faust who gets wow. the victory. Putting out Jensen Button here at Wembley Stadium. Well, we've had some NFL games here at Wembley. <laughs> We've also had Bruce Springsteen playing here at Wembley, but now it's Tanner Faust who's victorious. Yeah, and he could just be our wild card, couldn't he? Well, there is another American, but let's uh, take a little break here. Oh, a bump there as we go and listen to these messages. Welcome back. Next race coming up in the uh, little A Bath Fiat 500s, and this should be a good one. Toby, we've got uh, DC David Coulthard against the Irish rally driver Gareth McHale from Dublin. McHale on the outside with the all white roof, David Coulthard with the little red strip across the top of the windscreen. This really is a Celtic race, isn't it? Yeah. David Coulthard flying the flag for Scotland and Gareth McHale pedalling the little 1.4 turbocharged 200 horsepower Fiat Abarth. 
believe they've only built 49 of this version of this car, which is becoming iconic in the streets of London, actually. We're seeing a lot of the little uh, Polish built cars around, but not in this specification, of course. Oh, struggling for grip is Gareth as he tips it into the left-hander. Well, David Coulthard, 13 Grand Prix victories. Don't forget he won his class back at Le Mans in 95 in a Jaguar. So I suppose with Tom Christensen, there's a bit more Le Mans history yeah. here. Gareth McHale, when I first saw him rallying, was in a Peugeot 206 Championship in the UK. He finished third, so he's used to this sort of little front-wheel drive type of motor car. And uh, interesting to see how he is getting on flying the Irish Tricolour here against uh, DC. Well, somebody for, for somebody here, either David Coulthard or Gareth McHale, it's going to be their last drive here this evening. Who will go through? Hard on the accelerator goes David Coulthard as he goes up over the top of the bridge. There is Gareth McHale in the foreground. And Gareth, well, with that iconic laid-back kind of Irish style that they have in the Irish Tarmac Championship, he's got it all to go for now. Uh, into the last lap, McHale on the inside. I think uh, Coulthard's uh, got the uh, jump here, really. Coulthard underneath the bridge, soaring at the wheel. Lucky passenger on board alongside him in this uh, just 900 kilogram but 200 horsepower. Absolute little hot hatch of yep. total pocket rocket. Coulthard coming through the final left-hander and Coulthard yeah. taking the victory. Good win. Knocking McHale out. Good win then for DC. Well, and I love the shape of these little iconic. It's a retro car. It's, it's like the, the latest mini Volkswagen Beetle. It's the same idea, isn't it? And here is the top half of the draw. Schumacher will go against Edwards, two great champions uh, from two different continents. And then uh, a similar, of course, in the uh, second uh, with the American against Coulthard. That should be interesting. So plenty of action coming up. That is the first top half of the uh, quarter-final draw as uh, we will go back to the next pair now. And it's what we heard from Jason Plato when he was down there with Amanda in the pits. It's going to be Jason Plato on the left-hand side with the white top to the windscreen against Andy Prio with the red top to the windscreen. Jason Plato driving the same car that Valentino Rossi drove in last weekend's rally Great Britain down in Cardiff. Andy Prio on the inside, tipping it into the left, hugging a little bit of curve. Jason Plato already passed us through our Sky Sports commentary box. The lowly slung bridge almost taking the flag off the top of the Malcolm Wilson built Ford Focus. <laughs> yeah, we can only say one thing for certain that uh, this is going to be a British win. But this will be close and Jason Plato really been enjoying this event. Such a great character around the racing scene is uh, Jason Plato. Andy Prio, Andy Prio keeping it smooth with the red top. Here is Jason Plato. We cut back. Look at Andy's concentration. The open face helmet gives you such a brilliant example of how these guys are concentrating. Jason with his familiar full face helmet changing up the gears with the flipper paddle gear change on the right hand side. Electronic gear shift through the four wheel drive. 330 horsepower Ford Focus. Quick time from Prio in front of Jason Plato. And at Prio, of course, with the uh, colours of Guernsey on his crash helmet, there you see them. He's also got a little donkey on the back of his crash helmet. He says that's because the, <laughs> that I, I can be sometimes very stubborn, but it's taken him to those three world titles plus the European title before it was elevated yes. up to a world title. Right then, last lap up and coming. Andy's had two previous runs in the Ford Focus. Jason, this is his first, so who's going to come out? Who can adapt themselves the quickest? Yeah, Jason's do doing an outstanding job here, and I think he's fighting back. Well, it is all unfolding him here in front of this big I Wembley think, crowd. I think it's going to be Andy. Do you? I, I think it's going to be Prio against yes, Plato. Yes, and yes, Andy yes. Prio is going to be victorious. He goes through the first heat for our race of champions and he demotes Jason Plato out. Early bath then for Jason Plato as we take a quick break here. Welcome back, and they've just blasted off the line here. And uh, Toby, give us the lineup. We've got Matthias Ekstrom, the reigning champion of champions for the last two years against Ireland's Adam Carroll. There is Carroll, he's leading 
the A1 Grand Prix World Championship at the moment on behalf of Team Ireland. He's already had three victories so far this year. And, well, let's just wait for this to unravel. At the moment, Carroll over the line first as we are 25% of the way through. Carroll with the red roof. But it would be a major, major upset, of course, if he knocks Ekstrom out. But Adam Carroll doing a good job as uh, the action continues here with that uh, trickle of flying. Adam Carroll not putting a wheel wrong. Here we go, flying over the bridge. That very difficult braking area into that left-hander. And, uh, well, this is not a walk away, is it? Certainly not. Ekstrom leads over the line as we cross the halfway point in these Dutch-built buggies. Ekstrom has a big slide, almost comes to a standstill. He'll be banging the gears down the gearbox. It's second and third gear that these guys use. Now we're riding on board Great with shot. the special buggy. You've got to rev these things, just like a motorcycle engine, all the time when you're on two wheels. They've got lots of revs. They've got a very small flywheel, pick up the revs extremely quickly. And with 170 horsepower, they really do light up the rear wheels. Ekstrom, halfway through, had a one-second advantage over Adam Carroll, but Carroll certainly not disgracing himself here. Man who's had success in GP2 in Formula 3, now in the A1 GP. Carroll's got a lot of work to do, a lot of work to do. He has. This looks like he has. Ekstrom's race. Fire spitting from the rear of the rock buggy, and Ekstrom on the inside, crossing the line to win ahead of Adam Carroll. Yeah, Nearly two seconds. seconds. Yeah, two seconds. So uh, let's take a quick break here before the next race. Welcome back to Wembley. Six of these quarterfinals down and uh, just two races remaining and the next one will be an absolute cracker there you see it on the screen and we have two very fast Frenchmen together and Ivan Muller the touring car ice racing champ against a five times world rally champion Sebastian Loeb and off they go Toby and more importantly Sebastian Loeb in 2003 and five and big crash already oh, oh Sebastian Loeb has gone through the barrier and underneath it Oh, Sebastian Loeb bits. losing bits off the KTM. The wing mirror's fallen off already. And Sebastian Loeb has got an awful lot of catching up to do against Ivan Muller. I was just halfway through saying ah. he's a former two-time race of champions champion. And he throws it away at the first corner. I did not expect that. No, we didn't expect that. It shows how difficult the track is. But he's not going to be able to catch up. Yellow flag still waving here because the track is still being reconstructed by the uh, hard-working crew here. <laughs> Oh, Sebastian, dear, oh dear, it's not a day for the French here. No. Except for Ivan Muller, who Except for Ivan Muller. Uh, comes from uh, the Alsace, so he's only just French. And, uh, of course, fantastic season, Ivan Muller, this year in uh, the Seat Touring Car with diesel power, incidentally. And, as you said earlier, well, it's not over yet. No. 0.8 of a second. Sebastian That's can't, surprise, can't actually. afford to touch the barrier again, otherwise he will get a five-second penalty. Now, the car won't be damaged. Those red and white walls are, are pretty soft at the end of the day. So the car won't be damaged as far as Sebastian is concerned. But he did have a drive in that Le Mans car, the Peugeot, the other day with the, the, the regular driver, and he was only a second off the pace. Do not yeah. forget, Sebastian finished second at Le Mans a couple of years ago. He is a very, very versatile motor racing driver. Yeah, that was driving for Pescarella. I was there, Toby. He did an absolutely phenomenal job there. And he's playing catch-up here after that incident, but not uh, over. it's not over. You don't become a five-time world champion by giving up, do you? Especially on all the the muck and bullets and the dirt of the World Rally Championship and the, the hot tarmac and such like the checkered flag is ready. Oh, this is going to be a close one. Oh, this is going to be tremendously close. And Loeb gets it back. That, wow. That is a magnificent performance. What, what a fight back. I did. When I saw him, when I saw him in the fence, I thought he's history. He's going for an early bath. But that wasn't the case. Well, the sensations <laughs> keep coming here at Wembley as we take a quick break. Welcome back. Extraordinary scenes here, Toby. 
Just take us through that. Well, I've never seen a race won by somebody hitting the barrier but, but going underneath it. Sebastian looks across, almost <laughs> apologises to his passenger, Sebastian Loeb, with bits falling off. There's the wing mirror falling but off the KTM crossbow. And Toby. he's still fought back to be victorious. He lost so much momentum. I don't know how he made up that time. I really don't. But we do not stand still here at Wembley. We've got the next race up and coming, and we're last on the one. grid. Yeah, last this is this the group. last one. This is Sebastian Vettel against the three-time world superbike champion, Troy Bayliss from Australia. Bayliss on the outside with the white top to the windscreen in the black buggy. It's got a Honda Fireblade engine in this. Troy Bayliss did ride a Honda once in MotoGP, but it was Ducati with whom he made his name by being victorious those three times yeah. in World Superbike. And of course now in retirement, going back to Australia to put up his feet. But before he does that, he's going to give it his all at Wembley here. And let's see what he can do against Vettel, who we know is so quick around this course. Yeah, Troy was getting some hints from the other drivers, seeing how he could chuck the bike in the car. I've said it, haven't <laughs> I? The bike, the car in. Does he got a bike engine? Exactly. Does he try and left foot brake? And he said, well, I haven't been used to left foot braking. I said, well, don't you do it on the bike? Because sometimes they do that, yeah. Andrew, on a bike yeah. to settle the front. He said, yeah. no, I just muscle it. A true Aussie grit rider is Troy Bayliss on a superstar. Oh, oh, big slide in the background for Sebastian Vettel. That will have lost him precious time. And you can't afford to lose even, even fractions of a second round this Wembley course. Well, this will be a cliffhanger, I think, to the very finish. Let's see what happens. There goes Sebastian in the blue car, just about to go over the bridge. Troy Bayliss coming back into the left-hander. Sebastian Vettel, uh, Toro Rosso, Formula One driver, victorious at the Italian Grand Prix, the underwater Grand Prix back in September <laughs> from pole position as we start the last lap. The chequered flag is being unfurled by the marshal here at Wembley Stadium. There you see Sebastian with the white crash helmet. He seems to have got the good style there with the Honda Fireblade engine buggy. Yeah. Oh, I tell you what, Troy Bayliss has got an awful lot of work to do here. Too much, Wembley. too much. And this one is going to be Vettel's. And I can see a second German going through. I can see these two well, as he takes the flag. I can see Vettel up against Michael Schumacher in the final of this, you know. Well, we started with 20 world champions out of our 16 drivers and eight Le Mans victories. And there he goes, Sebastian Vettel. So the quarterfinal lineup has been confirmed, and uh, here is how things are going to stand going into the next round of the Race of Champions when we come back after the break. This is how things look at the moment. The quarterfinal lineup with Michael Schumacher, who had a bad start. He came back from that. He'll be taking on Carl Edwards, the former NASCAR champion. Tanner Faust, the drift champion, will take on David Coulthard. Recently retired now, but uh, looking to go out with a bang here. Andy Prio, the three-time world touring car champion, takes on the twice DTM champion, Matthias Ekstrom, a winner here in 06 and 07. Sebastian Loeb, the five-time world rally champion for him, it's Formula One's Sebastian Vettel. When we come back, it's the quarterfinals from the Race of Champions, live from Wembley Stadium. Welcome back to Wembley to the Race of Champions 2008. We have our quarter-final lineup, and it looks like this. Schumacher will go head-to-head -head with Edwards. It's Faust, Coulthard, Prio, Ekstrom, and Loeb will face off against Sebastian Vettel. So Andy Prio, the three-time world touring car champion, is through to the next stage. He's been catching up with Amanda behind the scenes. Now, Andy, I'm not just dressed like this for the fun of it. I'm going to be sitting in with Matthias Ekstrom in the run with you in the semi-finals. You semi -finals. traitor. You traitor. <laughs> now, tell me, am I going to put him off or am I going to cheer him on? What do you reckon? Um, listen, he's a really good driver, so the only way I can beat him is if we cheat. Okay. All right, so you've got to press as a button in the centre console here. Just press it, all right, for me, just, just down by the gear lever and uh, that will just knock off the turbo and everything, so then I've got a chance. Now listen, you guys have been going around here for you know, the last couple of days, you know what to expect. I've had a little look, it looks really exciting, but what are the, what are the things that are really going to impress me as a passenger? Um, to be honest, we don't know what the heck's going on. 
we simply see you as ballast, so you won't be <laughs> impressed. Um, I, I mean, we, we, I think you'll get excited over the jump because it feels, I went in with Troy Bayliss yesterday as a passenger and I thought there's no way I'd be that late on the brakes and guys oh, really close to the wall there so you're brave to go in I think uh, you're going to feel quite close to the wall a few times and uh, the jump is good fun and it's going to be slightly out of control probably as well which is always you know more fun well I hope it's fair and no. make the best man win absolutely not that button okay <laughs> deal <laughs> Andy Prio said he was going to be a crowd pleaser at this event and it looks like uh, he might well be uh, exactly that. Three time world touring car champion but he's bowed out last year to Matthias Ekstrom. What can he do this year to reverse that? Press the ejector button, that's other what she's going to do. Other than press the ejector <laughs> Get him button, out. Tony Jardine. Get him out. Though he's got to drive out of his skin, he really has, because Ekstrom is a specialist. He's a specialist between the walls, he's a specialist at the different disciplines of motorsport. And he's got to concentrate like crazy, really has, not have any distractions. And he's got to give it that little bit extra, a couple of tents here and there, but he's going to have to take some risks. Amanda is going to jump in the passenger seat with uh, Matthias Ekstrom uh, next to her, but before she uh, does that, she's been catching up with Carl Edwards. Now, Carl, that was great. You managed to work out that thing in yeah. the middle. <laughs> that gear stick thing. Yeah, the, uh, oh, the, it was real simple. I left it in second gear. It made it for a lot easier when I used both hands to steer. So, very fun. We're going to watch this run. I got to run against some guy named Michael Schumacher next run. So, I got I to gotta go see how he does. And who is he? I don't know. They say he's good, though. Really? Yeah. Don't believe what you hear. <laughs> go for it. <laughs> Thanks. We got to run. Sorry. He's only the uh, seven time. Formula One world champion, no mean feat. He had a bad start though, Michael Schumacher. He was lucky to come back in that first race. I think he was caught slightly off aware as he was looking elsewhere and suddenly realised that we're gone. At the same time, Tom Christensen had an electric start. But again, Michael caught up. But I don't think anything could quite equal the comeback kid with Sebastian Loeb. That, that was absolutely amazing. How did he get out of prison in that one? And his passenger <laughs> took complete plastic barriers in the face and was thinking, whoa, what's going on here? Blimey. So uh, for Michael Schumacher, it's Carl Edwards. What about uh, David Coulthard? He has to go head to head with the drift champion, Tanner Faust. David Coulthard, so round through to round two, up against Tanner Faust, and I believe with the Expo. Do you think that offers him a little bit of an advantage with his background? Yeah, I think so. Uh, you know, he's obviously got a lot of, uh, lot of experience in, in uh, sliding these cars and, and controlling it. So uh, I shunted the Expo earlier, so that's not a good sign either. But you're going well so far. I mean, you've been here many times before, but uh, you're always very relaxed and you seem to enjoy the event. The event. Yeah, well, not to say that I don't take it seriously, because of course I try and do the best I can when I'm in the car. But uh, you know, for me, it's more about the social, getting together with all these drivers and riders from other formulas, and enjoying a less serious event than what we'd normally be doing. So. You know, the, the, the camaraderie is the thing which maybe you're not quite seeing here, but certainly in the, the driver's room there, it's great fun, a lot, of, uh, a lot of banter and quite unique. But when you're on the track, it's all serious business. Well, best of luck for round two. Thank you very much. David Coulthard's encounter with Tanner Faust uh, shortly, but first, before that, Michael Schumacher goes head-to-head -head with Carl Edwards. Schumacher putting out uh, Tom Christensen. What's he doing? He's reversing. He's not coming out at all. You know why? He wants to have another little run-up. He wants to just try and hit, put a bit more heat into those tyres, a bit more heat into those brakes. See, it's all about it's, the strategy. Michael Schumacher going for a back-to-back -back victories and a double victory as well here at the Race of Champions 2008 live from Wembley. Let's hand you back to our commentators. What a great display there of Schumacher tactics and Schumacher just thinking about what is required. Just getting that little bit of extra temperature into his tyres and it could of course make the difference. It's so nip and tuck round here against Carl Edwards of course, totally different discipline for him. I have to say I think that Schumacher should be the favourite to win this but uh, Carl Edwards is a great racer of course from NASCAR and this is the fascination of the race of champions Toby. Where else would you see drivers like this against each other? Uh, only here at Wembley Stadium is the answer to that. Oh, Michael seemed to have missed a gear there between the first left-hander and then the right-hander. He seemed to slow. I think Michael may have stuttered momentarily. Michael Schumacher, German flag, the red stripe over the top of the Fiat Cinquecento, but it's a 1.4-litre turbocharged engine underneath the bonnet. It used to be in the back, it's now in the front, <laughs> of course, and 200 horsepower makes this an absolute pocket rocket. That's right, a pocket rocket, Schumacher. Certainly flying here, but can he do it all to get ahead of Carl Edwards? 
Carl Edwards has been coming up through the ranks very quickly in NASCAR over the last four or five seasons. A real personality we saw earlier on. The marketing men like him. The man with the back flip. And here we are. We'll check out those split times. Well, Carl Edwards leads Carl over Edwards. the line on a 102.3. Oh, yeah. Difference of 1.44 seconds. Uh, well, as Edwards goes around the outside, there he is. This this is big. We didn't expect this, did we? We thought that Schumacher would go through this round and absolutely annihilate Carl Edwards, and that's not happening. Edwards oh. has really picked up the gauntlet here, and what can he do? Well, Schumacher has got to fight back. I think that Edwards, although he may be Mr. Comedy down there in the in behind the scenes, he's taking this extremely seriously indeed. One of the things that he told me yesterday during the build-up. He said, hey boy, he said, I'm used to running close to the walls. Close to the wall, and he's also used to winning one eight of those NASCAR Cup races this past season. Just missed out this on is the gonna championship. Be, this, this is, is going to be it. Edwards, I reckon. This is going to be Edwards. Edwards oh. into the left-hander, and Edwards yes. is going to put out Michael Schumacher, and Carl Edwards is victorious in Wembley. Schumacher deposed. We did not expect that. We saw a fight back earlier from Sebastian Loeb, who never makes mistakes on World yeah. Rally Championship <laughs> events, and now we've had another upset. Another upset, and Schumi is down, and he is out. Unbelievable. Well, uh, if we were betting men, Andrew, we would uh, be uh, scrounging around for money. Well, you know, I thought it was going to be the final. It was going to be Vettel versus Schumacher, the two Germans together. How wrong I was. And, uh, well, Carl Edwards just was very smooth. I mean, Schumi, we talked about earlier, was smooth, but so was Carl Edwards there. And, uh, well, that is a turn-up for the books. For me... Michael seemed to miss a gear or something yeah. out of the first left-hander. We might not have caught it on screen, but looking out of our massive commentary box window here, I just think he it just stuttered. The car didn't seem to accelerate, and then it seemed to bark back into life, but the time had already gone. Right then, next up, we have got Tanner Faust coming towards us with the KTM Orange KTM Expo against David Coulthard in the black and white one. Americans in the ascendant and David Coulthard is going to race round here and he's going to go past his red ball which is sitting out there in the centre in a very special colour scheme. It's the same colour scheme that David Coulthard used at the final Formula One race of the year and David Coulthard gets an electrifying start yeah. off the line. He's got the advantage already over Tanner Faust who goes deep and wide and he's trying to get traction back as he goes into the infield for the first of four laps here at Wembley. Remember, you've got to win to go through. If you're second, you're out. Yep, and DC certainly be enjoying this. He says he likes the social side as much as the racing, but of course, uh, when that lights turn to green, then the red mist come up, and DC absolutely will go for it. Tony said it earlier, he's been a great ambassador for the sport. Just hung the tail out there, though, and uh, not that neat to uh, David Coulthard. Well, I drove one of these cars at Silverstone in the summer, and they are a two-litre four-cylinder Audi engine block, but with a turbocharger. There is a bit of lag that always is with a turbocharged petrol engine, but it can kick in and it can snap and bite you. But these are the world's best drivers. Over the line. Here's the times. 59.4. That's a good time. Faust, a 1.7. Big difference. 2.3 seconds, essentially. So the film stuntman, the uh, TV star... David kisses the inside of the bridge. <laughs> I wonder if we get a yellow card for that. We haven't seen the yellow cards actually displayed, have we? But uh, this is getting, looking very good for DC. Very good indeed. Very good indeed. Last lap just about to start. If it was in America, they'd get the white flag now as <laughs> they start the last lap. David looking hot favourite for this one. He's actually lost his flag. He's flown off the top of the roll hoop. Well, he was saying that he was losing a bit of sleep as a new father, but it certainly hasn't affected him here. And uh, David Coulthard, we think, is heading towards a yep. famous victory in this semi-final. And it'll be Coulthard going through. Schumacher is already out. Oh, oh meanwhile, we've got a spin. Faust spins it on the penultimate corner. He that was tried, a stunt then. <laughs> he tried so hard, and now he's going to spin oh. it back the other way. Well, Faust did nothing else to lose except give it a big boot full of gas, and now he's going to do really what he's best at, which is drifting. drifting. He's the reigning champion. There he is. But he also rallies a Subaru in the States on that film and TV work. 
but he is out of the race of champions. David Coulthard going through. He'll be going up against Carl Edwards next time in the semi-final. So our own Amanda Stretton is going to be alongside Matthias Ekstrom. And there is Amanda. And, yeah. The wonderful smile of Amanda Stretton. Look at those teeth. <laughs> Dazzling us. Well, she's no stranger to cars. Her father, no. so influential with cars, with classic cars, with pre-war Grand Prix cars, Terry. And now, of course, even this year, yeah. Amanda driving at Le Mans. Yeah, she did. She didn't go very far, it has to be said, but a, a brave effort. And a good driver, Amanda Stretton. But here she's just along for the ride. And... Uh, I think she's going to enjoy this and I'm sure she's just going to sit back. I don't think she's got a microphone with her Toby, but afterwards I'm sure we're going to get the uh, full SP on the whole thing. Well, Andy said, well, maybe Amanda, you could touch the buttons and kill the engine. I rather thought that she would flutter her eyelids and distract Matthias. Yes, I think that would be a better bet, actually. Absolutely. <laughs> better reaction when she finished, absolutely. <laughs> Right then, let's He's, just uh, check. Andy Prio with the red-topped Ford yep. Focus, Andrew, on the white-topped Ford Focus. That is the reigning Race of Champions champion from Sweden, Matthias Ekstrom. And they're off immediately. Prio on the inside, Prio sideways, Ekstrom round the outside. Yeah, it's always very difficult to start because one driver, of course, on the inside lane has to take a much tighter line and uh, slow down much more. And then, of course, it all unfolds as we go through these two one-kilometre laps. It looks like four laps. It's actually only two. But it is a race against the millisecond here. And who do you think is heading at the moment? Well, right even, here? Stevens, you have to say that the advantage before the race, before they got in the Ford Focus, has got to be with Extra. He's so versatile in, with Skodas on Rally Sweden, on the yep. ice, on the slippery stuff, with the DTM car. And, uh, yeah, the teeth are chattering down there with Amanda Stretton in the co-driver's seat. She can barely probably see over the dashboard because the co-driver is slung so lowly. And look, look how that. close it is. A tenth of a second between them. Amanda ooing and ahhing. Look at the whites of her eyes. Yeah, but Prio doing a great job, you know, to keep up with Extra here. Andy Prio does enjoy this race of champions. He has had quite a lot of success, but it would be a major accolade to uh, beat Matthias Ekstrom. And Sparks, Sparks coming from the car. And Ekstrom third in the DTM this year, but uh, very much a man. And quite man out of the track, but he grows horns when he gets into a race car. Viking horns, what else would he grow, Andrew? Well, Andy Prio's got a lot of work to do. Andy Prio on the infield. The chequered flag unfurled, and actually this could be pretty close as Ekstrom got the flyer as he goes over the bridge. Now Andy's got uh, the inside line. Come on, Andy! Come on! As he's going to beat Matthias Ekstrom! Yes! Andy Prio wins ahead of Matthias <laughs> Ekstrom. Oh, that's fantastic! And Toby Mooney is just about to have a heart attack. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy oh, for Andy. He's out of the car. He's driving it. And Ekstrom is not going to make it three years in a row. The third upset of the evening, Andrew. Loeb from going look at, to look the Look at Jason Button, he loves it. Uh, the third upset of the evening after Sebastian Loeb and, of course, Michael Schumacher being put out by Carl Edwards. This is brilliant. Oh, Andy, I'm so pleased for him. Well, Amanda, Amanda must have distracted Matthias. Maybe she did. <laughs> Let's, uh... <laughs> We, well, I hope nobody's going to cry foul here at Wembley. Certainly not, certainly not. What a result. Yep. Now then, Amanda, let's Is hear. she going to interview herself? That's <laughs> <laughs> so cool. <laughs> so how was, how was? That was amazing. You just cannot get over the car control <laughs> and just how precise they are. She's going to, I think she's going to get to a word out of Prio as well. Matthias, I've got to say, fantastic job there, and I don't know whether to apologise for having got you out of the race of champions. No, I think it was uh, simply up to Andy. It was quick. Eh? The car was feeling good. I was a little conservative on my first run, and yeah, on the second lap, I gained a bit, but it wasn't enough. Well, listen, I think you did an absolutely spectacular job anyway. Beautiful.
real honor to drive with you. Thank you very much. Andy! Did you press the button? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I pressed the button. Andy, you must be delighted to be through. Well done. Oh, yeah, I'm really pleased. I mean, he's a really hard guy to beat. So, uh, no, I'm really happy that makes up for a really bad year for me. So, uh, excellent. Listen, great stuff. Thanks, Andy. Thanks, man. Well, Amanda right down there with the two guys we just saw in the previous race, but now we've got two Sebastians. I just have to say about my excitement of Andy Prio, when he started hill climbing in the UK, he was the guy who used to drive me back from the pub. So we oh, go back a long well. way, that's why. <laughs> You'll be pleased, that's why you were almost having a heart attack. But uh, we're already on it with uh, the two Sebastians, Loeb and uh, Vettel. And we know that uh, Loeb is quick, how he got into this particular race, I don't know after that incident. But he's keeping this uh, on the straight and narrow. No, well, not exactly the straight and narrow, but you know what I mean, Toby. Absolutely. Well, Sebastian Loeb is now on the outside in the predominantly dark metallic blue RX150 buggy, 150 horsepower. Uh, you know, same kind of horsepower as a GTI, a hot hatch from about five or six years ago. But these things weigh about a third of the weight. There's Sebastian Lowe, victorious for the first time on Rally Great Britain last weekend in Cardiff. Yeah, one of the last major events he hadn't won, made it his fifth world championship in a row. Unprecedented, but what can he do here? The two top Frenchmen against each other. A Frenchman versus the German, sorry. Two Sebs, you mean? Yeah, two Sebs against each yeah, other. Yeah, and, and of course, Andrew, a perfect example about schooling of motor racing and rally drivers. The French Federation paying for Sebastian yes. Loeb to come through the ranks. I was on San Remo in 2000, and this unmarked white Toyota Corolla blasted past, and I probably swore and said, my goodness me, he's rather fast. And of course, he went on to be a world champion. And Sebastian Vettel winning Formula BMW and coming through to now be in Formula One. Right then, halfway point being crossed now here at Wembley Stadium. So two absolutely top professionals here from two very different disciplines going head to head around this phenomenal course at Wembley. How they fit it in here I don't know. How they build it so quickly I don't know. And how they take it to pieces again is uh, just a mystery to me but it does make an absolutely wonderful arena. Checkered flag being waved, checkered flag being waved, and the red top is Sebastian Loeb going through. Good Sebastian time, yeah. Loeb, the rally world champion, beating Sebastian Vettel. So both the Germans out of this, and uh, well, we've got some very interesting pairings going through, and certainly not the pairings that we expected. Shock lineup then for the uh, semi finals of the Race of Champions 2008. Here is how it looks so far. It'll be Carl Edwards, the former NASCAR champion, who takes on David Coulthard. And in the other semi final, Andy Prio, the three time world touring car champion, who'll face the five time world rally champion, Sebastian Lowe. This Christmas, indulge yourself with seasonal cheer on Sky Sports. What a goal! The brightest stars from Sky One. Enjoy Christmas with a twist on Sky Arts. Yes, sir. I want some more. Or escape to magical worlds with Sky Movies. Expect the unexpected from the 2008 Race of Champions. The draw looks like this. Now into the semi-finals is Carl Edwards, the former NASCAR champion who put out the seven-time Formula One world champion Michael Schumacher in the quarters. He'll go head-to-head -head with David Coulthard. For Andy Prio, the three-time world touring car champion, he eventually got the better of Matthias Ekstrom, who put him out last year. So in the semi-finals, he'll face Sebastian Loeb, the five-times world rally champion. I'm joined here by David Coulthard and Tanner Found. David, you just took that victory and you're mm. going through the next round. Everything's looking good so far? Yeah, all it's doing is delaying my chance to get back to the hotel and get in the bar. But um, no, that was, uh, I think, so many different cars here and it depends on what individual driver feels better in each of those cars. So, so far I've only driven the ones that I feel not too bad in and I haven't driven the buggies today. 
in any of the races and I think once we get into the buggies I'm going to struggle. It's funny every driver we seem to speak to that goes out seems to, to see the positive that they can get straight to the bar. <laughs> Tanner, it was a close one but a, a little bit of an incident in second to last corner. Yeah, it was, it was pretty close. Uh, I knew that David had it though and I spun in the uh, second to the last corner. Hey, I maybe could have saved it, but I was thinking, ah, you know, I'll uh, put up some tire smoke if I can't win. Thank you very much. And get yourself to the bar and enjoy the rest of the evening. Yeah, I'm straight to the bar. That's true. Thanks. Right, I'm now joined by Sebastian Loeb. Sebastian, Hello. now you just beat Sebastian Vettel, to, who was in the final last year. Do you think you're going to make it through right the way to the end? Difficult to know. It's so close here. Yeah, some drivers are so, so close from the limit all the time that a little mistake and you can lose everything so we'll see now you rally guys seem to seem to have a bit of an advantage here uh when you see my first corner with the KTM, i think uh, was it was not it. so nice okay okay i take it all back <laughs> then anyway good luck <laughs> thank you Sebastian Loeb certainly didn't have the best of Race of Nations experience here a little earlier in the afternoon. Can he make up for that in the Race of Champions? Well, he is through to the semi-finals, so quite possibly he can. And uh, as Amanda was saying there, rally drivers really do have an advantage here. Well, yeah and no, because they adapt. All racing drivers and competition drivers adapt. And uh, some of them have got their favourite cars or whatever, but it's the competition, it's the adrenaline. They know how to take a machine right to its absolute limits. I mean, Sebastian Loeb is a favourite of mine because he's an all-rounder. You know, he's tested a Formula One car uh, this winter in the Red Bull. He was eighth quickest amongst all the Formula One drivers. That's unbelievable performance. He stepped into a Le Mans car. You know, he, he, he raced the Pescarello. He's probably going to race the Peugeot in the next couple of years at Le Mans. So, on. so he is one of those great all-round drivers. I think where the rally drivers have a slight advantage is they do drive over lots of different surfaces. They do tarmac rallies, they do, they do ice, they do snow, they do gravel. And the racing drivers don't do so much of that. But um, it's still an equal playing field out there. When you look at the semi-finals on there, and you look at Andy against Loeb, and then DC against Carl Edwards. I mean, Carl Edwards driving a tiny little car like that when he's used to a big NASCAR car. So um, it's all to play for. Well, Carl Edwards uh, gearing up at the moment, uh, out there just uh, ready to make his uh, exit from uh, behind the pits. And uh, he's going to go head to head with David Coulthard. Earlier on, though, he put out Michael Schumacher. Well, Michael, it's been quite an afternoon. You managed to win the Nations Cup, but you haven't managed to win the Race of Champions. Talk us through your afternoon in the Race of Champions. Yeah, it was uh, rather short, uh, as basically last year. Any, any car that is with closed wheels uh, sort of doesn't suit me. But I can't get on with this one. Uh, the Carl was uh, simply better, so you have to respect this. Well done to him, and we'll see what the rest of the show will bring. Who do you think will win it now? I, I don't actually know who is inside, who is not inside. We'll see. I, I just go and watch it now. Thanks for coming over again. Thank you. Michael Schumacher just explaining why he's uh, bowed out early of this particular uh, championship. He has a problem when he can't see the wheels. He has admitted to that. He did have that problem last year. And if you looked earlier in the competition when he was in the KTM crossbow, the reason he was sticking his head out the side all the while was he could see down to the apex, he could see down where the curbs are. He's used to Formula One with the wheels going up and down in front of him so he can be very, very precise. And this is something that I know that upset him, that tiny little fear. He couldn't, even though it's that small, he can't see what's going on. He wasn't comfortable, and if a driver isn't comfortable, you're going to lose, as he did there to Carl Edwards. And Carl Edwards was used to his big NASCAR four, which is about 39 <laughs> feet long, and he must be getting into this little postage stamp, thinking, what is this? Postman Pat's car or something. <laughs> what about uh, Andy Prio's performance over the course of uh, today? Because how much would that victory against Matthias Ekstrom have given him the motivation to really turn on the style here? Well, you asked me just before that. He's got to go that little bit extra, hasn't he? He's got to just push that little bit harder and he did you know, the funny thing was he wasn't all hunched up like that he looked a little bit more relaxed he was going with the flow and he got together with the uh, with the uh, Ford with the world rally car the focus and he got a good start Now I know he was worried about that with all the electronics getting it off the line but he did and a superb I feel for him now after his lousy season in WTCC yeah. he's done well Let's see if he can go one stage further and uh, really end the year with a bang. Semi-final lineup: Carl Edwards up against David Coulthard. Andy Prio faces Sebastian Loeb. Over to our uh, commentary team of Toby Moody and Andy Marritt. We started with 16 and now we're down to four from four different motorsport disciplines. 
And coming up next, Toby, is going to be a very interesting battle. David Coulthard now retired against Carl Edwards. There is Carl in the blue and yellow crash helmet. And he has really got into the swing of this. And this one will be close to call. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's even more impressive the fact that Carl Edwards has probably never even heard of a KTM crossbow <laughs> and in the Deep South in the greatest of respect. No. Whereas other drivers, such as Matthias Ekstrom, who even on his own personal website admitted that he had been testing the KTM crossbow yep. in Sweden earlier this week. And I don't think he's heard of Postman Pat either, for that <laughs> certainly matter. Certainly not. They certainly don't make cars <laughs> as small as the Abarth in America. No, they certainly don't. And maybe they should. <laughs> Well, here we have it, but here we got Coulthard versus Edwards. David Coulthard, veteran of all those Grand Prix. Carl Edwards, one of the great stars of NASCAR. Red light under starter's orders, and we're go here. Not a good start for Edwards as he shifts up through the H pattern box. Edwards on the inside through that very slippery left-hander. David Coulthard rocketing underneath our commentary position as he goes underneath the bridge. Carl Edwards from NASCAR, David Coulthard from Formula One. This is the first of our semi-finals. And we could have an all-British final, of course, and uh, David Coulthard is hoping that that's going to be the case, and he's doing his best to make that happen. Carl Edwards at least will be used to the H-Box uh, gearbox shift. Yep, yep, few too many gears for him, I suppose in this KTM, the KTM that's been specifically designed by Gerald Kiska uh, in uh, just outside Salzburg. The car is built in Graz in, in the east of, of Austria and it's a real track day thriller and it's fantastic fun out on the open road. David Coulthard on the oh! road, smoke pouring off the tyres underneath the carbon fibre chassis. Big save from uh, David Coulthard, had the full opposite lock on but look at his time. He's under the minute in the expo here, crossbow. David Coulthard really chucking it about. He must have a little bit of heat into the front tires. Look at his eyes, wide open, as big as dinner plates through that semi-clear visor. Now we've got an absolute on-board shot from over his left shoulder. David Coulthard, last Grand Prix in Brazil a few weeks ago, got punted off at the first quarter. What a sad end to his Formula One career. We're all urging him on to have a good result, but he's got a chance to get into the final here in the race of champion. DC is heading into the final. I'm sure he's got quite a heavy passenger by the look of him, the guy's helmet sticking up high, look, and his head flopping around with the G-forces. But DC has got a neck of steel, and he's got nerves of steel too. And he is heading towards the Chetto flag and a place in the final. And oh, here no! comes oh, David, what have you done? What have you done? And he's still going to win it. Oh, my goodness me. This race of champions brings sensation again. Oh, well, only in the last race, a couple of races ago, we saw Andy Prio knock out the two-time reigning champion of champions. David Coulthard leading that race and went bang into the concrete barrier on the very last corner. And now he's stalled it. Oh, the, it's an evening full of laughs here. He's given up, he's going to get out. But the main thing, Andrew, he's in the final. He's in the final. I think probably what happened is he'd actually broken something. And so when he got to go out uh, down the tunnel, um, then uh, yeah, there he is, he locked up there. He was really trying so hard. Well, didn't really clip the kerb coming out of there. A little bit of gravel flying around and the uh, salt tire flapping behind the pair of them. But this is the vital moment where DC lost it. Just clipped the kerb. Did it unnerve the car a bit? Now there's Edwards oh, no. on the replay. Yeah. There's David banging. Oh, look, yes, Yeah, look. broken the track. Look at that. He crossed the line with the front wheel all locked up. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Three were, wheels on my wagon. Those KTM mechanics Woo. have got a bit of work to do. Oh, the Austrians have been more than busy <laughs> here at Wembley. Uh, Jensen Button had a big crash uh, yesterday in practice, and one of the Red Bull racing mechanics from Milton Keynes has a wry smile on his face. <laughs> oh, David, David, David. But it doesn't matter. You're through. Wow. I can't believe the surprises that we're having here this evening. Now the question is, Andrew, will it be Andy Prio or Sebastian Loeb going into that final against David Coulthard? I'll tell you a secret. You only want one person to win this. <laughs> and who do you want to win? I prefer Andy to win it, of course. <laughs> but 
but nevertheless, um, we're going to see what happens. So let's just check into the studio for a moment. Why not? Why not get a Tony Jardine's thoughts on what we just saw there? DC still managing to pull off a win despite smashing the car into the wall and in fact breaking it too. Well, it brings a whole new meaning to crash and win, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Smash and grab. But, but the one thing that happened yesterday, we looked at uh, a similar accident to Jensen Button. I went over to the KTM garage to have a look and it broke the steering rod exactly the same way as it was broken on David's and he had no steering. But luckily for him, he was so close. Look at that. He, he was already going too quick because he came over the top of the, the jump. He had big, quite big air, so he was trying to reduce a bit of speed, but he had no steering whatsoever, so he managed to drag the thing out and just get a straight line. He only had a few metres to go to the finish line. So he was jammy as anything there, but even so, he deserved it. He, he made a fabulous start. He pushed hard during the first couple of laps, and he, you know, he really absolutely uh, crushed the opposition. Andy Prio uh, gearing up for his semi-final showdown with Sebastian Loeb. This could be a real showdown. Let's get it back to our uh, commentary team, Andy and Toby. Yeah, and it's going to be Andy and Seb in this particular race. Andy Prio, and they're back in the little uh, pocket rocket here, these A-bars. We know that these are quite tricky, Toby, to drive around here. They certainly are. Well, a thumbs up from Andy Prio with the red stripe on top of his Fiat. His mum and dad, Judy and Graham, are back home in Guernsey. Wife Jo, I believe she's here this evening with young Seb and Daniela watching dad trying at a place in the final at this race of champions for 2008. We're under guard away and Andy's got an immediate advantage ahead of Sebastian Loeb who takes an ultra tight line around the first left-hander. Yeah, it was green for go and we think Prio got the uh, better jump there but it's pretty close and uh, this is going to be nip and tuck all the way and uh, Sebastian Loeb as Tony said fantastic competitor as a racing driver yet alone the five world rally titles that he's uh, picked up and he coming through the final corner past the point where David Coulthard brushed and hit the outside wall and he's now got the quick line around the right hander here is Sebastian Loeb soaring away at the wheel not four wheel drive just two wheel drive but a lot of horsepower 200 horsepower going through those tiny little almost 15 inch wheels just like a mini Andrew more, more your days in rally oh thanks very much yes um, I think here that it is going to be very close we're going to get a split in a second and we're going to see a lot of these little cars rallying next year it's Whoa, look at that. Andy Very goes close. wide. Andy goes Very close wide. here. Locked up on the brakes, I rather thought. There is Andy with the red stripe across the top of the Fiat. And a red mist in front of his helmet, I should think. As uh, he's trying very hard. The crowd really getting behind Andy Prio here. Who can join David Coulthard in the final? Will it be an all British final, Toby? We now will then. find out in seconds time. Sebastian leads over the line. We start the last lap here at Wembley Stadium for 2008. Oh. But Seb has a big slide. He handbrakes it into the left-hander over the oil from a, a, a blow-up this morning during practice. And Andy's deep and late on the brakes. Ultra concentration will be going on with Andy Prio. Oh, what, this could be close. Uh, what about Seb over the bridge here? Flies over the bridge, hard on the brakes. And this is going to be close. This is going to be oh so close. But it's looking Looking good. Sebastian Loeb. Oh, Loeb. Loeb goes to the final of the race of champions. Andy Prio so close and yet so far. He gave it his best. But well, with uh, eight world yeah. championships out there, yeah. somebody had to lose. Yeah, and nobody made a mistake in that really. Just tiny little errors, but no big mistakes. And well, we're heading towards the uh, final now. And it's going to be it's going to be the World Rally Champion against the retired Formula One ace. Despite the cold in the stadium, things are certainly heating up. It's David Coulthard against Sebastian Loeb in the final of the Race of Champions. That's next. Welcome back to the Race of Champions. Into the Super Final goes David Coulthard despite a late smash into the wall and breaking two cars. He's up against the Frenchman Sebastian Loeb. He's won here in 03 and 05. He is the five-time World Rally Champion. Lots to build up to. Let's take you down to the pits and join Amanda Stratton. Amanda. Well, David, David, I'm going to start on a high note. 
this is the best you've ever done in the race of champions, isn't it? It is, but I, I don't quite understand how I've managed to get this far because I've now crashed two KTMs. <laughs> And I even crashed it once I came into the, uh, the pit lane entry because I had damaged the front suspension, so I had no steering. Uh, so I'm really embarrassed about that because a lovely bunch of guys from KTM and they've got a great vehicle, but uh, it just doesn't quite suit me today. But, uh, you know, we'll see if I'm in... Uh, is that me in the semis now? Or? I think that means you're in the finals. Oh, really? oh. Yeah, I Who think so. Racing? Well, we don't know yet. It's either going to be Andy or Sebastian. OK, cool. Well... That'd but you know what? I reckon if you just give them a, a check for, I don't know, 10 grand, I think that'll probably sort it out. You haven't seen the amount of damage. It's more than 10 grand. <laughs> David Coulthard almost embarrassed to be here. What about his opponent, Sebastian Loeb? Sebastian, through to the final, up against David Coulthard. What's the strategy for the race? I think it's not strategy when you fight against a driver like Coulthard. You have to go flat out and then we'll see. <laughs> of course, you've won the race of champions before. This could be, would it be your third victory in the race of champions if you defeat David in the final? Uh, uh, maybe yes, I think so. But uh, at the moment we have three, three, uh, three races to to go, and it will not be easy. Best of luck. It's not often, is it, Tony Jardine, that a driver makes the super final of the race of champions, having destroyed <laughs> two KTM crossbow cars on his way to it. I, you know, he's befuddled and bemused his RDC as to how he's got this far. He's even checking him out as I say, oh, I'm in the semi-final, final, all right, okay, fine, you know. But um, that's it, sometimes you get the luck, and I, as I said, he did push very, very hard. And I think the track is getting a little bit better. It was, it was awful this morning. There's a bit more rubber down, um, there's a little bit more grip in the places, but they've still got to be very, very careful. This is his uh, semi-final where he was racing the uh, former NASCAR champ, Carl Edwards, who put out Michael Schumacher. Just tell us how he managed to defeat him. Well, I mean, this is the thing. I thought, you know, Edwards would uh, be really neck and neck with DC, and I feared that DC might lose to Edwards. But right from the get-go, uh, David had a fantastic start. And as I say, I think he was pushing really hard in these early laps, as you can see. Pushing on, pushing on. But he was, at that point, being very, very precise as well. And using all the just hugging the wall on the outside and the start, finish straight. Look, a bit of full lock there as he was going in on understeering in. And you can still see the little bits where the cement dust was put down to, to put over on. And he clattered over the curbs on the inside there. But as I say, the cement dust was down to try and soak up that oil that was dropped before. And he was getting quite good air each time that he went over the jump. Oh, slight slide there, almost to kiss the wall. And you can hear the tortured tires and the screaming coming through. So this was David Coulthard at his best. David Coulthard really charging on with a bit between his teeth. Oh, did I see him hit the wall there? And there was, he had another mistake <laughs> that he got away with. Had he hit the wall again, of course, he would have had that five second penalty, which Toby has been uh, warning us about. And uh, fortunately for DC, it didn't happen. The worst is about to happen, of course. Uh, you know, when he when he hit the wall and then broke the car, and uh, but managed to get to the finish. Look at this. His head really leaning into the corner, using the curbs again. It's almost like a motorcycle rider. Quite appropriate, considering that he is in a KTM. And this is a very, very powerful, fearsome beast. It has awesome power, savage power. And on this tiny little track, which again, just, just, there we go. Going too far, too fast. Smashed the right front corner. He broke the steering rod and still, from the jaws of defeat, he carves out a victory and gets into the final. What would it mean to David Coulthard after the year he's had, his final year in F1, to be crowned champion of champions here? Uh, a lot. I mean, that really would be make up for what has been a very, very difficult year. At the end of 2004, when he was released from McLaren, then he had got four extra years with, with Red Bull, and that revived his career. The man who's uh, put this whole show together is a chap called uh, Frederick Johnson. He's speaking to Amanda at the moment. Amanda. Well, Frederick, you must be really happy with how things are going. And what a, a surprising final, really unexpected. Yeah, not a lot of people would have uh, imagined that David and, and Seb Love would go through to the final, except, exceptionally after Seb's big crash in the other heat. But, you know, Race of Champions is always full of surprises. And uh, what do you reckon? Who do you have your money on? I mean, it would be so nice if David could finish off his career winning the Race of Champions. That would be so fitting. But Sebastian Loeb won his fifth World Championship title this year. He's won the Race of Champions in the past. He's very, very fast. It's going to be very difficult for David. 
and it is I mean we're all we're, nobody can put there nobody can guess it's all just too close really that's what makes the race of champions so special when you put the world's best drivers in identical cars on a short track like this you know it's going to be down to hundreds of thousands of a, of a second between them very often a slight mistake will make the difference now in the final we go to best of three heats so you know you have to win two to, to win it so it, I would have to put my money on love but my heart is with David thanks a lot Frederick thank you if he put his money on Loeb in the last round, he would have been a wise man because he put out our very own Andy Prio. Just to tell us how he did this, Tony. Well, I think he did this because of his two-wheel drive experience at the start of his career. Look at Sebastian Loeb, who was a French gymnast, and he represented his country. Um, incredibly fit, but he decided to switch to racing and rallying, and in his early days, he was front-wheel drive specialist and he ran in a Citroen Saxo uh, in 1999. He won a lot of big rallies and caught the attention of Citroen, who took him on. And I think he used all those skills today to just nip past it. And he did a good job. And he did a fantastic job. We're building up to the super final of the race of champions to determine the champion of champions. Over to the commentators. And it is the best of three, but very quickly I'm going to take you through Loeb's record. 02 was a finalist, 03 was the winner, 04 a finalist, 05 a winner, 06 a finalist, 07 we didn't see him competing. But he is looking for his third win as they go, Toby. David caught him napping right from the word go there. David Coulthard on the infield at the moment with the black car. Sebastian Loeb, he's lost his flag already. The <laughs> tricolor has flown off at the first corner. Sebastian Loeb, white roof. And both of these have gone through after crashes. David, of course, a really big one. And uh, Loeb, of course, going through the barriers and lifting them over his car. So we've seen just sensation after sensation here. But this is the best of three in this champion of champions race. This is what it's been about for the last five hours or so. We've seen phenomenal action. But this one should be a real cracker. And there is Loeb working at the wheel. Wouldn't it be fitting for David Coulthard to be victorious at his last race of 2008 after that cruel luck at the Brazilian Grand Prix at Sao Paulo punted off at the first corner. We, his Wings for Life car is in front of us at the moment yeah. on the infield. And look at the times. Look at the time. Eight Hello. of yeah. a second between David them. can make that up. He can make that up and of course he will have a second chance. Oh, Sebastian is used to these kind of tyres. They're a smaller version of the BF Goodrich the, the is tyres that they have used in the World Rally Championship before, but a similar cut to the tyres that he has used this year with the Citroen. David, he'll be used though to the pure rear-wheel drive <laughs> machine. Yeah, and David, of course, didn't when he talked to Amanda Stretton, even realise he was in the final. It's extraordinary, but David will be trying absolutely everything here. There he is, great shots on board with David Coulthard. David Coulthard coming towards the camera through the chicane. Another coat of paint between the wheel and the outside let's of hope, the bridge. Let's hope he's going to keep it out of the wall this time, although he didn't matter too much last time. And it's going to be close. And look at this. They're coming towards a checkered flag. Oh, David's missed a gear. Oh, and oh, Sebastian's going to take the first of three. Yes, Sebastian Loeb for France. Already a winner for two years. 2003 it's looking good. 2005. But, yes. 03, 05. Could it be 08? Well, and of course, Sebastian, when he won his 2003 Race of Champions title, that was in Gran Canaria, yeah. an off-road course in a natural amphitheatre. Much bigger course. Much bigger course. And then in 2005, that was the first year at the Stade de France on the outskirts of Paris. Can I ask you, how do you think the courses compare this one here in the Stade de France? Two great big stadiums, impressive stadiums. Are more than impressive, yes. Uh, the, uh, I'll never forget walking into the Stade de France in 2005. My breath was taken away, the sheer enormity of it all. And when I came in here yesterday morning, my breath was further taken away because it is just, a, it's just so big and so tall. And well, with these gladiators, what a race we're going to see. Now, this is the second of three yeah. about coming up. Of course, this stadium costs £768 million to build. That's how much it costs. And uh, all around the perimeter is one kilometre round. If you walk all the way around the, uh, at the back of our commentary box and do a complete lap, it's a kilometre. Well, here we are. And, uh, well, he's uh, massacred one of these already, has David Coulthard.
And we might just get a quick interview, I think. Oliver Jarvis, the uh, Audi DTM driver, has been doing a sterling job on his debut as an interviewer. He's going to try and uh, get the mic in there. So they're getting ready. And, uh, well, this could be quite something, Toby. I'm not quite sure if David can uh, get back in. Let's David, find out. one nil down. You've got it all to do in, the fight, in this race. Absolutely, yeah. He was pretty awesome in the buggy, so... I don't have a great record at this expo, I've crashed it twice, but hopefully this time I can make the finish. You may have crashed it, but you looked fantastic in it, in it earlier, right on the limit, so you know, hopefully you can get one back and make it go all the way to a third heat. That's the goal, got to try and beat him here. Best of luck. Thank you. So that is the goal, let's hope it goes to the third and deciding heat, but uh, certainly there's a lot of work for David Coulthard to do. And, uh, well, wouldn't it be sensational if he could win this, having, of course, damaged the front of one of these in the earlier race, although he still, of course, went on to win. He's just trying to weave around, get a bit of temperature into the tyres. Yep, and wouldn't it be fitting if David Coulthard could win the race of champions? He may have started the day in the Nations Cup as part of the F1 Racing Great Britain team, but, of course, in years past, he was part of the Scottish team yep. with Colin McRae. Yeah. And he just picked up a tip from Shumi there, just backed up and trying to give, a, give it a little bit of a dose of heat into those rear tyres. And there is Sebastian Loeb. You need to get the heat into the tyres, you need to get it through the rubber, you need to get it into the carcass of the tyre. But I, I, I think on some of the super slow-mos that we saw earlier, Andrew, the, uh, the Austrian technicians have really let the air out of these tyres to try and get some front-end grip. Remember that the engine is behind the driver, it really is between the rear wheels, so there's not a lot of natural downforce, a lot of, uh, uh, of engineering mechanical downforce on the front, so you're naturally going to get a lot of understeer, hence you need to let the shadow out of the Interesting there, we saw Loeb really focused, he saw the TV camera, just waved at the TV camera, went back, his brain absolutely focused. DC looks a little bit more relaxed, didn't expect to be in this final, he's got it all to do now, on to Loeb, can DC equal it up and go to a third deciding heat we're going to find out in just a few seconds they are in the tunnel waiting to be called out it could be all over in three or four minutes or we may go a little longer let's if find I, out if i was david i'd roll back and do another burnout if i was him try and keep the heat in those rear tires as the stage is now set at wembley stadium my goodness me have we had some fights in including Frank Bruno and Tim Witherspoon in the past <laughs> with regards to boxing. But now we've got Sebastian Loeb with that brand new crash helmet. You can't quite see it from this camera angle, but he's got a big five now on the top of that crash helmet. David Coulthard with the familiar Scottish salt tyre, the blue and white cross. He comes to his starting position. Sebastian Loeb in the black car. David Coulthard in the white KTM crossbow. Two litre Audi turbocharged engine behind them. 240 horsepower as we're about to get underway. Andrew, David's got to win. And he's got 40,000 fans or so on his side and he makes a very good start. And DC is looking good here, but it's early days yet. And what about Sebastian Loeb? He's made a good start too. But DC, all that experience in Grand Prix, and he kill, he can still win this, but it's going to be tough. Sebastian Loeb, when we started with 16 drivers, made a massive mistake at the first corner, whilst we were trying to distil, distil <laughs> our 16 drivers down to these two, as we, oh, David locks up on the brakes, and he goes a little bit deep and wide, big handfuls of opposite lock from David Coulthard in a Formula One car. Of course, they never cross their arms. <laughs> no, he kept it out of the wall, though, and still keeps up that momentum. And in just a moment, we're going to find out what it is at the split, and that'll give us some idea. And uh, DC locking up again after the jump, and it is going to be close, that is for certain. And here is the split coming up, and it is close. And DC is looking oh. good. Oh, oh David. 
Our hearts are in our mouth here. I think I can hear the cheers from Scotland <laughs> already down here in Wembley. Now we're into the third of the four laps. David has got to win this one to go level with Sebastian's previous victory in the last race. Yeah, and it'll certainly give him a boost if he can do that and build his confidence for that uh, final runoff. Looking good. He's looking, looking good. fine. He's looking tremendous. Again, understeer through the tight left-hander where there was oil spilt this morning during practice. David Coulthard on behalf of Red Bull Racing of Milton Keynes. He's in an Austrian car. And now he's on the fastest bit of the circuit. He's going to go flying over that jump. And uh, Seb is on the tricky bit. Keep and David cool. is looking good. No, he's going to do this. He is going to do it. And David Coulthard is going to take it to a third and deciding run. And David Coulthard seems so surprised that he was in the final. Well, he has the speed. He's been lucky. He had that shunt. But David Coulthard is going to raise the roof here in Wembley. They've both been lucky. They've both made mistakes, but they've got away with them. They've slipped under the door with their <laughs> luck. I Sebastian like that. Loeb gets beaten by David Coulthard. They both had massive opposite lock moments. They had to take another handful of lock on the steering wheel. And my goodness me, and the perfect finale. And just think that David had crashed that car just a few moments ago, a few minutes ago. And what would that do to his confidence? But he got stuck in there and just sheer concentration, sheer driving brilliance has taken him into a final runoff. <laughs> Live pictures from in the depths of Wembley Stadium here. Now look at that walk. That's a walk of a man that is very, very focused. I think it's a stomp rather stomp, than a walk. Yeah. He's, got a, yeah. he's got a real stomp on. Well, David, how close can this get? Well, based on the first run, Sebastian was a lot quicker in this rock car than I was, and obviously I knew I had a bit of an advantage Sebastian, in the KTM. The so I've got to up my pace here, otherwise it isn't going to be good enough. Now, I mean, this, this, I, would, I would guess that this car is probably more suited to you, is that right? Well, I'd like to say that was the case, but it, it, you know, for me it's like a little mini rally car. So, you know, what is he, a five times consecutive world champion? But I'm uh, going to go for it. You've got thousands of people out there cheering for you, David. Let's hope you finish on a high. I'm going for it, so let's hope so. Okay, please, thank you. That Thank you. That would be a nice trophy to uh, add to all those uh, Grand Prix uh, Cups, wouldn't it? Um, yep. They're all back well, in I think it's a, I think his brain's gone up another gear now. He suddenly thought, I could win something that really means a lot. And uh, nobody expected me to do this. And he has certainly got the uh, racing concentration on now. But as he said, Seb Loeb's a difficult man to beat. Sebastian, this is it, the final final. How are you feeling in the rock car buggy? Oh, looks okay. <laughs> Sorry? How are you feeling in the buggy? Uh, it's difficult to drive the buggy. Uh, feeling is not easy, but uh, okay, the first loop I was faster than David with the buggy. Now he beat me with the KTM, so hopefully we can do it now. Uh, do it. What was the difference with the KTM that time? Sorry? What was the difference in the KTM? How did he beat you? Uh, it's completely different to drive. This one is sliding a lot, the other one has some grip and you have to with some good line, no slide, and I'm not feeling so confident in the KTM. Okay, yeah, good luck. Interesting comments there, Toby Moody. Well, we've had former race of champion champions, Kankanen, Stig Blomqvist, uh, Didier Oriol, Francois Delacour with those mad blue eyes, <laughs> Carlos Sainz, Colin McRae, Tommy Mackinnon, one of my personal heroes, uh, Marcus Gronholm, Sebastian, of course, Kovalainen, Heki Kovalainen, the first yep. racing driver to beat the rally drivers. That was in the Stade de France. And then for the last two years from Sweden, Matthias Ekström, who was punted out by our own Andy Prio earlier. Now then, we come down to the last race here at Wembley Stadium this evening. David Coulthard comes out on to the hallowed tarmac this <laughs> afternoon first to a, a massive cheer from the probably 55,000 people who are here. Frederick Johnson, the man who dreamed up the idea back in the mid-80s to have this concept, gives him uh, a wish of good luck and I'm sure that he'll jump the fence and wish Sebastian Loeb and of course a lot of Frenchmen here are part of the organizers and oh yes there's, 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 there's real competition down there down there in the pits real competition also Belgians like Mark uh, Duez uh, former rally champion and they go and it's green and good start for Seb good start for Sebastian Loeb
rope, but David Coulthard is immediately ditch hooking and goes wide after the first corner. First of four laps. Said for first this car, he just said it in the interview there. And uh, David Coulthard, though, is not a quitter. And David Coulthard is going to try everything to try and take this champion of champions. But he has got a major task on his hands because Loeb really likes this car. Now, we will see in a little while what the split is when we're halfway through this race around this one kilometre track. Just two full laps, remember. And who will it be? Will it be David Coulthard from Scotland? Will it be Sebastian Loeb? And it is still all to play for here at Wembley Stadium. Well, Sebastian Loeb, he knows what the winning feeling is like. So does David Coulthard. David may not have won a Grand Prix since he was back at McLaren, but he never forgets the winning feeling. The adrenaline will be coursing through his face. He can almost touch Sebastian Loeb. Point three of a second only. It is neck and neck here. And uh, Coulthard not picking the tail out. Picking the tail out. Trying hard. Oh, come on, David. It's a good slide that we can see from our commentary position. Scrabbling for grip with the front tyres on these rock buggies. And what, what happens, Toby, if they cross the line absolutely side by side? Now then, we start the last lap when they cross the line. The white flag being shown. Seb crosses the line first. Loeb in control. Fire spitting out of the rear of the 1100cc Honda engine buggy. The tremendous fun into the last half a lap. David Coulthard scrambling for grip. We're on board with him. Kissing the tarmac as we go underneath the bridge. Coulthard, oh, this Coulthard might have run. this. It could be. It could be inches in it. Sebastian Loeb got a good run. Got a good oh, run. David on the inside. The wheel to wheel. Loeb oh. is the champion. Sebastian Loeb wins the 2008 race of champions. How close can it be? David Coulthard so close. <laughs> Only a tenth of a second in it. Wow. Well, this event has lived up to all its hype, to all its expectations. But Sebastian Lowe, one of the favourites coming in, wins it for a third time. But hats off to David Coulthard, has done a magnificent job. Hats off too to the organisers. We've seen a phenomenal competition. We also saw a great Nations Cup competition as well. But this has kept everyone on their feet through a cold afternoon and evening. Motorsport at its best, something very special, something unique. But Sebastian Loeb, the five times World Rally Champion, adds another title to a long list. Yep, he finished second at Le Mans. He drove the Peugeot Le Mans car that pushed Alan McNish so hard at the Circuit du Sard this year. He, he really is one of the great talents. He's up there. And of course, only the other week he jumped into a Formula One car and was only a second, one second off the base. Ironically, of course, he was David's Formula One car. <laughs> but one of the Red Bulls. Well, Sebastian Loeb, fit as a fiddle, as you said hey, earlier, yeah. Andrew, after his gymnastic career. And David Coulthard, uh, somebody said earlier in the commentary, is still so fit. He, uh, he might not have been testing since the last Grand Prix at Brazil now that he has retired. Uh, it's a shame that somebody had to lose there. It is a shame. And great that it went to uh, the final deciding third race. And uh, David Coulthard certainly... Uh, has not disgraced Sebastian, himself so here, in fact he's done a phenomenal year. job, gave the crowd a lot to cheer, and well, you, it's been a, a wonderful it's afternoon and evening. The race of champion because uh, last year I couldn't come, because uh, I have a, a baby now, so we came again this year, and very difficult start. <laughs> I went off in the first break of the race, and then since that it's going well, so finally we won. Very, really happy. Well, you kind of spoiled David Coulthard's party, though. How do you feel, David? <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm no embarrassment to be beaten by a five-time consecutive rally champion. He's a great driver, and uh, I'm just very happy to have made the final with so many good drivers here. Ladies and gentlemen, champion of champions and runner-up. David Coulthard congratulating the uh, champion of champions, Sebastian Loeb, but a winner here in two consecutive uh, years and making it a hat-trick of wins today at the Champion of Champions at 2008. So Sebastian Loeb taking the first victory, David Coulthard equalizing it, and Sebastian Loeb in the end victorious. Tony Jardine, a great victory in the end for Sebastian Loeb, who didn't have it all his own way today. 
Yeah, but let's let's be honest. People were expecting Sebastian Loeb to win. They weren't expecting David Coulthard to go all the way to the final. They weren't expecting to, him to put up such a, a valiant fight as he did. I mean, that was really Scotland the brave. He really gritted his teeth. He started off slowly. He was kind of casual about it. There he is, taking the applause and the accolades. Very, very popular man in terms of motorsport. A great ambassador as we will see in the years to come for motorsport. He still has a role next year, although testing is severely reduced, he'll still be involved with Red Bull and the F1. He'll take he'll start his career in television as well. And then you're looking at uh, Sebastian Loeb. Two of them together, uh, two great drivers, but Sebastian Loeb broke more records again this year. 11 World Rally victories. That is a record, never mind the record of the five championships. He'd never won Finland before, which is the preserve of the Vikings, basically. He won that and he, he ticked that off his list. The second one he'd never won was Wales Rally GB, and I drove in that rally, and I know how bad the conditions were. It was really tough. And I also drove in Sweden earlier this year, and I came round, and in the ditch, there was Sebastian Loeb, upside down on the car, seemingly out. But they got it back in the rally, and he finished in the top 10. He's a great sportsman, a great driver. And if you look at the two of them together, this is a great end to a motorsport year, where you see the different disciplines of motorsport, in this case, rallying and Formula One coming together. They appreciate each, each other's talents. DC is very, very respectful of rally drivers and all the different surfaces they drive over. And I think, you know, Frederick Johnson is right that, that this is the, a unique event that you can bring together the six different disciplines from motorsport at the end of a season, celebrate it and all compete, but in the spirit of friendship as well. Yes, they want to win, but what a fantastic time we've had. What a great time they've had. And there's Seb, third time that he's won this. I will say this to you. You? Didier Oriel won it four times. <laughs> can Sebastian Loeb make it a, a four-time winner in this? I'm sure he can at the moment. He's a five-time World Rally Champion and a three-time champion here at the Race of Champions. What a day it's been from Wembley. When we come back, we'll react. Welcome back to Wembley, where today 50,000 spectators have enjoyed a motorsport extravaganza, culminating in another win for Sebastian Loeb here in the Race of Champions. David Coulthard was a valiant competitor. He made the runner-up spot, he made the super final spot, but not enough to beat this man, Sebastian Loeb, a third of a second in it in their final showdown. It came down to the final race, a best of three competition, but in the end, David Coulthard didn't have enough to take it away from this man. Sebastian, fantastic end there to the Race of Champions 2008. It couldn't have got any closer. No, it couldn't be any closer. Uh, especially through the first corner of the race. I, I went completely straight uh, on the first breaking and finally I just won my, my first race for, for nothing. And since that, I won everything. So with with uh, David, it was very close because uh, I beat him in the first, then he beat me in the second, and so the final was really in the last race that was possible, and I beat him for not a lot. So it was really a tight tight battle. And how important to you is winning the race of champions? Yeah, it's you know it's not as important for me as and and my championship for sure. But uh, it's always a nice moment to to come here to, to in front of uh, a lot of spectators like this and to have some some fun to, to meet the other drivers of the other championships or other motorsports like motorbike. Or, so no, it's always a nice experience and for sure when you start you want to win and when you win you are happy. Great stuff. Well, I hope you're happy. Well done. Go and have a shower. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Now David, I mean it could have, it was so close, mm. so close, just not meant to be. No, I, I don't think I was quick enough in my first lap. Second lap I got into the, the swing of it. but. You know, it's that fine line between uh, getting it just right and going over the limit in these cars. I mean, you have actually ended a really spectacular career in a really spectacular fashion because here at Wembley, amongst all the British fans, I mean, they, it really is a nice way to finish. Absolutely, I'm delighted. I never felt that I would get that far when you see some of the drivers that have been here, but uh, I've thoroughly enjoyed the uh, events of the Race of Champions. So, big thank you to the organisers and, of course, all the British fans who turned out today to to celebrate all of the different nationalities of drivers. Now we know that you're hanging up your F1 helmet, but we won't be seeing the last of you now, will we? 
No, I'm actually I'm going to have to get some lessons from you because next year I'll be doing uh, some of the, the commentary work, part of the BBC team at the Grand Prix. Um, so, yeah, big pressure actually. How do you do it? I'll tell you all about it later. But really, you can now have some fun racing, can't you? Now that your F1 commitments are going to be over, uh, is there anything that you've actually got penciled in or got your eye on? No, I haven't. No, I, I've raced for 26 years and um, this was normally our off-season anyway. So I guess the time I'll start to get a bit itchy feet, if, if the bug is still there, will be March of next year. Uh, I'm committed to go to all the Grand Prix next year, so that's going to make it difficult. But beyond that, who knows, maybe I'll, uh, I'll get interested in something else. Well, it's a new chapter, new father. Congratulations, David Coulthard. Thank you very much. Yeah, the biggest challenge, dealing with a, a four-week-old baby boy who, you know, I, I'm a bit worried about him. He doesn't respond when I talk to him. I thought he would be dressing himself, walking, but he's, he's seemed to take a long time. Patience, patience, patience. Thanks a lot. Okay, thank you. That, David, we can assure you, will all come in time. Uh, David Coulthard, a, a valiant competitor, great camaraderie between him and uh, Sebastian Loeb in this uh, super final competition. Uh, Tony Jardine, a great way to end the race of champions. It is fabulous. I mean, it's been a great season, really, uh, both for Sebastian Loeb and all his achievements this year, and, and also for uh, David Coulthard. In terms of, you know, bowing out, which he did gracefully, uh, he did it with dignity. Uh, he's got great style, great panache. You think about the great drivers that he's fought against. He's, he battles with Michael Schumacher over all these years, and, and his battles even with the younger drivers when they were coming through. He held his own when all the young puppy dogs, as he would call them, came through starting with people like Alonso and finishing with people like you know Lewis Hamilton and here he is in Santa land heading to the grotto <laughs> quite literally uh, that's where he'll be taking his his young son uh, in the next couple of years won't he? he'll be doing all the fatherly things at Christmas time talking about youngsters what about Lewis Hamilton because uh, he certainly caused a spectacle in front of the fans today he did and I think this was a great celebration a great second homecoming for him uh, you know the British Grand Prix at Silverstone it'll be the last one at Silverstone next year and we expect everyone to flock again to come and see Lewis Hamilton but they hadn't seen him take the title and they've come here to salute him as well as to see the race of champions but it's an opportunity to have a demonstration with the McLaren and didn't he do brilliantly with all the donuts in his championship winning car and I think we'd like to say thank you on behalf of Sky Sports for McLaren and Mercedes for making sure that he did appear and that we saw the champion and we were able to say Lewis brilliant and to his dad and his family has been a phenomenal uh, race of champions from uh, Wembley Stadium today. Certainly it's belonged to the best of race and rally in motorsport and of course to Lewis Hamilton.
more sport news and views at Sky Sport.